to finals Sunday here, the seventh day of the event, the SloCal Open at Morro Bay. The, <clears throat> the SloCal Longboard Classic is about to kick off the round, of, the round of 24, the first round of the women's LQS. 20 minute heats, four surfers in the water. The first round, there's four heats. Again, they're 20 minutes long, and then we'll be moving into the men's quarterfinals. If you were watching yesterday, we've got that set up. That's coming next. Men's quarterfinals right after this first women's round. And then we'll go into the women's quarterfinals, semis, back and forth, and finals. We have had an incredible week of all kinds of pumping surf up here. We completed the women's and men's QS shortboard 1000 that was incredible all week wild surf and we had our two victors Ella McCaffrey on the women's side and Levi Slauson on the men's side great run for them good showing for Encinitas seaside locals coming through the two first place champions we've got about a one to two foot swell we've got that high tide that's about now and um what a day we have set up for the longboard classic here at slow cal free surfers make your make your way in um we do have our four competitors out in the lineup set and ready we're going to kick off at 7 30 it's a 20 minute heat top two waves are scored so again hopefully you guys <clears throat> uh got the Information from the judging staff, from the head judge, definitely about getting the two, you know, best potential waves, the biggest waves in the smallest conditions, executing the longest nose rides, the most technical surfing, that flow style and grace. And there will be priority, obviously, as there has been all week long. Rights and lefts are in play. Coming up in this first heat in the red, Chloe Coleman in the blue, Leah Diaz in the white, Darla Shannon and in the green, Mika Baker. Well, thank you to Run Amuck Photography for all the incredible camera work this week with the beach staff and the drone work, which we couldn't. We couldn't have done as well as we did without that drone. The, there's a long distance between us and where the surfers were. And when the waves were big, a lot of times we couldn't see where they were at. So thanks again to Run Amuck Photography for such a great job. Thanks to all the sponsors. Thank you to Visit Slow Cal for their participation and sponsorship all through the week. Thank you to Surfing for Hope Foundation. It was a great event up on Friday. Checking out Tom Kern and his son playing music. So get ready, surfers. We're about two minutes from the start. Free surfer, please come in. Free surfer on the non-competitor. Please come in. <laughs> and competitors, hold your positions. The free surfer on the softboard, it, paddle way up to the north or come in. The contest is going to start in a few minutes, two minutes actually, thank you. Well, today we're gonna have no problem communicating any information to the surfers, finally. <clears throat> yeah, okay, free surfers, keep paddling north yeah. hundreds of yards north yeah, those surfers on the wave storms this is a competition this is a designated area by the city you do need to move north or a fine will be imposed you have one minute whoa the hammer coming down we have some heavies in this heat and they will regulate otherwise but of course we don't encourage that <laughs> she's laughing in the water come on now it yeah all right, ladies, hold your position. Uh, we will be probably getting a countdown here shortly. And, and I am, so here we go. Get ready for me to count it in 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two.
two, one. Almost perfect. We had that one wave. So the heat is on, ladies. In the red, Chloe Coleman. In the blue, Leah Diaz. In the white, Darla Shannon. And in the green, Mika Baker. Good luck today, everybody. Heat one, round one of the Surfing for Hope Longboard Classic here in Morro Bay. Like always in the beginning of every heat, there is no priority established after the surfers each ride one wave. That rotation begins. Ladies, there is the priority monitor above the judging tower here. We see our two surfers, three surfers. Who will get the wave? Green backs away. White goes. Red goes. Well, straight away, aggressive start in the heat here for, for red and white. <clears throat> Chloe and Darla. It was hard to tell if it was a left or a right. Now, Mika Baker. Nice footwork. Nice cheater five walking back and forth on the board. This left running. Beautiful. Long cheater five there. And this wave will continue on for her. Comes unstuck at the end there. So Mika Baker with the best of the three openers. And here's Red now. Chloe Coleman on the inside. These little tiny rights. I mean, it's so small, but they've got the boards over 9-2, over 15 pounds to glide through these soft high tide sandbar waves. Blue. Here we go. Yeah, we do have a non-priority interference from the beginning of that heat. There we go. Blue, Leah Diaz getting into the heat. So we'll have to break down that beginning of the heat. It was a non-priority interference. White on red. So the judges deeming that that peak in the very beginning was um, uh, more of a of, was an established right. R uh, red was deepest, so white got that non-priority interference since no priority had been established yet. So for the viewers at home, we're just replaying this one here. So white was it initially looking for the left, red looking for the right. And, and the right was the dominant wave. You can see how the behind red in that replay there, the, the feathering mm. lip of the wave. It was definitely an established right. And it is a peak scenario today. Yeah. Um, we do have lefts and rights, but that one was behind the peak for white. So we'll update those scores shortly. And red up and riding. And this is Chloe Coleman here. Nice style there, gets up on the nose, nice clear nose. Ooh, and a little redirect to the inside, and that was cool. We're going to see a little bit of that today with that higher tide and a smaller swell. So red opening up strong. So we have a few scores to drop in. So just to explain that non-priority interference, white against red in the beginning of the heat, effectively what that does is it takes away half of the score of of Darla in White's second yeah. wave. So she'll be getting scored the rest of the heat on her best wave and a half of her second wave. Mm -hmm. Or her of her two top two waves. Now this is Leah Diaz up and riding in blue. Costa Rican competitor goes to the re-entry in the wind and doesn't ooh, 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 ooh. ooh, you gotta be careful. That's the thing with the big mouths. Sometimes they poke and there's a lot of tail up in the air coming down to Search for your shoulders and head. Be careful. I don't know. Wingnut is out there watching right now. And he's rolling his eyes in, um, in disgust at that word, mouths. It was a word that haunted, haunted the longboard community for many years. Well, I'm okay still, with it. Does it still haunt them? We've come a long way. We're sorry, calling. Wingnut. Uh, longboard. It was, it was used as a derogative term when people for the didn't, Malibu. Versatile, didn't have versatile quivers. But I'm with you. I'm okay with that. I mean... Mini Mal. Exactly. But there's no Super Mal, is there? Yeah, there is a Super Mal. There I'll is get a into Super that. Mal. Okay. Approaching 15 minutes. Green. We've still got some scores to drop. Red. You have a six-point ride and a 1.25. Yeah, that, that back, that third wave for Chloe, that right that reformed on the inside, a six-point ride. 
Mika, your first wave was a 2.75. And here we go, our heat leader at the moment, Chloe Coleman. Graceful, elegant stuff. Look at the toes gripping or just rolled over the nose on that first Cheater 5. And this left gorgeous, beautiful, fan, beautiful footwork mm. there. So a six for your last wave, Chloe in red. You're out in the lead. Blue, you're in second with a 4.25 for your second wave. Green, you're in third with a 2.75. And White is paddling for this wave. She's currently in fourth place and up and riding now on a gorgeous looking left. And just a little deep. Will she get around this? It runs off on the sandbar. She did have priority, but can't, can't come from deep on the peak where she was sitting. Red again, taking advantage of this razor edge sandbar left. Beautiful cheater five and almost all the way 10, that side angle 10. Well, her board definitely looking like it fits the face of the waves, rolling from rail to rail so nicely. So Chloe Coleman finishing on the sand. Beautiful execution there of wave selection and competitive surfing. And we saw her brother in the heats yesterday, yeah. right? Taking Tucker, the heat. Yeah. Tucker winning the heat yesterday or got moving on through. And And unique to longboarding is the knee paddle. And we see Chloe making her way back out through the whitewash on the knees. To the right of the screen there. Got white there on the knees and our surfing red on the shore. She's back there. That's very unique. We only see that in longboard surfing. Sometimes riding guns as well. See some of the uncles at Waimea or Sunset just opting to give the lower back a break. Mm. Well, it's a strong, it's a stronger paddle sometimes. Yeah. It's, you get more... Uh, you know, your, your hands, your arms go deeper. You get a bit more torque through. You can pull your knees through as the hands are going back. While we have a gap, I'm going to communicate these scores to these surfers because Red's in the lead with this 5.25 for your last wave. Red, a 5.25. Blue, you're in second still with a 4.25 as your last. White, there is a priority interference against you on your first wave. You're down into fourth. You need a 5.15 to move into second. And green, you're in third, needing a 2.91. So first red, blue second, green third, white fourth. And for the surfers coming up, this is a priority, uh, a priority aligned event. So you have your choice of priority will be on top of the, your position of priority will be on top of the judge's tower. So make sure you look back to have a look at where you're positioned. Otherwise, you can get a priority interference. 20-minute heats, those surfers in the next heat can come and get their jerseys. And you can get those down here at the competitor's tent. These are new competitors. They haven't been here all week, some of them, just arriving this morning. So come and check in for your heat, that, that heat two. Lilla and Yeshi Elmore. Yeah, almost Niki as if... Nikki Miller and Sophia Todd. As if we're into day one, right? Yeah. But we're not. So currently, talking about priority, blue has first priority, green has second priority, green in third place, needing just under a three-point ride to get up into advancing position. 11 minutes left, red staying very busy, but that's okay. She is out in the lead with a six and a 5.25. She just wants to keep surfing. Chloe Coleman on the inside, but what's critical is green on the outside. Mika uses her, pr had second priority and cannot complete, get into that wave. Here we go. Will, can Darla climb out of the basement with that opening Non-priority interference, again, just tucked behind. She's in the middle of the board, in that planing surface of the board, but some of the waves hit that sandbar, run off a little quick if you take off a bit too deep.
Blue, you have first priority. Green, you have second priority. Leah, you have a 1.4 and a 4.25. Mika, you have a 2.75 and a 0 0.08. You're in third position, Mika, and you need a 2.91. We see some sets approaching, and who will be in position? Neither. That, that right maybe just going to wall up on them, so the surfer's view, different than what we're seeing from the beach easier or it's a different read on the wave you can really tell if there's going to be a surfable shoulder for you or if it's going to wall off too quick down the line red out in first chloe you're in first with a six and a five two five so we know it's hard for the surfers at this early part of the morning to see the priority board because the sun is behind us coming over the moros and behind the stacks but right now blue has first priority green has second priority so those two surfers have the ability to utilize that priority and um, blue can take any wave she wants that's coming her way green with that second priority Eight and a half minutes left. Well, this is a critical one. Leah Diaz in second, wanting to get rid of the 1.4 and extend the pressure that she puts on the third place surfer. Doesn't quite ride out of that. Seven minutes remaining. So red, white down into fourth, needing a 6.48, and green needing a 4.35. Red out in the lead still, blue in second. Well, that did increase the requirement for green. Here we go, Mika Baker, utilizing that first priority. Oh, I like the fade back on the beginning, but then it didn't stay quite low enough on the face of the wave. That wind definitely affecting not only into the body, their chest, but the, all that wind under that much more board. Easy for them to blow out the back. Six minutes left. Definitely the weakest waves the whole week as well, uh, which generally is conducive for longboarding. It would be uh, quite a bit more difficult on a shorter board out there, so you could say it's worked in the favor. But this is Dala and White speed trimming through, and the wind wreaking havoc again there for these surfers. That one, a, a smaller fading wave. So maybe a blessing in disguise to fall off the back and reset with five minutes 40 remaining. And do you know from yesterday the tide, is it still just coming up a little bit, or have we reached that peak? The peak that. in the tide. Regardless, um, we saw that yesterday too. <clears throat> a lot of surfers getting stuck up high on the lip, yep. not a lot of steep face and getting blown over the back. Sometimes the shorter right offered a bit more potential. So a big differential tide today, 5.5 feet uh, at 7.41 a.m. And then down to a, a minus 0 0.3. So we are at peak high tide at the moment. And it will be drawing out, which actually will probably <coughs> favor. We'll, it'll move 
out a little bit onto that clean, crisp sandbar. We saw it yesterday. The Mandaka, the Mandaka left. Phenomenal. <laughs> it just got better and better yesterday. And uh, five minutes remaining. We are splitting the webcast uh, with you guys at home on YouTube with the beach commentary, a unique scenario that has worked all week, apart from the wind, which means we've really had to be clear and quite loud at times to get those messages across to the surfers, which of course are the show, Jeff. Yes, yes the surfers are the show. Here we are in round one of the women's LQS. Coming up yep. next, is it Lila? Lila Elmore? Yep, Lila yeah, Elmore. Oh, the sisters. Yep. I would have to say there. Yeshi and Nike Miller and Sophia Toto. Lila and Yeshe. From Topanga in uh, LA there. Malibu locals. I'm sure they surf with my buddy Jesse Fain in Topanga all the time. I'm sure they do. So three minutes, 30 remaining. Positions unchanged. So you got a free surf out there before this. It was chilly looking. You came in looking chilly. Yeah, I put the wetsuit on... Um, previous to checking out of the hotel and i think it was a smart option on a morning light today that's for sure <laughs> yeah plus changing on the sharp rocks yeah. and the dirt yeah. here you need to have a game plan you have to have a piece of the astro turf or some kind of mat to put down because not only the mud but yeah sure. it's tender tender feet especially with a lack of beach showers in this area the locals would have a nice scenario worked out i'm sure like a little procedure yes here we go this is leah Again, beautiful, up on the nose there, and the wind once again. So note to the surfers, yeah, f try to get established on the nose at the base of the wave maybe. Really tough, or, or though. bottom turn even to get momentum um, and, you know, some trim speed up along the wave. Um, but, yeah, or simply just paddling hard and fading onto the wave to try and, you know, like penetrate the wind. I think of you know big wave surfing. It's funny. It's there's a lot of similarities between two feet waves and twenty feet waves. The paddle, the bigger the waves get, the harder you got to paddle. The smaller, windier the waves get. It's the same. Yeah. You got to carry that paddle speed yeah. forward. If the wave's not going to supply it, give yourself a few more strokes. Yeah. We are down to two minutes. Things staying the same. Chloe in the lead. Leah in second. Mika. In third, needing the 4.35, and Darla with um, that priority or the non-priority interference in the beginning. Down in fourth, needing a Into the final minute, and we have our surfer in white, Dala, pulling off the back of that in second priority in blue, up and riding. So this is Leah currently in second place, carving her way around, cross-stepping forward, up on the nose, and goes down with the incoming toe, well, the, the peak of the tide. A very different lineup to what we've seen in the previous week. Beautiful for Loma. Nice fade turn there for our surfer in red. Nice nose ride. And this is where it starts to get fat, and she cuts back into the white water, and she goes back for another nose ride. We'll see if this one peters out a little bit the high tide. She stays with it, though. Nice footwork, nice timing. Yeah, that board gliding across that way, but it's definitely a difference in what you see riding the right to the left. They're not fighting anything. We're down to 10 seconds. So eight, five, four, three, Two, one. 
So that concludes heat number one, round one. We'll have a short commercial break, and we'll be back into the live broadcast for the webcast, but we're going to be counting the second heat in real quickly here. Since 2012, Surfing for Hope has been helping families navigate through cancer using the healing benefits of surfing and the ocean. Each year, we host a number of surfing-related community events to shine a spotlight on the fight against cancer. Visit surfingforhope.org to sign up for one of our free beginner surf camps. And if you'd like to help out, you can donate on the site too. The world has changed and the workplace has evolved. The option to live free of the commute and busy work life is here. Midstate Containers specializes in custom remote offices ready for your new journey. Customizable in every way. Our team is ready to reimagine remote working with your specific needs. We are excited to help create the new workplace so you can embrace more of life. Welcome back, everybody, to the Longboard, the Slow Cal Longboard Classic, the Surfing for Hope Longboard Classic. We've got to change the vernacular after an entire yeah. week, right? A little different preamble. Jeff Baldwin, Matt Chanaski, we are here set in, nestled against the rocks here in chilly, beautiful Morro Bay. And these surfers right on the peak of the tide. We saw in that last heat, a lot of people fading off the back of the wave. So committed paddles will be the intention of these surfers today. And obviously using their footwork and their uh, positioning effectively through the higher tides. And they let white go on this opening wave. This is Niki Miller up in white. Delicate footwork there. A great looking wave that pink board looking nice it's beautiful graceful poise and yeah i don't know why but she was definitely taking cues from chloe in the last heat the rights just seeming like mm. it's allowing the board to glide yeah. freely and red up behind her trimming through the middle it's a faster bigger wave nice momentum there and gets on the nose carving it back oh Nice little redirect there for Red. And this one, not petering out, actually taking it right to the rocks. So completed wave for White and Red there. Poise is the first, and Grace are the yeah. first two. And Red carrying speed and the footwork from White. So nice opening waves there for those two surfers. We've got Green now, Sophia Todd. Wow, great example again. We'll get the replay for the viewers at home, but... That wave just fading away. Maybe it's the current that we yeah. can't see. When you were out for a free surf, did you have lefts and rights? Did you yeah. feel a difference? I just, I just surfed waves because um, there's not a lot of them, and it's a split peak. So when you paddle, it's funny, you, you're reluctant to even get on it. So that's where on a longboard, you have priority. See, see, Nikki was actually looking to the left then and faded back to the right on this replay. Um, pushing a bit of water there on that first nose ride, so the judge will take note on the whitewash coming off the nose. Nice little redirect snap there, and in live action, we've blew out the back as we finish off this replay of white. So the right's looking good in this heat so far, and this is Yeshi in blue. Nice trim speed, and up on the nose again, and she goes incomplete. I like that. I like the drone angle looking back. It makes it look like, you know, such a clean right sandbar also. Yep. You sort of see the distance they've covered. So a four-point ride for Red's opening wave. And White having a look at this one. And nice poise there from White. This wave looking nice and Red behind her as well. Oh, these rights really starting to look good. They're just offering so much opportunity, that reform to the shore. Oh, that's, you know, mm. right up onto the rocks, onto the bones there on yeah. the inside. And and they're not struggling. They're not fighting anything like we've seen on the lefts. 
So scores still to lock in. Five point ride for White's opening wave. Uh, blue, your opening wave with a 2 2 5 with the incompletion at the end. And green, your last scores, Betty, just about to get locked in. A 1.25. So white out in the lead, red in second, blue in third, green in fourth. Priority with green, blue second priority. So if you had a quiver of long boards to choose from, what would you, what would be the pinnacle of equipment of boards for today's conditions compared to what the guys were using yesterday? Bigger. Uh, yeah, a little more weight would today would be effective. Uh, maybe Volan glass, glass with a uh, you know a couple of layers of eight ounce and some six. Obviously, single fin, soft rails, a board that's going to be able to nose ride in whatever pocket is out there. But I think weight is the key today. Momentum, we may see something a little different to later on. But yeah, a, a nose rider would work quite mm -hmm. well. But also just a board that's got weight and will trim well, high trim speed and something with a lot of rocker and lightweight won't work very well today. And anything different in the fin you would choose for you today compared to yesterday? For sure. I mean, I see long reiki ones. Some of them have a real wide base and they're yeah. more, you know, thick and square. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you can use a fuller template fin with a bigger base and a bigger tip today. Uh, we don't have a lot of that pocket action to whip around in. So a, a larger fin is going to be more stable. It's going to carry well through dead sections, so to speak. And if you are on the nose, it still will hold very, very well too. And this is White keeping really busy with the 4.75 on her last wave. I mean, there's no point being fussy. The, the surfers uh, don't know if it's left and right. And Nikkei just staying really busy here. Quick footwork and finishing strong on this long left-hander and green behind her. This is Sophia. And that one, yeah, not confident to keep going that in blue on this left-hander. Well, when the sets come, they do rifle off on that sandbar. So the left, at the moment, you can see kind of closing oh. down, plus oh. that wind sweeping up the face of it. And, and the right's offering... Well, that one actually reformed for blue. Yeah, it she did. She pulled off. That was a good reform there for both surfers with green, blue and green. They both decided to stick out. Maybe they're looking for a longer left, but it's a competition, so you've got to surf those waves, especially today. You can't be fussy. The surfers are maybe thinking about yesterday's conditions, but we're, we've got perfect waist-high longboard waves today, and we've got to capitalize on those, and it's a higher tide, so not too many opportunities today. Nikkei, you have... Your last wave was a 5.5. Your first wave a 5. You are in the lead. Lila, you are in second with priority. Your first wave was a 4. Your second wave a 1.85. Sophia, you have a 3.5 and a 1.25. You are in third place. You need a 2.36 on your next wave to get up into second. And Yeshi, you, um, you have a 2.25 and a 1.55. You need a 3.61 to go up into the lead. Priority is red, green, blue. Red, green, blue is the order of priority. We have an interview with our first heat winner, Chloe Coleman. Can't wait to hear how it was for her. Chloe, no stranger to the cold water and small, beautiful longboard waves. How was it out there for the first heat of the day? Super fun. Um, kind of reminded me of home, so it was fun. A little windy, but super fun. Yeah. And you're feeling, you're looking like you're feeling it. Did you surf this morning or you just opted just to stay warm and go out for the first heat? Uh, I stayed warm, but I went out last night and it was like really good. So I was feeling confident to not get a few waves this morning. Yeah. You surfed in Huntington last year as a wild card for your first uh, world longboard tour event. Is that something that you want to experience again and qualify? Yeah, I love to s experience that again. That's honestly why I want I came up here but yeah definitely again it was good experience in Huntington Great, and a quick shout out to anyone at home tuning in yeah my mom and dad love you guys and all my friends thank you and thank you Michael for the best board all right back to Baldy in the booth for live action yeah great job Chloe um, yes gotta love this gotta thank the shapers board appreciation right now our heat leader, Nikkei Miller, well, she's finding rhythm on the rights and the lefts and just 
again, staying always seeming to be right in the best position on her board for these lefts that have been a little challenging. A series of graceful, elegant cross steps, finding the nose, working the tail, planing speed carried. So will that wave um, better? And it does straight away. The judges loving that left by Nike Miller, a 6.75 Nike. So she's out in the lead by quite a bit. Priority is with red. Sophia was second priority in the green. Still needing the 2.36 and Yessi needing the 3.61. So we saw Chloe Coleman, our first heat winner, just then from the Montauk area. Her brother also was is competing in the event. I heard that I think she's going to school down in San Diego. So she's loving... Um, Probably learn it about all the spots in San Diego, up and down from the border to Oceanside. Here we go. Our second place surfer. Long rail line. Didn't get much footwork done, but this is the critical one. Sophia had the wave, had the left that was going to run through in third and comes unstuck on that one. So red just looking to better a low of a 1.9 to go, oh, well, to better her heat total. But Nikkei out in the lead with that 6.75 and a 5.5. Green looking for a 2.41 and blue looking for a 3.66. And with great longboard waves, it's super conducive. Anybody could get those scores with a nice, well, there's so many beautiful rolling, peeling waves. Rolling, peeling waves. So I was asking you, well, it looks like we have a few surfers about to go. This is what we want. We want to stick with blue or green. We're going to stick with blue. She's in fourth, needing a 3.66. Opportunity Ooh. has looked great on these rights. I love that cr cruising, fading bottom turn. Planing speed across the inside, and that one fades out on her there. Will that be the 3.66? Footwork, rail turns, poise, critical nature, nose rides not there, but we'll have to leave that with the judges. We have lefts, rights, so they've got a lot to digest out there today. And white, oh green, having a look at this, Sophia in green, a longer wave, that wind wreaking havoc on the lefts today, and that one, she get a little better up on the nose there, and see, just falling off the back. We saw that in the previous heat with Leah Diaz, some really nice moments, and then falling off the top of the wave. So the left's obviously going into the wind. We've seen that with the shortboarding. So Nike stepping forward on the nose. See to push the nose down there. And back in the middle there. Up on the nose, more critical. That one, as we're dissecting the replay of White's last wave, up on the middle of the board and wind. Yeah, that was the wave that there was a split peak on. But you could see the way that it was just the way she was nose riding, the angle of attack was going down the face more as opposed to laterally across the line of the wave. Yep. And just that carries the speed, speed down, down yeah. the face of the wave, allowing her to continue. And it was the bottom turn that set it up too. Yeah. Well, the unsung hero of surfing, the bottom turn. Yep. And it doesn't matter what craft you're riding on what wave, it is everything. Yep. Paddle in, get up, set Ooh. your good line Ooh. with the bottom turn. Yeah, we got to watch out. That is the... That does happen with longboards. Hoping uh, that thing came up the rail sort of close to the shoulder head. Yeah. Well, a lot of the surfers electing to go leashless, which I always did on longboard. Much more comfortable to yeah. walk on the board and cross step without and being tethered. And white under priority, just another streaming wave, just... Having so much fun out there, Nike, And she pulls off that. She's just going to get so many. So the interesting note there was the the split peak. The lefts on this heater going all the way down the beach. And only Nike is really capitalizing these rights. It's all coming down to the rights for blue, red, and green. And a set out the back. Look at these beautiful swell lines. And this is a replay of greens. Fades it back. This is Sophia Todd up on the nose in that replay. 
And this, live. Yeah, much better from her completing the wave, getting the ride on the nose and riding out where that was a bit of a challenge. And look, yeah, like you said, the reform through. And Blues up again, repeating that last one. So a nice kick out. And the kick out, the bottom turn and the kick out, the two most critical parts, especially in longboard surfing. We're just approaching the five minute mark. We'll update those scores very shortly. So no change to White, still out in the lead. Green, it looks like you're about to go into second with a 3.8. Red, you need a 3.3. And blue, you're looking for a 4.45. Five minutes remaining. Wow, so Sophia was fighting for that score for the, the, the majority of that heat. The last two waves on those lefts. The wind yeah. being pesky with her. Now she gets the right and just gets over the requirement. Now it's Lila in red needing a 3.3. .3 and her sister Yeshi needing a 4.45. The thing is, there's four points in every wave. If you bottom turn on a set wave, step to the middle, cut back and complete. But a lot of surfers don't get to those four elements. They might get to the nose. They might get a barrel doing air. But you've got to complete it. And um, you've got to show the judge's commitment as well in, in that. And there's that nose right going down the face and falling off the back there. So a little bit of hesitance there the last four minutes. And we see in, in shortboard surfing, it, it can be possible to get an excellent range score on, on one maneuver. And as long as they complete, right? It's got to be a set usually. It's got to show commitment. It's got to show some a degree of difficulty and completion, and they're the, the pillars to get you, a, you know, into that, or get you a score, a, you know, a, a score that you can keep in your score line. Yeah, and that's what, it's so different in, in the longboard um, side of things. There is there is no take off and do one maneuver. No. You know, it, it's got to be that series of, of footwork. Yep. The flow, style, and grace. Three so I, minutes. Oh, sorry. oh, I was asking you. So when you were out there, yep. obviously you were just taking off because you wanted to ride. But did you find a difference in when you were riding the lefts compared to the rights? Yeah, the lefts actually uh, were windier, of course. But I just kept cutting back into the pocket and letting the wave dictate to me where it wanted me to go. Right. Not predetermining tricks. Longboarding is not about doing tricks. It's, it's about fitting the board into the face. If you go out there with the intention of doing tricks, you will usually come second to somebody who's feeling and connecting to the wave, using that momentum, that trim, right? Mm -hmm. The art of trim. And if you're tapping into that and letting the wave dictate to you and you're surfing that wave accordingly with the footwork, with the rail turns, the nose rides, you'll be rewarded accordingly. So it sounds like what you're saying is each is as good, the left yep. or the right, as long as you are doing what you were just describing in letting the like that. the wave dictate and if you let the wave tell you what to do and you follow it uh, the bottom turn set Nikkei up on that and she's pulling out knowing she and this is blue on the outside section as we see white pull off so blue going right and she kicks out with two minutes to go surfers in the water critical thing now Sophia had gone up into second so green has first priority in second place red has second priority in third place needing a 3.3, .3, not a big score, and blue needing a 4.45. We've seen fours and sixes and yeah. high threes, so the waves are out there to get and attain those scores. It's, it's literally, as we saw earlier in the first state, it's surf the wave to shore, complete, you know, surf in the pocket, and you'll get, you'll probably go nine. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. Six, seven, five. I think the high score so far of the day or around there, I think Chloe had some scores in yeah. that range. Nikkei out in the lead. Now it's really who's going to find themselves possibly jumping up into second in the last minute and 10 minutes of this heat. Sophia holding second position now and first priority. Green and red. Christmas colors up and riding. And green out of that one. So red, this will be the last wave for red. She's got to try and surf this. Well, later, Sean, she kicks out. So 30 seconds remaining.
We set another one out the back. So Yeshi in fourth place. She has the opportunity to jump up in a second on this wave. 20 seconds. Nikkei splitting the peak in white. And blue going right. 15 seconds. Last 10. And blue kicking out as well with five, four, three, two, one. And a victory lap there for our surfer in white. Surfing this one all the way through to the shore. And green on the other side, cementing her second place. That'll be Nikkei and Sophia coming in with Yeshi and Lila towards the end, not able to complete. So we're going to go to a break and we'll be back shortly with heat number three. do what your elders do. Get rad, get in air, adrenaline. Welcome back everybody to the Surfing for Hope Longboard Classic. We are into heat number three, round one of the women's and uh, Jeff Baldwin, Matt Chanaski here bringing you all the glorious, graceful action of the longboard side of the event. And interesting to note, this heat, they've moved down the beach after, uh, I mean, all these surfers, Nikkei getting those long lefts. So they've seen something that we haven't, obviously. And this set coming in could be the biggest one of the morning so far. And no takers. Red having a look at that. I look down on the on this coach's sand dune and I don't see coaches no. down there. That was a great left. No takers. Yeah, and, and like you had just identified, they're down the beach, away from the peak that we saw yeah. everyone surfing before. This is a set of the morning so far. So that tide will change. The tide's starting to drop out. And this is Delilah Hutchins. Uh, she's oh, and pulls out of that one. So that one probably had a reform on the inside. As that lower tide starts to drop, we won't see, we'll see less reforms, but more longer running waves down the beach. Uh, 18 minutes remaining. And just a 0.9 and a 1.35 for red. And a 1.75 for blue. Red in the lead, just with a small two-wave total. Well, we see our <clears throat> two women that advanced out of that last heat coming up. Nikki Miller and Sophia Todd. Congratulations, moving into the quarterfinals. Star de Ella. Nikkei, just leave your rash vest on. We'll do a post-heat interview with you. Don't take that one off. They need they need a, a warm water bucket for the surfers to stand in mm. when they're doing their interview. A nice a foot bucket, right? Standing in the hot or on the hard rocks with cold feet. Natalia on her first wave. This wave could open up nicely. Graceful trim line there. Ooh, I liked how she went rail to rail. Gave it a little wiggle. Not a wiggle, a little... What would you call that? I just just a little bit of a nuance. Just yeah. a little bit of footwork and carve, you know, using the belly roll in the, the board roll, nicely. Yeah. As opposed to getting stuck on one rail or the other. Just fluid between rails. It's always a good sign, you know, of just... Uh, how comfortable they are on their equipment. Yeah. And Red there opening up her account on the oh, well, third wave, actually, for Red soul arching that one through, looking for the inside trimming. So trimming and at least a completed wave there for Red. 16 minutes remaining. We're going to catch up with Nikkei, that winner of the last heat. 
Yeah, we are going to go on and do that. Star, your first wave, a 4.75. Green, your opening wave, a 4.75. Waiting, let's see. Brooke, your first wave was a 1.75. Delilah, your best wave, a 1.35. That was your last right. Or actually, that was the wave before. So we've got a few waves to catch up on. This is Natalia's wave. They're, we're waiting for the judges to lock that score in. Well, the playing field is definitely wide open with the, the long boards. Oh, look at that. Poised on the nose. Beautiful 10. Look at this. And will she ride through? Does really well to continue with the weight of the board. You saw it fighting her. And uh, she gets back over and into the inside section. Elegant surfing there. Masterful combination of beyond Cheater 5, up on the nose, that side angle 10, and then really shuffling with the board. Great surfing there from Surfer in White. Natalia, your very first wave was a 5.25. And now we're going to get you the score on that last one. And now Delilah finishing up on that one. I'll have to watch the replay. And she had a score from before. So the wave before, Delilah, your wave before that one was a 2.1. Okay, well, we are ready for the interview with our last heat winner, Nike Miller. Nika, from Hawaii, super cold this morning. Did you go for a free surf? Well, I saw you out in the free surf. Yeah. What would you have done if you didn't free surf? Um, I, I really wanted to free surf because this is my first time at Morro Bay. And um, the last couple of days I surfed, it was a bit hard for me. So I just, the conditions changed a lot today. So I really wanted to get a feel for it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And you started really busy catching lots of waves, lefts and rights. What do you think the pick is out there? Um, I personally prefer to go right, but off of my first score, it was a bit low. So I decided to check out the lefts, and that's where I got my high scores. So um, for me, I, I guess I'm going to try to go left in the next heat, but I'm definitely going to try to find some good rights. And anyone back home tuning in or any support crew you want to give a shout out to? Um, I want to say thanks to my mom. She's here and then all my friends and family back home in Hawaii and on the mainland. Great. All right. We're going to go back to live action. We'll see you into the next round later on. Thank you so much. All right. Congratulations. So Nikkei indicating that she thought the score was a little low on the right. Found some great scores on the left. So surfers, we have a whole bunch of waves to catch up on so many waves being ridden um natalia star delilah brooke everybody has waves to be scored the judges catching up at the moment 12 minutes remaining priority is blue red then white so we'll, i'm waiting for all the scores to come in to really give you guys what position everybody is in i think natalia will remain out in the lead Yeah, it, it will be Natalia in the lead, green in second, red in third, blue in fourth. We'll give you the requirements in a moment. We can tell you the 11 minutes 30 remaining. And the judges just watching some replays of some scores.
So we do actually have the blue is not Brooke Stevens. It's actually Esme Brigham. So we have the old draw there. Sorry about that. We're just watching the replay here of White's previous wave. She gets a 5 and 10 combo. A little beak boogie there and adjusts again and steps back to the middle. So some nice nose riding there for White. Technical nose riding. Ooh, I'm taking that vernacular. Beak boogie. Yeah. I'm digging that. Okay. I've got that one. That one's in the in the notebook. So that was, yeah, the replay there for White. Natalia, we were waiting so, on that score. A 5-6-5 five, five is where it comes in. So Red now needing a 5.4 and Blue a 6.05. Ten minutes remaining. And these longboarders are savvy competitors despite the style, flow, and grace. So the we're just, just remembering the set waves showing that level of commitment. There isn't many of them, but what we're seeing is that critical nose riding possible with good scores on the set waves. And it's allowing a more of a pocket, right? So don't let the grace on the board and the, the mellow demeanor while they're surfing yeah. fool you. Just as ferocious and competitive when paddling for waves and paddling for their peak. Eight minutes 50 remaining. White out in the lead with a 5.65 and her last green into second. Looking to drop a 3.05. Red needing a 5.4. You've got a 2.4 and a 2.10. And Esme in blue, you're needing a 5.6. And red has priority. Beautiful view. You see so much sea life out there all week long. Thousands of birds. This is a bird sanctuary. This whole entire area, all the uh, the estuary area, the bay, the all this forest land, the hills, and this big Moro rock. One of the nine sisters is a bird sanctuary. Mm -hmm. So a a beautiful place for them. They just hang out up on top of the rocks, dive down, feed. 7.50 on the clock in this heat. Priority is with red, then white, then green. Delilah needing a 5.4 in third place. Esme needing a 5.6. Natalia out in the lead with a 5.25. And that last nose riding exhibition, a 5.65. And some movement out there. Red, you've lost priority. With just 10 minutes, eight, seven minutes, 15 remaining. Priority with white. So the judges determine, the priority judge determining that red fully committed in a paddle for the last wave, missed yeah. it, when lost you, the when, priority. And when you commit, you have to catch that wave as these you, you've got to go for it and a lot of these surfers with four person heats at this level aren't used to that but when you look at a wave and it's it's like that in many crowded lineups when you commit to a wave you have to go it it's your turn so when you look at a wave you have to be 100% committed and show the judges that you wanted that wave or stand up on it because otherwise you'll lose your priority but Delilah, experienced competitor, just needing a 5.4. She knows the drill. She knows what's required. And same with our surfer, Esme. I don't know much about Esme, but needing a 5.6. And it's Natalia, who's way out in the lead with 5.65 and a 5.25. Green in second. Green, you're looking for a 6.15 to go to first. Well, it looks like... 
yeah, Delilah, after she lost priority, making her way in much further. So hoping to uh, just come in and capitalize on an inside right or left. Keep herself busy in the heat. White had first priority, but it sort of followed her inside also. So perhaps climbing back up the rank there and red, white up oh. on the nose long hang 10 gorgeous and this esme up in blue looking to climb out of that fourth place that one most likely won't won't be the score and red having a look at this longer left nice drawn out wall on this one so this is delilah up on the nose. It's a long left too. Good line on these ones. The right's just fading out so much. And the footwork, the rail work, and sets this inside track up. And mm. she jumps out of there. I like that. It, it didn't quite work out, but that little oh. bit of that kick stall. That kick stall to, to run back up to the nose. Yeah. Like reset the rail. Check. Yeah. And in smaller waves, actually, on it's, it is difficult to do a... If you're going... Well, it's, you're not getting a lot of speed, so it's hard to, you know, really get that rail turn. So it's equivalent of like a snap on a longboard almost. You know, it's, yeah. a, little pivot it's a pivot turn. Yes, it is. It, yeah. it, it's, it's like that stall kick, and then they yeah. run almost like the fade bottom turn that you see yeah. or the, the fade whip. check at the whip at the beginning of waves. So still got some scores to lock in. Four minutes remaining. We will update those scores shortly. And this one is our surfer in uh, Star Delilah. Quick feed up to the nose. And unable to get down the bottom of that one. So three minutes 30 remaining. So Delilah, you, that wave was not enough. It's still getting locked in. Um, Natalia, your last one. Well, 3.35 for red. You need a 4.46 now, so you've lessened the requirement of 4.46. Three minutes remaining. Natalia, you've gone further out in the lead with a 7.5 on your wave, second to last, and a 4.2 and a 5.65. And this is red paddling now. Holding that nose ride. Long nose right there. Can she get Ooh, down? She does. Easy there. She had to do that little super knock knee transference of weight to keep the rail engaged. Long. Another, yeah. Long cheater five. So see that one comes in at two minutes twenty remaining. Four point two on your last wave star. We have green and white in live action. That star on the right hander and out of screen we have our surfer in white, the heat leader. So this is star on that beautiful orange tinted surfboard looking beautiful and the gliding gliding through the morning light. So a three point seven on Delilah's last wave. Not enough. Now looking for a five point two five in red. Blue looking for a 6.75 as she pulls the trigger on this. Mm, so a nice set left. Working her way up to the nose. And will she get stuck? She does get stuck up on the lip. You saw that her shoulders kind of over the weight forward. This is the critical one with a minute. Can Delilah find the wave to push it past the 5.25? No, that will not be the wave. One minute left here in the Heat 3, Round 1, Surfing for Hope, Longboard Classic at Morro Bay. So 
So we watch red there. This is 45 seconds remaining, so it might be her last go here. Keeping busy surfing this one and pulling out again. So some of these surfers not capitalizing on that end section, deciding to just kick out. Maybe they're not used to beach breaks, but green here, that heavier board, as we said earlier, that momentum pushing her down, gets the 5 and 10 combo, looking very strong. Quick footwork. Wow. So... And unable to complete as well. So I wouldn't say the wind was an issue on that one. You can see the white caps though out the back. And this is Esme with the last roll of the dice. Five seconds remaining. Four, th three, two, one. And a victory lap there for Natalia as she makes her way in with a comprehensive win there. Well, we will go to a quick commercial break. We will resume with the final heat of the first round here at the Surfing for Hope Longboard Classic in Morro Bay. See you just in a second. We'll be back and bring you all that information. The world has changed and the workplace has evolved. The option to live free of the commute and busy work life is here. Mid-State Containers specializes in custom remote offices ready for your new journey. Customizable in every way. Our team is ready to reimagine remote working with your specific needs. We are excited to help create the new workplace so you can embrace more of life. We start each day with one goal. With our state-of-the-art network, we provide reliable, high-speed internet to the Central Coast with no contracts and no limits. Visit peakwifi.com for plans and coverage of our rapidly expanding network. Welcome back to the Surfing for Hope Longboard Classic. This is the LQS 1000 at The Rock, Morrow Bay. We are watching... Heat number four, around 24 of the women's. So the men kick off yesterday afternoon. It's fantastic waves. This morning we have a two feet swell with just after high tide and we have the run out. Some beautiful split peaks left and right in this heat. Frankie Seely, Adrena Asuncion in blue, Sophia Friesen and Stella Landers in green. Yeah, and we got some cool intel. Adrena, 15, and we think she's from Morro Bay, but this is her, f so a local girl, young, uh, her first WSL event. Sophia is 13 years old, a Pismo local, and she is the Surfing for Hope Foundation wild card in the event. So that's pretty exciting. Young surfers in their first big events like this. You know, and some of the competitors are in their mid-20s or older, so I you know big age gap there, but age doesn't matter. It's just how you ride the waves. Remember that. It's just who rides the waves the best. 20-minute heats, top two waves. Look for those waves that are going to give you the potential to always better your score line. No priority in the beginning of the heat. And it looks like blue, deep, opening on the first wave. Adrena. 15 years old and surfing very mature. Nice. I can hear the beach screaming for Adrena. So she gets, she shakes off the nerves in her first WSL event here in Morro Bay, a chilly Sunday morning. If you're just joining us, thank you for tuning in. We are going to take it away with Natalia and Matt, a post heat interview with our winner. Uh, convincing victory there, Natalia. Really polished surfing. You're a goofy footer from the north shore of Oahu. Where are you usually surfing over there? Um, my home break is Chen's Reef, and I grew up surfing Hollyva Beach Park, so usually I'm around there. So no stranger to wind and, and the elements. When did you get to Morrow Bay, and did you get a free surf in this morning or yesterday? Um, I got to Morrow Bay, I think, December 2nd, and yeah, I surfed yesterday just right over there. Um, I didn't get a surf in this morning, but stoked to do well in my heat. <laughs> and 
and the intention for next year to get on that world longboard tour? Um, hopefully, yeah, that's definitely the goal for sure. Okay. Well, you're looking good out there and anyone at home supporting that you want to give a shout out to? Yeah, my mom and brother and I'm thankful for my dad for coming all the way over here with me. So, yeah. Parent power. Back to live action with Baldy in the booth. Yes, parent power and Minahuni power there at Haleiwa Beach Park. So many of the world's best out of Hawaii have, that's where they began, right there at the beach park in famous Haleiwa. And then uh, I wonder, being a goofy foot, if she ever sneaks across from Chun's to Jocko's, one of my favorite waves on the North Shore. Crazy left rip bull. So congratulations to her moving on through from the warmth of Hawaii to the chill of Morro Bay in Central California. Edrina, your first wave was a 1.65. Blue, your opening wave a 1.65. Here we go. This is this is Sophia, our 13-year-old Pismo Beach local, the wild card for Surfing for Hope. <laughs> She's a featherweight on that board. The board probably weighs as much as she does. Amazing stuff. Good job, Sophia. Just relax. Enjoy yourself. Do what you do in your free surfs. 15 minutes and a half left. Priority now with Stella. And second priority with Adrena. Sophia, your first wave, a 1.25. Frankie, in the red, your first wave was a 2.25. Here we go. We see Frankie scratching into this. Can't get into it. The left moving up under her. White now, or green, excuse me. Stella Launders with her first wave. Well, again, everyone really tuning into these lefts. Not much opportunity for a lot of footwork on that wave for Stella. But she is riding it all the way on into the shore. Well, it's great that Surfing for Hope gets to filter in some wild cards of theirs along the way. I think it was Tim Retta yesterday who surfed in the um, Cancer Survivor Heat three years in remission, was also in the first round. And now in this heat, Sophia Friesen, young Pismo local. A few years ago in Pismo, I think one of the head the head oncologist from Dignity Health Sun was a wild card. Nervous as all get up, of course. Here we go. A split peak. We're riding with blue. Adrena. She must know this wave well. She's being patient. She's hoping to get around it, but the whitewash is running off a little too fast on her on that sandbar, but she does get a second wave in her playbook. And if you're just tuning in, welcome everybody joining us here on a beautiful Sunday morning for the Surfing for Hope Foundation Longboard Classic in Morro Bay in partnership with the WSL, the LQS. This is women's round one. Two advancing into the quarterfinals coming up next. The men's quarterfinals begin. We ran two rounds of the men's longboard at the Yesterday, half of the day was men's longboard. Much bigger surf, or at least, you know, at least double plus this size. But we'll see how the waves play out. We have a whole day of action. Here's our young surfer, Sophia, from Pismo. Oh, man, you can see the wind whipping her jersey like a flag in the wind, just indicating how strong that wind is, that northeast puff. We've seen this each morning where it really kind of gains in strength for a few heats and then mellows out through the day. Stella Launders 
Cheater 5 gets it to the nose. Nice redirect back into the power source. I thought she was maybe going to hit off the whitewash and go left again, but she comes back against the grain. These little rights kind of reforming. The wind definitely brisking up. There we go. Stella, your first wave was a 3.25. Oh, Frankie there, getting bucked off. Maybe it looked like there was some backwash accompanied with the wind. So we've got the scores to drop for green. A three-point ride, Stella. Your last wave, a three. Your opening wave, a 3.25. Frankie, your first wave, a 2.25. Your best wave, a four. And your last wave was a throwaway. Priorities with blue. Adrena, you're wanting to score a 4.6 on your next wave to go into second and advance. And Sophia, you need a 5. Sophia, your last wave was a one-point ride. Adrena, your last wave was a 1.6. It's a lot of information for a young it surfer is. that's never been in an event. Like, what is this? It's There's a lot of things bouncing around. Basically, there's first, second, and third, what their two-wave total is against what your two-wave total is in third place. Mm. What we are reading out to you is the score of the ride you would need to go from third up into second. Same for the fourth place surfer. What is that score you would need to get yourself into advancing position. So that's basically what we're trying to mm. orate to you. And then there's the priority order. Who has first right of way to choose which wave they want. But, you know, it's okay to break it down for the viewers at home and for our young 15 and 13 year old surfers in this heat who are in their first WSL event yeah. ever, which is a big deal. One of them is a wild card and one just entered our local girl from Morro Bay. And she has a lot of support here. A lot of the locals down there were... Hooting, I could hear them. Yeah, no, they were. And um, I said, I've got to get back in there and, and talk. They just were watching and talking about her. Good. Um, Bring some story. And, but she's uh, been better than the guys for quite a number of years and quite a local standout, obviously. So they're all really happy for her and just happy for the local surf scene that she's representing them. Uh, and then out in red, Frankie Seely, she is... A well-versed competitor, having competed all around the world. So yeah. seeing her come in as the top seed, and you have great experience nonetheless for for Sophia and Adrena to be surfing with the likes of Frankie and Stella. Well, yeah, you see, I mean, you know, on the championship tour, you see the WSL. They go around, and um, I'm I'm forgetting the name, but there's always those highlight reels of how the where whatever country they go to, there's the young female surfers that the top surfers in the world go and do, you know, have these amazing sessions with. And, you know, these young women are just starry eyed and looking up, yeah. but it gives them hope. It gives them a aspiration, a dream. And so here you have that again with Frankie and Sophia and Adrena in this heat. Um, what you were talking about that she was the, you know, the best of the area for so long. Ella McCaffrey, who just won yesterday, I would be out at Seaside and she'd just be waxing her brother and all his friends wow. every session, surfing way above their level for yeah. years and um, great to see. And so she was just getting more reinforcement, encouragement, and um, yeah, look, all that work paid off and she just took the win yesterday. And that's it. And with, you know, eight minutes and a 20 minute heat doesn't decide somebody's career it doesn't decide somebody's life uh, but there's an opportunity in the remainder of this heat for positions to go up and down all you need is two waves and that's the beauty of competition is that it's not always the best surfer that win but it's the combination of the person who can manage and, and eliminate the variables the most effective way in a 20 minute heat and we've seen lots of upsets over the years and so many events every day but well Onwards it, and upwards, and the more there's no there's no losing. There's there, only learning. There's only learning, and and what's amazing, and I've got to be a part of the journey of women surfing, coming forefront, so to speak. Like I remember being at the very first 
Quicksilver Snapper event when finally the WSL said, look, women's and men's events are going to be held at the same time at the same place, and here we go. Unbelievable support from everyone, all the guys down there cheering, supporting, and 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 look at where we are now. You know, the first sport in the world to go equal pay. Yeah. Everything is f just perfectly fair. 50% this, 50% that. And um, so kudos to surfing globally for making that, you know, stamping that early mm -hmm. ahead of the trend, yeah. so to speak, saying this is just what's right. Let's do it. And so now all the events around the world, they pair together. Yeah. And a shout out to Mexi Logfest as well. They were actually one of the first professional events back in 2017 to give equal prize uh, purse to the men and the women. And it's actually paddling out now in the water. It's Caitlin Mickelson who did win one of those equal Local prize purses. Cardiff, I painted her house. Well, there you go. Before she had her baby. Yeah. <laughs> so she was Classic. Like, the beneficiary of that equal pay way back yeah. when WSL adopted it that same year and the duct tape invitationals as well. And uh, I mean, in many cases, the women, they are leading the charge with with traditional longboard surfing and they've got the, they're the draw cards to a lot of these events as well. So it, it just makes complete sense. And an, uh, it's a non-argument for equal pay. It is a non-argument. I know that there were some people that definitely <clears throat> championed it and were loud about it and uh, it happened. So that's great. And it's great that Caitlin was the first ben beneficiary of that. Um, Note to anybody that's needing that last-minute coffee or espresso, Iron Wolf Coffee is going to close up their little shop that they've had all week. Thank you to Iron Wolf. I think you need to pour me a small dark roast because I'll be down in a minute before you close Make that up. too. Make that too. And um, thank you for your support. They are up and down the coast, Iron Wolf Coffee. Um, we loved having you here yeah. this week. So anyone out there needing a coffee, jump on oh. in. That was Adrena just coming off the back. It was a good-looking left, but the wind plaguing some of these surfers today with the wind. Uh, and we actually we saw it with the men yesterday in the afternoon as well. They they are amazing, long, beautiful-looking lefts, but some of the, the top seeds actually uh, having a tough time getting in the pocket and being able to really perch, which is that word we use when the tail's buried in the whitewash and the nose is lifted up on the, you know, really comfortable on the nose that wind plaguing some of the, those guys with four minutes 30 remaining well you were mentioning caitlin she will be coming up in the first quarter final of the women's but before we get there we're going to go from this into are we going straight into the women's quarter final or are we going to go into the men's hold on i have it right here we what got, am i doing oh we are we're going women's quarterfinals excuse me straight into the women's so caitlin Mickelson will be coming up in the next heat. We're going to switch to 25-minute heats. And, uh, yeah, quarterfinals right around the corner. Yeah. But we have four minutes left here in this heat number four, round one. Yeah, funny enough, when uh, before she'd had her first child, I knew her mom. I'd done a lot of work for her for her mom, who was a real estate agent, painted lots of houses. And she's like, Jeff... I need you to come do my, you know, daughter and son-in-law's uh, house in Cardiff. They'd gotten a new place up in Encinitas. And, uh, yeah, it was all, it was a hurry up and scramble. And as I was moving through staging the house, they were bringing in the baby stuff, the decorating. Wow. And, yeah, it was really There's cool. some inside info for Yeah, sure. totally. What color? Oh, there was, oh, we did neutral colors. Okay. Very neutral. Of we course, weren't like, oh, it needs to be pink or blue or any of that sort of stuff. So that was a wave in the inset of Frankie Seely and catching up with Stella, who is up in the green singlet now, approaching the three-minute mark, and she's working this month. Green singlet and green board. And there we go. Gets on the note. Ah, just pearls. So Stella's three minutes remaining. You're currently in second spot, looking to drop a low of a three. Adrena needing a 4.6 in blue and Sophia needing a 5. I would say Adrena and Sophia know this spot. They've surfed this spot similar many times before and they know exactly where to position themselves on the bank. Yeah, yeah, and there's no time to be nervous, no need. Just it's you, the wave, your board. Yeah. Simplify it. 
do what you do. Let that get your get yourself out yeah. of the mind space and into your true surf space, and do the things you do naturally daily when you're surfing here and everywhere else. You know, it's been challenging for these competitors this week. Uh, I've noticed a lot of these surfers, uh, Mor- yesterday was the first time they have able to surf Morrow Bay because it's been so overwhelming for a longboard. It's yeah. been large waves, uh, really just not conducive to traditional longboard surfing up until yesterday. So some of them have just been biding their time, surfing down the beach, novelty spots, and really trying to you know, keep their momentum going and... Uh, it's 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 been a tricky week for them to prepare. So it almost yeah. feels like day one in, in so many aspects. And it's funny, you know, people, we've traveled all over the world and been at events and, you know, people are always like, oh, they're, they're surfing great waves all yeah. around. And you're like, actually, they, they're they trying to surf the event site or things similar to what they're going to be competing exactly. in. They're not and, going and, the and surfing a slab barrel or some point break if it's a beach break competition. Yeah. They've trained at home at a beach break. They want to come and surf a beach break yep. because – that's what they're here for. So maybe before or after the event, they might do a little saunter up and down the coast. 100% right. Yeah, and they, they want to ride their boards that they brought. In some cases, yeah. they just brought one or two. So, Frankie, uh, there's 45 seconds remaining. You have a four and a two, two, five. You're out on the lead from green, looking to drop a three. Blue, you're looking to get, well, in, improve your heat total. You need a 4.6, and white searching for a 4.55 still. That last wave was not enough. Why it was 1.7. 30 seconds remaining. Yeah. Counting this one out. Five, four, three. Two, one. We're going to go to a break and we'll be back for quarterfinal number one. Slow Cal Roots starts with natural and sustainable farming right here in Slow County. We offer a carefully curated selection of cannabis, both medical and recreational, from small batch craft concentrates and sleep gummies to locally produced fresh flower and extracts. Come join us on our journey to support family farms, support community, and support culture from the roots up. Slow Cal Roots, locally owned and operated by patients for patients. Post heat interview with you, but also, um, Adrina and Sophia, we'd love for you to come up to do a little post-heat interview too, you know, being your first events and just you you can hang out with Matt. Tell everyone what, what was going through your head. How was it feeling? Yeah, we look forward to catching up and see what it's like for their first professional contest. Yeah. We're into 25-minute quarterfinals here and former world champion Jen Smith having a look for that and a little bit of a sigh of frustration, that one not breaking. So looking to get an early start. Yeah, and our two uh, winners from the, or our two surfers from the first round, Chloe and Sophia, heats one and two. They made it through, and they are in this first quarter final. Caitlin Mickelson in the red, Jennifer Smith in the blue, Chloe Coleman in the white, and Sophia Todd in the yeah. green. Here we go. Caitlin Mickelson on her backhand. Cardiff Encinitas' own. Beautiful. Gets her foot up on the nose and the wind playing with her too. So that wind, pesky. The wind and the current. Oh, listen, I love it. The locals cheering for the locals. 
And um, yeah, we're we're gonna invite both young ladies up to the interview area after Matt does an interview with Frankie. We'd love to get the young ladies in there too. So leave your jerseys on and. Um, All right, I think we're ready. Matt and Frankie, take it away. No stranger to professional competition, we have Frankie Seely. How was it out there? Um, it was pretty fun. I mean, the, the waves were a little soft, but you kind of needed a bigger board to stay in it. Luckily, I had um, my old faithful to, um, to kind of get me in the groove. So that was really great, and I absolutely had so much fun out here. So can't wait for the next one. We alluded to weight and a longer, heavier board being a little easier in the wind out there. Is that what you were feeling out there? Yeah, definitely weight is a huge factor. You need a, lo you need a lot of weight, like maybe a bigger fin, just to make sure that that wind doesn't get you at the end of the, especially in the end of the wave and the beginning of the wave. Yeah, and you, had a, uh, you competed in El Salvador as the wild card last year. How was that? And you want to get on that world tour full time? Definitely thinking about it, it is def it's on my radar. Um, I loved El Salvador, it definitely brought back the fire in me when it came to comes to competitive surfing, so who knows, but I'm, it's not out of the cards at all. And a uh, shout out to anyone at home or anyone here supporting you, Frankie. Oh yeah, um, my mom and my dad are at home and thank you guys for always supporting me in everything I do as well as Caitlin, she's surfing right now and um, and just every all my friends and family at home watching. So thank you guys so much. Uh, we're going to go back to live action, and we will actually yeah, get the no. two local girls out. Right? Yeah, we'll we'll, stay on the we line. can go there. I'm just going to so give the surfers a few scores. Sure. Love it. Thank you. Congratulations, Frankie, moving into the quarters. Chloe, we'll the on your first up. wave, you got a five. Caitlin, your first wave was a two. Waiting on the score from for uh, Jen Smith. And for Sophia, there we go. All scores are in. Caitlin opens with a two. Jennifer, a 3.25. Chloe, your first wave, a five. And Sophia, a 3.75. Priority is with red out the back. And we're going to throw it down now to um, Matt is with Sophia, the Surfing for Hope wild card, the 13-year-old, and Adrena, the 15-year-old Morro Bay local. Here we go. Take it away. Hello, Sophia. Introduce yourself. Where do you live? And how was it for your first professional contest? Um, I live in Rio Grande, and um, I usually like surf here and um, in Pismo a lot. It, this was fun for my first contest, but um, I think I could have done a little better. Okay, well, luckily for you, but you can re-watch your heat on YouTube later on. And as for you, Adrena, how was that? Um, it was definitely difficult, but I liked the experience of it, just to get a feel of what this event is about, and yeah, have fun. And do you get to surf Morro Bay very often? Yes, I learned to surf here about seven years ago. So I know the ins about in and outs of this spot, but yeah. And what's the local surf community like and how cool is it to have the Surfing for Hope Longboard Classic here? It's really cool because everyone here is a big family and we all support each other in surfing. So it's cool to have this event here at home. Yeah, it's really cool too. Everybody's like, um, I don't know, we all like are close to each other and like you can talk to people out when you're surfing and it's just like really cool and fun. And you had a lot of locals here to support, but anyone at home tuning in watching this that you want to give a shout out to? Um, I think my friends might be watching this, so I'll give a shout out to them and I don't know if my family is, but <laughs> maybe. Um, I just want to say thank you to my family for supporting me in all my surf journey and I hope to have a longer journey in the future. Well, we hope to see you two back here at the Surfing for Hope Longboard Classic next year and at other events. We're going to go back to live action. Locals, just go and enjoy it and try and, well, there's no losing, there's only learning. There's my bit of wisdom for the day. Ah, that's the way, Matt. Well, great job, Sophia. Great job, Adrena. Oh. Those are the feel-good moments, everybody. We love that. Yes. In the meantime, thank you um, to everybody. And I hope the family was watching. And I love it. Coming from fresh eyes. 
youthful eyes. Um, at the moment, we've got scores to come in. And then I will recap for everybody because there was four surfers riding during the interviews. And things might shuffle, so patient with me. There's 17 and a half minutes left. I know that Chloe has first priority. Sophia has second priority. All scores are in. So now, Chloe in first. Jen, you are in second. Your last wave was a 3.1. Chloe, your last wave was a 3.2. Caitlin, your last wave was a 3.8. You're in third. You now need a 2.5. And Sophia, your last wave was a 2.1. And you need a 2.6 to get up into advancing. Priority is white, green, red. Red needs a 2.5 to go into second. Green needs a 2.6 to go into second. 17 minutes left in this heat. How cool to get the young ladies up there, the young locals, get their perspective, and not only that, to hear the community behind, chuffed, proud of them, excited. Great job, Matt. Those are the fun interviews, right? Yeah, the, that youth, was, the youthful eyes. They were stoked, and just saw Jen Smith out there. Maybe a little indication of the scores that she needed required, so I'll update that. Oh, okay. Moment. I just saw her, the hands raised for a moment. Sometimes I don't know. They're adjusting their ponytails sometimes, too. I have that problem every day. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Here we go. Our surfer in white. Oh. Our heat leader, Chloe. Beautiful. I love the little kick on the nose there. Whoa, one-footed before. Added bonus. We saw her getting some beautiful rights and lefts in the first heat. Well, her nose rider. And, and that board looks like it, it's just yeah. playing so well. Whatever is going on in her plan shape of that board. Well, that was smooth. The, for me, the highlight of that wave was the transition cut back into the next walk. It, it was stepping yeah. from the third part of the wave down to the first part of the wave. It was a nice rail carve that set up the next nose ride. And that, to me, is synonymous with traditional longboard surfing. Carving with the cross step in and out of the turn and then stepping up straight into yeah. the nose because the cutback set you up. And that's like, here we have the replay. So hunting down the line... Steps up to the nose here. So that one, not in the pocket, but this carve here. And that set up everything there. right there. And that's it. That tilt from that inside rail, all of a sudden it levels the board out. And get, yeah. she got she got a little energy infusion there. Couldn't get her foot down. Well, she didn't stop the momentum. And then she was going so fast that it, it, yeah, yeah, it lifted, her, lifted back. her back. So completed wave there from Chloe Coleman in white and green on the outside. We're going to catch back up with that after this replay. Looked I mean, oh, she's fallen off the back of that who, one. Who is that shaper? They have that classic long diamond down the middle of the board of every board they glass. His name's Michael Takayama. Maki Ta Michael Takayama, that's right. Yes. So I'm, I'm definitely familiar with uh, the that shapes. Is, especially down in your area. Yeah, right? yep. The spear, fear to spear is their, their marketing slogan, but they don't even need a marketing slogan because they've got so many good surfers on those boards that they're a natural... Uh, product in demand. A shout out to the Takayamas. If I'm sure Michael's tuning in right now. And an 825 for Chloe Coleman. So you're an 825. Wow. You've rocketed to the lead to go with your five point ride. Sophia in green. You're in second, needing a 9.5. But you've just got a low of a 315. Blue, Jen Smith, you need a 3.66. And red, you're looking for a 3.05. 13 minutes, 50 remaining. Mm, well. Chloe from Montauk, her brother will be coming up later, but what a wave, top score of the day so far, into the excellent range, due to all the things that you were noting, the, the trim line, then the cutback, and straight into walking the nose from that cutback setup, Caitlin Mickelson now up on the nose, now she needs to find the middle of the board, there we go, wiggling through, did not want to get stuck up on top in the wind, does well, and this one running off, Trying to get that last floater, and she does. Uh, 
And if Iron Wolf Coffee is still down there, go and see them before they close. We're going to get two more coffees. And up in the lead there, I mean up in blue on the screen there is Jen Smith. And just falling off on that inside section, that beautiful green Osprey surfboard shaped by Dane Perley, team rider. Some of San Diego's finest, Jen Smith there and Dane Perley shaping that board. 12 minutes 30 remaining. Caitlin, your last wave at 3.05. It was enough to put you into second. Sophia, you now need a 3.16 in... Sorry, we have a, just a change in scores. Jen Smith, your last one, a 4.5. So, Jen, you've gone into second. Red, you now need a 3.91. Green, you need a 4.01. Red into third, 3.91 required. Green, you need a 4.01. You're in fourth place with priority. White, you're way out in the lead. We are at Morrow Bay. The rock next to us, the Morrow Rock, said to be over 20 million years old. And that's the finger rock to the outset there. Looks like a face tilted backwards with the nose pointing towards the north there on an angle or tilted towards the sky. That has had waves coming through over that size. And that itself is about 30 feet, 40 feet tall. And this is Chloe Coleman, current heat leader. Stable stance in the pocket on this one, holding that nose ride and straightening out. So... A nice backup wave there, Chloe, and she'll get a reform on the inside with good vision there, stepping forward, relaxed poise, and a completed wave there for our surfer in white. So a consummate performance from the young lady from Montauk. Spends a lot of time out in California on that Michael Takayama. And red going down on that left. So just a marginal score that won't go into a top two and losing the board as well, unfortunately. And blue up and riding on the outside. Nice flow to start that one and in the pocket. Extended nose ride there too. Similar to White's last one and carrying that momentum forward. And straightening back up, looking for the inside, just trimming through the inside there. Blue, nice composure. And good use of footwork. And another completed wave there from our surfer in blue. And green on the outside. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. And coming from behind the section, our surfer in green, just when you thought that wave was going to close out, she actually went to the nose and held it and completed as well. So she's in and out. She'll get back with priority. A contrast of ways to surf that left-hander. A long, drawn-out wave with multiple nose rides and calves. And that green, Sophia, at that point, only after a, well, a four-point ride, but just holding that nose ride. So this is the replay on the webcast of White with nine minutes and 26 remaining. And that carving maneuver, that was the 8.25 beforehand, I believe, or maybe it's the, the 7 that she did. No, that was the 8.25. Excellent range score. The first excellent range score we've had all morning. And finishing cleanly on the inside. So that was a really well-deserved 8.25. And this is the replay of the 7 for White. Score still to drop. Jen Smith, your last wave of the 6.5. You've furthered your spot in second place. And Chloe Coleman backing that one up with a 7. And here she goes again. So White still out in the lead. She's up and riding right now. Blue in second. 5 to 10 combo. Holding that nose ride. Really enjoying these conditions. Cold water not bothering Chloe. So White, your last wave beforehand was a seven-point ride to go with your 8.25. Red, you need a 7.15. You're in third and green looking for a 7.25. That was the replay of Green's nose ride beforehand. 
with score still to drop. So very critical. Wasn't the 10. She's up and riding right now. Live action. And f goes incomplete. So a 4.9 for Green's wave before last. You're in third. You now need a 6.11. Red, you're requiring a 7.15. And Sophia, your last wave was a flat seven again. And this is the contest site for those on the webcast tuning in. The mid-state containers there, they have loading, they literally get loaded up, dropped off, and our commentary booth is still on the trailer, and that's the car park and the Morrow Rock in the distance, and all the competitors lining the shoreline. Beautiful line there, and Chloe Coleman, who's just throwing out Seven point rides, and in previous heats, a seven would have been enough to get the heat win a single wave of seven, let alone 8.25. So, Chloe Coleman with a very professional performance here. And green looking for a six one run, you're in third, and red a 7.15. Blue, your last one was a 6.5. You need to drop a 4.5 to move into the lead. I apologize, a 4.5 is your low score to extend your second place. You need an 8.75 to go into the lead blue. You have a low of a 4.5 to drop. Just on six minutes remaining. And white again, all quality, that one, just quantity. And blue, getting the five and 10 combo back to the tail and up again. Technical nose riding there from blue. And that one will We'll see where that goes, but the 4.5 is a low and a 6.5 is her top score. Some beautiful surfing at the beginning. And some sets on the outside with five minutes. So... In the driver's seat is our surfer in red, Caitlin, with priority. And Caitlin just drawing on her banks of experience, years of experience, like you said. I mean, she has been in the in this game so long, a, a stable figure in all these major events worldwide. Has surfed on the championship tour and in all the regional qualifiers and all over the world. Caitlin Mickelson looking for a 7.15. Two beautiful executed nose rides there. Hanging five. Nice carve down. Will that be the 7.15 she's looking for? Or actually now it, it's a 9.45. The requirement went up. Another score had dropped in for Jennifer Smith, past world champion. So ratcheted up the level here in the quarterfinals. The seated surfers bring in their A game. Chloe on a dream run out here in quarterfinal yep. number one. So Jen, your last wave is a 6.8. You've consolidated your second place. Sophia, you're looking for an 8.4 to move in a second. And Caitlin, you were looking for a 9.45 to move in a second. Your last wave, it won't be enough. A 4.6, Caitlin, you now need an 8.7 to move in a second. Three minutes, 13 remaining. White in the lead, blue in second. Red in fourth, needing an 8.7. Green in third, needing 8.4. 
Well, it's great through the week getting so much communication from people all around the world, you know, via text or through Instagram or however they were communicating about wax head and eyes, commentating positive um, notes from all around. Got a great message from Ella McCaffrey's dad um, this morning. So shout out to the McCaffrey's and Bill holding it down at Seaside. You're welcome. Love seeing your daughter doing so great and taking the win after three semifinals in a row. So Red, you need an 8.7. You're in fourth place, third priority. You can see they're all just having a little laugh and a conversation out the back. Third priority is with red, blue with second priority. She uses it. Mm. Smooth surfing from Jen. Very smooth. Tell you what, that down carve is very similar to the shape of Dane Per Lee. Uh, spent a lot of time in San Diego, forging his career up, or then moving up to Oregon, and then back down again. So he's been shaping, I believe, out of the Bird Surf Shed, or at times mm. the Osprey label. What a what a the the Surf Museum of San Diego, basically. Yeah. Yep. I love going down into the Surf Shed, hanging out with Bird. It's funny because he does the surf report on one of the radio stations daily. He does three he? surf updates for decades now. Yeah, I think it's on 91X, one of the alternative rock stations. Wow, I didn't yeah. know that. What oh, a classic. Yeah. yeah, Bird, they call in, and he does the surf report three times daily from Bird Surf Shed. Sick. So even if I don't get to see him for months and you months, hear I hear him anytime I tune in at that you know much surf like, check time. Much like Tom Curran tuning in now like it's the radio, as he said. And here's Red, last-ditch effort. Here she goes. Shout out to Tom Curran, three-time world champion. Oh, and it's not enough. So 55 seconds remaining. It's not over till it's over. But it's looking very difficult. It'd have to be the, the highest wave of the day. So White in the lead, 15.25. Heat total and blue in second. Yeah, showing the other competitors what it's going to take to move on through with the excellent score of 825 and then... High good in the seven-point ride. Ten points being the, the, the maximum, the most, the pinnacle of surfing, if you can get a ten. And that so board just levitating in the whitewash for, and it's also a uh, heavily rocket Michael Takayama by the look of it. Five seconds. Well, five now, four, three, two, one. Well, we'll go to a nice, a quick commercial break. Take a breath, get a coffee, come back, and we will have heat number two, quarterfinal number two. Since 2012, Surfing for Hope has been helping families navigate through cancer using the healing benefits of surfing and the ocean. Each year, we host a number of surfing-related community events to shine a spotlight on the fight against cancer. Visit surfingforhope.org to sign up for one of our free beginner surf camps. And if you'd like to help out, you can donate on the site too. Welcome back, everybody, to the Surfing for Hope Longboard Classic. We are into quarterfinal number two. On the women's side of the draw, we just saw Chloe Coleman and Jennifer Smith moving on into the, semi the semifinals. In this heat, in the red, Malia Illigan. In the blue, India Hoffman. In the white, Leah Diaz. And in the green, Nike Miller. Nikki Miller having a great showing in her first round heat. 25-minute heats, top two waves scored. Straight up and in the game, in the red, Malia. 
The wind just pushing the Leah off the back of the wave there. And our surfer in white, this is Leah Diaz, also coming stuck there and nose diving. And paddling behind those Indy Hoffman on that. Dr dry hair. Yeah. Maybe she'll have a complete dry hair heat. I've seen a few of those. <laughs> nice. Have you, ever have you ever had a dry hair surf? Every surf. Every surf. <laughs> the wax head. <laughs> it's funny until you were telling your story of where the nickname came from, from your early youth, wax in the ears, wax head, just wanted to and surf. I know, always thought it was the bald shine. Right, but you know what? I was actually sponsored <laughs> by Uppercut Deluxe, a pomade brand for the yeah, better part of 10 years. I know them. And I, was, I was the foundation surfer on their team. <laughs> but now I help them with uh, ooh, a little slip there from uh, Nikkei, who might have accidentally put some uppercut on her wax instead of wax, of we, course. We do have the uh, purple sex wax bars there at the mm. check-in well, we area. Do. That's a right. huge shout-out to Surfing for Hope for yep. providing orange sex wax, the best Wax brand, I'm not, I should be, but I'm just not endorsing any brand paid endorsement anyway. I love it. And it's, they're giving it to the competitors. It's so good. You usually get these like really yuck, sandy, old free wax that the, is given away as a, you know, as a prize in the competition. And this time you're actually getting the great stuff. Hey, uh, yeah. Chloe Coleman, come up bar. for your post-heat interview. Yes, you get the fresh bar in the box, brand new. Yeah, wax, free wax at a contest, especially if it's the right wax, like purple. It's awesome. And up and riding is Leah Diaz. Ooh, nice nose ride there. She looks down, stretches back out. So that one was the, the stretch five there. And then the leg rope tangled around the back leg there, the yellow. Ooh, and That's a big there. leash too. You could That was a, a, a longer, thicker leash. You could see she was stepping on it. Nothing like getting the leg rope Ooh. entangled in your toes or around your ankle right now. Malia Will she get over it? Trying and cannot that pesky win. There's always one condition that makes things difficult. And we have seen it being the wind that I did get a, I caught up with Bucky Berry quickly when I walked out of the booth and he's excited, but he was breaking down, you know, exactly what the wind is going to do. Like we had indicated it's puffed up mm. for a few heats at this time of the morning each day, and then it's really backed off. And he said, yes, exactly. That's what his wind app was app telling says, yep. him. And Malia. And finishing that wave was Malia on the inside, and on the outside was Indy Hoffman on a big set wave. She'll look to get a reform, perhaps, and it probably will do that back on the right. Good choice. Staying with it. She's used a priority. Sensible surfing. And... Okay, pulls out, no problems. Um, you know, that priority is so important, especially in smaller conditions like today. When you've only got one score on the board, try and add, build that house. But hey, we're not out there. We're not the coaches. So, yes, back to the dry hair surf. I've had many of them. Leashless dry hair surfs. Obviously, it doesn't happen yep. in super pounding beach break conditions, but when you have a channel and a point or yep. or even a big rip bar at a beach break, it, there's, there's something mm. said for I never fell. I had a super dynamic surf, not a drop of water on my so head. If you don't have a leash, say, for example, like um, Indy Hoffman in this wave, you'll kick out. But if you do have a leash, you're more likely to use that leash. Yeah. I, and I, it doesn't – like when you jump off the board, you're not scoring points. If you kick out, you're scoring points. Yes. Makes sense, yes, right? Yeah. So here's – Leah gets a five, nearly a ten. And we pen – yeah, and then she, she walked back and then jumped off. So it was a completed wave. Lots of scores to lock in for the surfers, so we'll update you accordingly. I can tell you it's a 25-minute uh, quarterfinal and – there's 19 minutes remaining. Well, and we see um, where she's wearing her leash up around the calf. So that is definitely the protocol for... Um, yep, we'll get to those post-teed interviews. Lots going on. So that's where they wear the leash a lot of times. Longboarding is up around the calf so it doesn't infringe with their footwork. And here we go. 
our surfer in green, Nike Miller, who came through first in her first heat from Hawaii over here into the colds of Morro Bay. Well, let's let's take it away with Chloe Coleman after that last heat win. Phenomenal heat total there, Chloe. I mean, you had a, a former world champion and you had an absolute tour of veteran. What did it feel like? I mean, over a 15-point heat total and in the first excellent range score of the day. Um, it felt really good. Everybody in my heat was ripping, so I knew I had to, like, really go for it. And that's those are my favorite heats. Like, you know you got to push yourself, and they pushed me. So super fun out there. Well, on paper, it would look like you pushed them. Uh, your transition turns, walking in and out, looking really, really smooth. Is there a wave that you think of that you can practice for this? Yeah, um, actually my home break of ditch planes, it's like a left off a of jetty, so I was like, I'm only going left today. There we go, going left. Uh, and everyone's obviously tuning in, waking up on the other side of the world. Say hello to those people who are just joining us. Yeah, everyone back home. Thanks for supporting. Love you guys. Cool. We're going to see you coming up shortly. Back to live action. Well, great job for Chloe. It looks like her brother Tucker maybe in the background throwing up shakas. Sister and brother here supporting each other. Oh, beautiful. Cheater 5 nearly gets her up to a full 10. Utilizing that rail and the wave running off. So Leah Diaz looking for a tiny score of a .80 to go into second position with 17 minutes left. Well, Chloe Coleman oozing confidence, seeming relaxed. The waves similar to the ditch back at home off the jetty, electing to go only left, and it definitely is a recipe for success for her, getting an 8.25 and a 7 up against, like you said, such a stacked heat, a world champion and a tour veteran in Caitlin McKenzie. Or Caitlin Mickelson, sorry, brain fart. And that was the replay of Indies. So uh, blue... So a 5.25 for Blue's opening wave and a 4.2. Leah, you've got a 4.5 and a 6.5 wide in the lead. Blue, you're in second. Green, you're in third, needing a 6.3. Red, you need a 6.2. 15 minutes, 50 remaining. Your last wave, Red, was a 3.25. Blue's last wave, a 4.2. White's last wave, a 6.5 and... Green's last wave, a 3.15. And this is the QS1000. These surfers will have another event to compete in next year at the Steel Pier Classic. And this is Nikkei Miller. Nika Miller, sorry, in green. And that one, a little more critical, that one. A little bit of levitation and... This time of the heat, that's a, a nice settling wave to build her heat total. Put the walls on the house, so to speak. Building, building, and building. She's taking the confidence from the heat win of the first round. She had a right in that heat and then thought that the lefts might be scoring a bit better. That is where she found her high rides to advance through. Mm. So sticking with those lefts, we haven't seen anybody going right since earlier yeah. in the first round. That That's high that high tide a apexed right in the corner here. Yeah. And now it's got a little lower. It's opening up that, that sandbar that we've seen in the last few few days. Um, and that one did break, but she was a little on the shoulder there for Indy Hoffman. And priority with red. And, you know, I saw a lot of these surfers competing at the Hot Dogger Championship back in Manhattan Beach just in October. A week after the Malibu event, it was six feet closing out tubes on the sand. So classic South Bay, but they haven't had sand. So it's been breaking like really close to shore. It was so cool to watch these young women really go hard. And it was really impressive to see because they're on long boards. It's a, a big hazard to get these boards not only down the face, but in the critical part. And I was blown away. Some phenomenal surfing from all these surfers in it. And Indy was there and uh, Malia as well. 
yeah, pushing it. I mean, not the optimum equipment you would think that you would want to ride in, you know, head high plus pounding mm. South Bay beach break. <laughs> and and not to mention just getting down the face and how do you utilize yeah. the speed that you're going to be carrying so quickly and the rail in those pounding conditions, but duck diving and paddling back out. Yeah. There's no duck diving. And that I'm a, I'll allude to similar to what we did of the, the shortboard QS to what happens on the Challenger series and the CT, you know, with the quality of waves. As we see Nika finishing off her wave there. So... Your last wave before that one was a 4.95, Nika. So you're looking for a 4.51 on that. So we do have uh, unofficially Bells Beach. And I know El Salvador were very committed to having more longboard events in the future. And, and you know, the US Open has obviously been a staple for the Longboard World Tour. It hasn't been confirmed yet. But those locations are challenging. They offer of a lot of varieties. We saw Huntington, it does change. You can have, you know, a bigger day, a left, a right. You can have Machado's peak down the beach. You can be shooting the pier. That pier bowl right's tricky. It does change. We saw this year it was actually very conducive to longboard surfing, but it's not always the case. So these surfers, when they make that world tour, and one of them will, and there'll be some wild cards too, they need to be diverse. They need to be adjusting their equipment accordingly to the waves because it ultimately isn't, it's not a high-performance longboard contest and it's not a nose ride contest. It's a combination of traditional longboard surfing where we're using the rail, the tail, the nose. But the, the big part is linking with the cross steps and the flow that is so synonymous with longboard surfing. Yeah, we've, we've been lucky there at the U.S. Open the last, the, the last two years where the, the, that was the first stop of the championship tour for the longboards. Favorable tides yeah. and conditions. We've had we had some great head-to-head -head matchups. That was a nice completed wave there for our surfer in blue. Nice tempo on that wave, epitomizing that that grace, and that style. And style, I think, can be attributed when someone is surfing critical and they're surfing fast. Then you can put your own uh, style on things. So usually, when we're on a shortboard or longboard when we're struggling for momentum and we're struggling for speed, we never quite feel our optimum uh, momentum. And yep. that's where the grovelly uh, point scoring element uh, comes into it. But I think when someone's in trim or in, in shortboarding, when you're doing those high lines, you're able to gain speed. That's where the style comes into it. And 10 minutes, 45 remaining, it's not just throwing your arms up and your hips. I mean, that's expression. But I don't think you could, you know, school out of style as such if you're not necessarily uh, in the critical part of the wave. No, style, style very personal. Here we got Red Malia showing her personal style. Cheater 5 tries to shuffle that back foot up and get a momentary 10 just shy of that. Goes for that little right reform. Little more footwork, not a lot of points offered on that unless it does reform into a little wave. Yeah. And even then, the judge is still, you know, really focusing on what happens on the majority of the outside portion of the wave, yeah. not the runaway inside when it gets down to a foot, six inches, whatnot. So, white out in the lead, blue, your last wave is a 4.75 and. Red, your last wave was not enough. It was a 3.75. You're still looking for a 6.25. Leah Diaz, our heat leader, with that leash strapped up around her calf by her knee. So tons of waves being ridden. Um, <clears throat> again, Ooh. we're looking for the, the bigger set waves and, you know, the most critical or the... The, in the criteria of the style or the, fl yeah, the style flow and grace yeah. um, to be executed, you know, the maximum amount of cross step footwork, utilizing the rail line appropriately, finding pace and time to run up and do a series of different nose ride yeah. um, variations. variations yeah. Yeah. Or beak and, boogie. Or, or the beak boogie. We love the beak boogie. We I mean, love it when they get up on the nose and swing the board on the belly side to side. That was a Cassia Mead or uh, a shout out there. She's the one who 
I got that one off. And you did. I love. Oh yeah, Cassie is so cool. Nico just looking for something on the inside on the tail there, but that one most likely won't be it. But we'll see what the judges give that one. At eight minutes and thirty seconds remaining. I guess looking at the scores, right? Lots of waves ridden. There's over, let's see, four surfers. There's almost 24 waves ridden. Um, lots of ones. So yeah. what they might be identifying from the surfer's eye when they're taking off, the wave definitely difficult if they're just getting repeated ones. If you're taking off on a small wave, you want to be navigating that whole wave in the pocket, on the nose. You better make sure you're going to get critical yeah, or you're just going to get a three. You're just going to – and if you need – fours five sixes whatever yep. yeah um so i guess what i was trying to express is maybe what we're seeing from here and what they are seeing from when they're paddling yep. in they're seeing that opportunity potentially well, well this here we go this is a smaller way but nice opening nose ride there for malia in red holding that nose ride and carrying a bit of speed and a little mistimed in the end but gets a completion for red so at this point of the time that is you know a, a timely wave to go to a heat total. We'll see where that one comes in at. But she's in fourth place. She needs to get moving and see if she can break down that requirement into two of a 6.25. So Indy in blue, you've got a low of a 4.75. You're looking to improve on top of that or a 5.76 to go to the lead. Green, you need a 5.06. Red, you're looking for a 6.25. And this is white up and riding. So that... um. Pink board there, really visible for the for the judges. The color always well, works when you're a couple of hundred feet away. Tell so this one way out in the face, nothing critical happening yet, but stable still. And I mean, if you can complete your waves and surf them all at shore, it's going to help your cause. But nothing critical to note there, but a completion, which is very important uh, at any level of competition. And she was looking to drop a 4.5, so the judges go with that one. And the replay of reds. So no bottom turn. Just standing up. Now running to the nose. Gets a 5 and a little tight 10. And comes from behind the section here. So that one a, a touch. But getting critic that one there. That's the longer one with a bit of style there. And so, sort of a little end turn there. The judges will digest that. Technically surfed. Small. A little on the grovelly side. But technically surfed. And composure from blue. Hands by her side. Nice footwork. This is live action. Nice timing. Some style there as well, absolutely. Delicate footwork up and down. And quiet hands. Very yeah, quiet hands. That. The way she's just keeping them right there at hip side. She had made that look really easy. Yeah. Not looking like she was hunting maneuvers. I like that one. It, it, it I mean, it left a nice vision. It did, and it... it you could see she never had a moment of fighting against the wind yeah. or the current. So we're just about to approach the five-minute mark. Malia, your last wave was a 5.6. So you're still in third. Red's gone into third, now needing a 4.4 with the score still to drop for blue. So 4.75 for Blue's last wave. It wasn't enough to change the total, but White's still in the lead. Blue in second. Green, red looking for a 4.4. Green looking for a 5.06. Blue looking to improve on a 4.75. The last wave was also a 4.75. And Leah looking to drop a 4.5 in White. Her last wave was a 3.9. Well, we see a lot of alternative craft out in the water in the free surfing zone also. All the mouths out. We have a few wing foilers out the back. That would be a little sketchy out here. Don't get too far out the back. <laughs> Lost its Yeah, speed. especially yeah. the winds around here. The winds around here and the, the ocean life. So things remain the same. Leah in first, Indy in second, Malia in third, and Nikkei in fourth. Nikkei with priority needs a 5.06. Malia in third needs a 4.4.
So Malia in a good situation with that high wave of a 5.6 now needs to find that one to get up over the 3.75 to a 4.4, 4.5 around there. Twenty-seven waves ridden in this heat. This will be the twenty-eighth. Yeah, a lot of waves ridden, a lot of throwaways and scores of non non consequence. And Nico, so, just a, another one where it's just shutting down there. Gets that five. Nice composure. I guess that's what I'm saying. It must be hard to identify when they're taking off. Mm. If that wave is a three point five, or is it going to yeah. be a six? Like. From what we're seeing and what they're seeing as they take off. So two minutes, 35 remaining. Because with the priority, they have the time to hang out and wait. They know what they need. You know, absolutely. Nikkei, your last wave, a 4.05. <clears throat> Not quite enough. You need a 5.06. Malia, your last wave coming in at... Oh, no wave ridden. Sorry, that was a replay I was I was looking at. Malia in the red has priority. Malia, you need a 4.4 to go into second. Second priority with blue. Two minutes left, so you would think that blue and red will be kind of hanging out next yeah. to one another at the end of the Ooh. heat the last two minutes since they are the second and third place surfers. Malia not needing much. A four and a half point ride. Blue's to looking to improve on a 4.75 or a 5.76 to go to the lead. So we're still a minute 40 on these longboards. It is likely we'll see a flurry of waves. And you see Malia's board just get blown as she spins around there. And uh, Red having a look at this one here. And no bottom turn again. Just standing straight up in the wind. A risky choice here. And she gets a 5 and 10. Wave isn't broken yet, but she holds the nose ride. And this one's sectioning ahead. And she's going to have to stay with it at this point at the heat. Experienced competitor. She knows exactly what she needs to do. She's got a high heat IQ. Oh, it's nice that she found the green face yep. after that foamy section. Through to the inside. Will this be the 4.4 she needed? Utilizing that priority wisely there with under a minute to go. And blue on the outside. Stepping forward. This is an endless summer-esque looking wave. Yeah, the points of Peru. Yep. Oh, there we go. Nearly on the nose. Nice composure. Gets on the nose there. Wow, this is a great wave choice for her with that priority. Will that increase her score line and then negate potentially what Malia score does for her? It looks like Malia's wave not going to even come in 30 at what seconds. she needed. 30 seconds. Malia, your wave was not enough. A 3.6. 15, 15 seconds. Sorry. That's okay. 50. Yeah. Now we're down to 10 seconds. So as long as the hands leave the rail right before the horn, we are counting out five, four, three, two, one. Our heat leader, Leah Diaz, a victory lap, a final ride in. Nothing opens up for Nikkei. Since 2012, Surfing for Hope has been helping families navigate through cancer using the healing benefits of surfing and the ocean. Each year, we host a number of surfing-related community events to shine a spotlight on the fight against cancer. Visit surfingforhope.org to sign up for one of our free beginner surf camps. And if you'd like to help out, you can donate on the site too. Three, two, one. As we 
just commence heat three of the quarterfinal women's of the Surfing for Hope Longboard Classic. This is a QS 1000 event. The first of two qualifiers. And out in the red, this is Luella Pace. You have Olivia Smith in blue. Natalia Wanderleach in white. And Stella Landers in green. As we catch up with Luella in red. Finishing cleanly on the inside. My name is Matt, the Wax Ed Chinoski, and we have Jeff Baldy Baldwin in the booth right now calling live action. That's right. Blue. Will she find her way up to the nose? She does. Cheater five. Fighting against the wind, but not really close to getting both feet up over the edge of the nose. The tight ten. I like that terminology also. Stella going down on that one. So the wind blowing into the face. It looks like a very windswept but offshore lineup. Costa Rica esque. Costa Rica esque, yes. Have you ever have you got to go to Peru ever? Have you got to surf in Peru? Yet. Peru? No. Oh man, the endless sand points. Yeah, I bet. Well, yeah. One side of the coast is all lefts and the other is all rights, with some big wave rocky options out there in the middle of it all. We are into quarterfinal number three. Coming up after this heat and the next, the men's quarterfinal round one. Here we go. Beautiful. There we go. Nice arced soul arch 10 at the end of that wave for Natalia. Yeah, beautiful wave there for Natalia. We loved it. The judges love it. A 6.25 <clears throat> white. A 6.25. So quickly, Luella, a 2.75. Olivia, a 2. Natalia, a 6.25. And Stella, just a 0.9. Red falls off on that next one. So that will be a throwaway for her. And we have a beach interview with Leah Diaz. Leah. You are a freezing cold, only your second time surfing in the cold water. How did it feel out there with the heat wind as well? Oh my God, the waves have been really nice. It felt really good. It was really cold, but I had a lot of fun. And what temperature would your home beach be right now in the water? I don't know, but really, really warm. So really nice. So not wearing a full suit down there, that's for sure. No, no just bathing suit all day. And anyone at home tuning in that you want to give a shout out to or your entourage that you were traveling with? Yes, I want to give a shout out to my mom and my siblings and to my friend Mariana. Right. <laughs> and anything in Spanish? Um, un saludo a todos los chicos, pura vida. You. All right, we'll see you into the next round. Well done and back to live action. Well, a nice quick interview in the cold. Leah wants to go warm up and get ready for her semifinal heat. Stella Launders. And out the back in the white, our heat leader, Natalia, who got the 6.25. Finding an easy rhythm and flow. Nice, beautiful on the eye. Good cut back into the power source. And that way finishing off. So we'll have to get a quick replay for the viewers at home. The complete ride of Natalia looking to back up. Well, she will back up the 625, but judges appreciating the cadence and the pace. How, sh you know, the graceful footwork, but also not, not fighting any of the wind, utilizing the steep part of the wave to execute all the different disciplines of footwork a 7.0 natalia's second wave a 7.0 so things definitely translating we see red take taking off on her takayama luella oh this left sandbar really coming together that turn you could see she got too high on the face
Well, Natalia gets a six on that last wave, but because she has a six, two, five, and a seven, doesn't factor in. But a beautiful wave to watch surf. So right now, Natalia in the white in first, blue in second. Olivia, you have a two and a three point seven five. Red, you have a two seven five and a one point five. You need a three point zero one. And Stella, you have a point five and a two two five. Priority is blue, then green, then red. So with priority, they have the option to just hang out, wait for what is going to be the biggest, best opportunity to get fives and aboves, um, you would think. Mm -hmm. You know, the only time you're ever surfing for those low-range scores is if it's the end of the dying of the heat and you need a 3.5 to, to get into second or something. With 20 minutes to go and priority or second priority, you can hang out, wait, and really just find the best possible scoring potential wave. Yep, absolutely. I'll go through that judging criteria too. <coughs> oh, blue, up and riding. Olivia on the nose again and gets the completion there, stepping back. And she's going to look for a little reform, will she? Or this one will fade away. Stays with it and kicks out. So... The first ride we've seen in a little while. Got some work done. That wave walled up, so a critical nose ride, and the judges will be looking for surfers that can have the continuous flow between major maneuvers, executed with control, and of course, exactly as we spoke about before, speed and in the critical section. Style, flow, and grace. When comparing nose rides in the steepest critical section, so grovelly flat nose rides out on the face, don't score. So, so, so cut back or carve down yeah. into the base of the wave, utilize the pocket, let the steepness pick the board up, yeah. run to the nose mid-face, yeah. right? The uh, Hold no, that trim line. What? You'll, like, you'll get a 6, a 7, a 6, 2, 5. <coughs> you're throwing away a 6. You're way out in the lead. Blue, 3.75 and a 3.25 with a score still to drop. Red, you need a 4.25 at this point, and green needs a 4.75. 16 minutes, 45 remaining. I can liken a nose ride on the face like a check turn in shortboarding, where it's a very directional turn where you're just getting the fins engaged, but not quite a rail turn. That's what a, a face nose ride is like. So you want to be buried in the pocket and get comfortable in uncomfortable positions. You know what? If you can hang 10 in the pocket, you can get barreled because it's exactly the same setup. Well, and, and there's something, you know, so simple. The board is made with a certain rocker. The board is made with a certain outline. Mm -hmm. Those two combinations with the fin is meant to utilize <clears throat> the pocket of the wave in its own special way. When you lock into that rhythm of the pocket to the open face, back to the pocket, that's the, that's the flow element. Yeah. And then you implement, you know, main holding um, the right pace, the right speed, and then doing the graceful yeah. maneuvering. And you know, Someone said to me the other day they were taught to run straight to the nose, which is something maybe an amateur contest will get you through a lot of heats, but it will never get you a win in an event, unless it's closing out in six feet. And I was so shocked that they, they were never um, initiated bottom turns, which is the most important and crucial part of surfing. And ironically... Uh, well, set you up for the nose ride. <laughs> well, it's two. Bottom turns and the check back. Yeah. You know that classic, if you're taking off on a left, you fade right and then do the cross step, which sets you up into that oncoming yeah. left. Or if you're going right, it's the fade to the left, little wheelie, run to the nose. Wave IQ and board IQ, understanding what your board's capable of. And Stella linking back from a long left to the right. So just under 15 minutes remaining, Stella will update that score very quickly. And here is Luella in red. Yeah, there's that little fade whip that you were talking about. And that set her up for the nose ride. And she'll kick out of that and get back out. Yeah, it was a, <clears throat> it was a very short wave. But just what we were talking about, that fade back set her up for a beautiful position for that short bit on the, on the right on the nose ride. As we look down the beach, no end of peaks and offshore waves to ride.
I hope our wing foilers didn't blow out to sea in the Bay of Atescadero. I don't see them anymore. 15, 14 minutes left here in this heat. Priority is with our heat leader in the white, so she can just sit out the back and really hang out and wait. She knows she has a 7 and a 6.25, and in the lead, Olivia trying to increase on her score line to be safer in second position, and then Stella, who went up the ladder, got a 3.9. So her best wave of the heat now needing a 3.1, and on her last wave, and Luella needing a 4.25 to get into second place. Luella, your last wave was a 2.7. Okay, so Red, with the third priority, wants to paddle into this left. It's a small one, but it's going to open up for that Cheater 5, and she will not make it around the section. And interestingly enough, the wider the nose, the easier it does make basic nose rides, but it actually makes critical nose rides more complicated. So the training wheels, the ears, if your nose is over 18 inches wide, chances are that you're going to be cheating as far as the technical element of a nose ride is concerned. And there is a cheating, is not a cheating nose ride, a 5 and a 10 in the pocket. And that, ladies and gentlemen, friends and fans, is how you do it. Yeah. Natalia, in white... Off to a great start and just most likely extending her lead with some of the best nose running we've seen in the morning so far. Wow, so a great use of priority. She didn't really need to take a wave. She's out in the lead, but that is where all three of her waves previous to that were caught. They're the bigger ones, the wider ones, opening up steeper and this waves, ladies and gentlemen, will be the high score of the heat, and deservedly so. Can't wait to dissect Be this yeah, one on the replay. Be beautiful, beautiful, long, extended, arching 10. Right on cue. Yeah. 925, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Natalia, a 925. Take note, competitors. The bar has been set. Natalia showing what is up. And if we watch this, knifing the takeoff, stalling. Letting the belly of the board and the tail uh, sit in the pocket. And here gets the 10 back to the 5 and holds it. And there she is sitting in the pocket, steps back and finishes with control, style, flow, grace, and a critical nose ride for Natalia with a 925. And what was so beautiful and the reason it went, I think, into that, not only that sequence of 5 to 10 to 5 to 10, there was no wobble. Her lower uh -huh. body stayed so calm. The front foot stayed where it was placed. The back foot shuffled gracefully. Her hands were relaxed, the like weight in loose the board at the well. side. The weight in the board, zero, zero um, fight against yep. anything other than the ride. Great angle, run amok photography there, holding that nice and tight, the 10. What you can see the board buried back. It wasn't a super hollow wave, but she was riding on that upper third of the wave and just opting a step back at the perfect time. And... That is what we've been asking. The judges have been sort of asking, keeping the scores very low. And she is out there, Natalia, just enjoying herself, much like Chloe Coleman in that opening heat. <laughs> She's gone left so much. I think she just thought, well, let's ride her right. There's 10 yeah. minutes left. She does not need that wave, but she's having fun surfing. Yeah. Wanted to see what it feels like on her backhand there, maybe. Ooh. Nice. Down carve. Yeah. Beautiful. So this is what we're talking about. Staying in the power source. Utilizing the rail. Sets herself up for success there. That there is nice. Go. The whole gang. Oh, she uh, doesn't ride out. So close there for Olivia in second. So this could better one of her scores. We'll see. Luella taking off and well at the moment needed a 425 we'll see if olivia's wave increases what this what she needs mm. that was luella and red using her priority so olivia she had some nice nose rides to start and it's just that last 510 she held it the wind held her back it wasn't as uh, big and as critical as the wave we saw from natalia but 
position. where she where she got up on the nose that was you know aces unfortunately deemed a non maker so although that beautiful footwork and nose riding was shown completing the wave critical 3.05 does not factor into <clears throat> her score line <clears throat> Luella your last wave a 275 priority with green Stella still requiring just the 3.10 That drone angle was gorgeous, wasn't it? Run amok yeah. photography. So here's Blue's wave, that carve, and here sets it up the nose ride, gets low. She could have walked at the beginning there to use that momentum. So this, that, because she didn't walk straight away, it set her out in a forward projection. Had she been being back about, you know, a foot, it might have been enough for that tail to engage and keep that momentum forward. So Olivia... Your last wave didn't go back into your top two. So wide out in lead. Blue in second. Green looking for a 3.10. This is the replay that we just saw when we were talking about that wave of Olivia, the incomplete one. This one was a 2.5 for Green's last wave. A 2.5 for Green's last one. And red on the outside section as well as blue. This is a great angle with both surfers. And both not bottom turning, standing up and getting blown off the back. So the once again, the bottom turn, I will say it for the 600th time along with you, that it is the most important part of surfing. Seven minutes, 35 remaining. They're all, they're, the surfers are so anticipated to get to the nose. They're, they're, everyone is so obsessed with nose riding, but this is longboard surfing. It's not a nose ride contest. My passion is getting the best of me, so I'm just going to take a step back. Seven minutes remaining. Situation remains the same across the board. Words of wisdom from our experienced judging panel. We want to see two tens, not ten twos. So take that piece of advice and run with it. No charge, just your entry fee. Red, up and riding. Stella Landers, nice stable surfing on a heavier board, looking good in the wind. Stepping forward in the critical part there. That's where you want to be on the nose back there in the pocket and a nice completed wave there so far for green. So that one will will feature into a, well, we'll see if that goes into a top two, but strong surfing. And this one is Olivia currently in second place, gets the nose right and gets a completion that time, winding up the windows and a unusual cross step finish there. Just you could see, yeah, she just that that inside rail buried. She almost went over the back, but she rides out nonetheless. And <clears throat> she keeps taking waves because she knows she has those mid range threes, even yeah. though she's holding second position. So she really wants to extend it, putting pressure on Stella and Luella. So beautiful open longboard waves. They're not closing out. They're so conducive to good surfing. And here's that heavier board from Natalia. Beautiful poise there. That's a very Cassia-esque uh, hip mm. uh, adjustment there from Natalia. And just schooling her other competitors. I love that reverse cross step kick out. Another um, well-surfed wave for Natalia, who has a 7 and a 9.25. She's, she's identified <clears throat> that lineup where she's picking off those open lefts. Just under five minutes now in this quarterfinal number three. Olivia, your last wave was a 3.85, so you bettered your 3.25. Now, Stella, you need a 3.7, and Luella, with first priority, you need a 4.3. We do have the priority monitor above the judges' um, booth here, so you can always look in and check what priority number you are. 
currently red is in first, green is in second, blue is in third. Nine waves ridden by Luella. Her two top scores are 2.75 and a 3.0. So with priority, trying to sit and identify with four minutes left the wave that is going to open up for the best potential. Here we go. Day's a little bit too high on the top of the wave, running to the nose, and gets pushed out the back. So that priority does not get utilized to her advantage. Ooh, ow. Green slapping the water. And blue up and riding on this one. Uh, short of the nose, being hypercritical here, but that's why we have the drone there. She was an inch short of the nose. Looking good on the nose, though, like on that area. Carrying good trim speed and in the critical part of the wave. You can imagine if she does get those toes over, it would, would definitely go into a top two. And Natalia just playing switch foot now. And she's beat them natural. I mean, goofy foot. She may as well just try and give it a go. Switch. So two minutes 40 remaining. Red looking for a 4.3. Green looking for a 3.7. So now, yeah, Natalia just having a surf. Just yeah. probably cataloging waves. So you see blue just a little short of the nose there. So it's, those toes have to be all the way over. And that one's still short again and still a lot of whitewash pushing there. You want to see those toes really far over the nose. The judges will take note of that. You know how in the competitor areas at many of the uh, stops, there's all the training tools yep. and everything? Do they have the Indo boards as training tools in the in the WSL? They don't. And thankfully, they don't have any skateboards either for surf skate. <laughs> One minute, 55 remaining. Um, Natalia, 16.25 heat total in white. Blue, you haven't improved on your heat total. You're still in second. Green, you need a 3.7. Red, you need a 4.3. You have had at least 11 waves. We can't tell because it's off the screen. One minute 30 remaining. Red needing a 4.3 and green needing a 3.7. Blue, you're looking to drop a 3.75. Well, what we know is there's, there's definitely a ton of opportunity to get waves five and above. Yep. There's no end of waves as we've had, oh, Louis, um, you know, 30 plus waves ridden in the heat or more. Um, a lot of them are just low scores due to go. incompletes. That's it. And, and there's Stella up on the nose. That one was a, a proper nose ride there in the pocket. And again, that weight of this, that board looking good through the wind, strong this, surfing. This could be the wave that pushes her past the 3.7. We shall see in the end, in the dying seconds of the heat, she won't get out the back for another. So will Stella, with 30 seconds left, will wait for the score to come in, get the score she needs. Now Olivia has something to say about that. Tight on the nose, 10, but can't get down the face. Luella, on her 12th wave, wants to complete run up to the nose there, oh, we, there go. we go nice cheater five and a quick moment up on the nose with 10 she needed a 4.3 so a fast finish i'm going to count it out five four three two one well on the 12th or 13th wave for Luella, will that be the score? And also for Stella. Stella bounced up into second real quickly. We do have scores coming in for red. So we don't Natalia is through in first. Stella got a 4.25, takes over Olivia in second position. Now does Luella finally get the score? She's been hunting all heat. So that first nose ride, not critical, but it all comes down at second, gets a, a five and a bit of a 10 there, the soul arch. Showing a bit of that style and an off the top, and she gets the completion. So I would say one of her best waves, that's for sure, in this heat, just on a visual sense. And 
it's always hard when you have 13 waves to do the comparison to your others, both for yourself and the judges. But she did everything she could right to the very end, stepping off in the shore. So we'll have to... The next heat has not started. Hold your positions. Well, it looks like the, the score is in. I can't see it on the screen. She goes in to third, does not advance on that last 4. wave. 4.6 on her last wave. Okay, so. 4.6. It's not enough. White in the lead, green in second. We're going to go to a break and we're going to come back with live action. You just do what your elders do. Get rad. Get air. Adrenaline. The world has changed and the workplace has evolved. The option to live free of the commute and busy work life is here. Midstate Containers specializes in custom remote offices ready for your new journey. Customizable in every way. Our team is ready to reimagine remote working with your specific needs. We are excited to help create the new workplace so you can embrace more of life. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for joining us here. Quarterfinal heat number four, LQS women's heat in the red, Liv Stokes. In the blue, Kyla Burke. In the white, Stardalia. And in the green, Frankie Seeley. We saw coming through that last heat, Natalia getting a 9.25 and a 7 and then a series of throwaways sixes and other high scores great heat for her here we go with Liv from the left to the right reform and behind her Frankie Seeley in the green oh this these lefts that one runs off a bit too big and crashing down the sandbar so both surfers will just sort of finish in the whitewash not a lot of extra points in that whitewash finish unless it reforms into green face offering potential for flowing footwork so we have a night we have a beach interview coming up with natalia and with Matt. But first, Liv, your opening wave of three, and Frankie, your wave of 2.4. Love to hear about what's going on with this board of hers. Take it away, Matt. Natalia, the highest heat total and single wave, a 9.25, a beautiful performance. How was it there? It was almost like a free surf out there for you by the look of it. Um, it was super fun out there. Um, the wind was picking up, but it would kind of just like help you hold into the wave, I guess, or lock in. And yeah, it was super fun reason we have your board here because we're fascinated the weight of the board looked fantastic in that windy conditions um, the tail of the board we couldn't even see it because you're actually nose riding so deep in the pocket the tail was where it should be tell us a little bit about the board um it's a nine six nine six euphoric model by craig kawamura lost not found and yeah i love it i rode one of their demo models and then um i got a modified version and i've been loving it well, it was sitting in the pocket really well. The judge is obviously appreciating your positioning. What are you going to take through into your next heat? Um, hopefully just keep getting some solid scores and having fun. Well, you're looking good. We look forward to seeing you in the semifinals. Back to live action. All right, thank you. Well, what a heat there from Natalia. 9.25 and a 7 and a whole bunch of other great waves. Right now, though, all eyes on our surfer in white. Star coming through that earlier round. Nice utilization of the rail. And, you know, fortunately, what it looks like for the surfers, and we anticipated this, the wind was really strong side offshore. It could be kind of around the peak 
of what that is. The wind app, one of the wind apps was indicating it was going to decrease um, through the late morning. And it looks like it already might have. We saw it wreaking a bit of havoc for the surfers in a bunch of the heats. Just so much wind. They were getting too high on the face and blown over the back. So, thanks for joining us here. The Surfing for Hope Longboard Classic quarterfinal number four. Liv Stokes, Frankie Seeley, Kyla Burke, and Star. Waiting on this. This was the ride. A 4.25 for Star. That wind, Matt, looking like it might just be beginning to ease off a little bit. We do have the... the an indicator flag down the beach, which is the, the markation of the edge of the competitor zone, and it's not whipping as strongly as it was before. And also the uh, wing foilers have come in. Yeah. And uh, there's a certain knot of wind you need or certain miles an hour for that. Yep. But the surfs in this heat, perhaps with the heavier boards, we're now into the quarterfinals. So Frankie Seely on her board, which she said was a little heavier. We know Liv Stokes, well, I know Liv Stokes, not a Michael Takayama, for those of you out there. Another one of those uh, Fear the Spear team riders. Star out there in white and seconds, definitely on a heavier board. That's what got her through that heat earlier. And Kayla Burke in blue. So green, 3.15 and a 2.4 into an early lead. Star with a 4.25 on her opening wave. Red, Liv Stokes with a 3. On her opener, and Kayla Burke with the 0.75. 19 minutes remaining. So were you enjoying the setup of Natalia's, oh, her board? Yeah, I was and, surprised. And I thought it might have been a narrower nose, but just once again, using the weight and the bottom turn to set it up, it was just, uh, you know, <coughs> really, obviously with, with Chloe Coleman as well in that previous heat, and, and Jen Smith put on a beautiful performance. It's these surfers that understand the features of their surfboard that are really shining this morning. I think that that's the story to take away. Uh, as much as heat IQ is important, there's no shortage of waves out there. There's no, no. we saw 40 plus waves yeah. written in the last heat. So priority or more. is, it's important for sure, but it hasn't actually decided any decisions in no. this whole heat, in this whole day. S surprisingly, they've, yeah, a bit of um, not utilizing priority and just going for anything coming their way. We've, and we've seen an endless smattering of twos, ones, and throwaways. Well, um, uh, contest director there from the hot dogger, um, Ed Salt, is on the beach, and he's a longtime South Bay local. And in the, those beach breaks, traditionally from the, well, from the glory days, from the, the early days of surfing, the 1930s, 1940s, those surfers knew how to handle bottom turns to set yourself up. It's the art of trim. It's understanding where to put the board and if you don't know how to do that on a big, flat, 14-foot board, you nosedive, right? Yeah. You don't just stand up with no... Oh, so we've got white on the right, red on the left, two beautiful waves of both surfers. We'll catch up with the replay with, with white, who completed as well. <laughs> I just had a little a little moment. It would be pretty amazing. You know, I don't, I don't follow golf heavily. I don't know if you do, but every once in a while they have the top golfers of now have to go out and play around with the old cherry wood drivers and three ah, woods and all that, great. you know, the, the shafts were different. Like wow. all the modern technology is so intense. Yeah. So it's increased how far they hit it and yep. you know, how they guide the ball. It would be amazing to see the best of the best out on the old ball, long, the redwood longboards, yep. just to see how they could even handle it, You've utilize given me a, it. A really good idea for my own invitational contest. We have the vintage board advance. One, always, you have to carry it down the beach by yourself, so you have that, to. You have that to, was a huge part. <laughs> they're so heavy; they're like 80, 100 pounds. That was a huge part of surfing, carrying your own board, being adept as a waterman in and out of the water. And here we have. Star, the water woman herself, trimming in the midsection of the board, back on the tail. On one of those rare rights that we've seen since earlier this morning in the yep. first few heats. Yeah, that's why you look back at the old classic black and whites of the surfers of the day in their one-piece uniform, yep. you know, b bathing suit setups with these broad shoulders and lats and chests with those massive... I wouldn't even want to put one on my yeah. head. I'd get a flat head. They're staunch for sure. And um, the lifeguards back then were the surfers. And that's why we saw a lot of them as big wave surfers. But they were just surfers. They rode from 2 to 20 feet.
they were adept water men and women. And this but is Kayla's wave standing up in the middle of the board, just paddling really far. But she's managing to get onto that. We haven't seen the pocket yet. It's over to the left of the screen. And that's why she fell off the back of the wave because she didn't have the momentum of that energy. It's a soft swell today. It's it's back down. It's not, not so much a ground swell. It's a remnant of the swell that we had earlier in the week where we had waves breaking on top of that finger rock about 40 feet of whitewash with the wind of course how Something. terrifying was it and now it now it just looks like this picturesque yeah not tropical but it yep. it definitely does not have the scary mean Invi dark factors it's inviting it's inviting um few scores beautiful scores so frankie you have a 2.4 and a 3.15. You have first priority. You're in third place. You need a 4.26. Star, you're in the lead with an opening 4.25. Your last right was a 5.5. Liv, you have a 3 and a 4.4. You're in second place. Kyla, you have a 0.75 and a 1.25. So most importantly now, green with first priority needing a 4.26. And Kyla needs a 6.15. We do see some sets Moving into the lineup, priority with green. And a shout out to everyone tuning in on YouTube. Uh, we have the live webcast going. This is the most important surf event in the world right now. I believe there's some people trying to get barreled on an island in Hawaii. Yeah, the pipe is there. That the pipe masters might be happening. Is yeah, that live right now? Perhaps, but everyone's tuning in to Morrow Bay. The That's right. Surfing for Hope Longboard Classic here Come watching on. The, some of the the North America's best longboard surfing going on with 14 minutes remaining. We have Star Delilah out in the lead with a 5.5 and a 4.25. Liv Stokes with a 4.4 and a three in second. Frankie Seely hunting for a 4.26. The lady with priority and blue, Kayla Burke, needing a 6.15. This is a chance to, for these surfers to qualify for the World Longboard Tour. They'll have another event in May at the, the Steel Edge Coastal Pier Classic, I believe it is, over, in, over on the East Coast. And this is a replay of Stars Waves. This will be the, the opening wave. Oh, that was the opener. The left and the right was the 5.5. Sure. Um, we were talking about the old days, the, the, the big redwood. Yep. Who knows how much they weighed, how staunch the lifeguards were, and the lifeguards were the surfers. And that tradition carries on on the north shore of Hawaii. Um, mm. You know, fr it, it always has. Eddie Akau was yep. a lifeguard, you know, and a surfer. And, and, and so many of the modern generation are lifeguards and surfers. For sure. A lot of the surfers, uh, especially longboarders, have grown up doing junior lifeguards as well, being accustomed to the ocean. Myself and in Australia, we have the nippers. Over here, we have the junior lifeguard did, system. Did you keep your little red beanie, your tie-on cap from oh, nippers? I'm actually, a, I am actually a, a lifesaver as well. Oh. So I do act, unfortunately have that, but <laughs> that's okay. Wear it with pride. We have blue. Kyla Burke down the beach. Whoa. You can see, I, th I thought the wind might have been backing off. That one definitely was showing a lot of wind up the face. Good wind, though. That's what's grooming this sandbar and the faces of these waves. But if you get up too high, as we've said repeatedly through the day, it's difficult if you're not carrying enough board speed and angling the nose down the wave enough, you're just going to get blown over the back. Exactly right. You're, you know, you're acting, you're like a big parachute up there. And then the bottom of the nose of the mouth, the longboard, just getting pushed up more. And yes, we'll give you, is it white asking for requirement or stretching, a combination of both. We'll update that in a moment anyway. And I know I like to stretch. I'm sure you do too, Baldy. Oh, I do. Look at that. What a pretty, there we go on the drone. Run amok photography, killing it. You see our... Our surfers, Kyla and Star, who's out in the lead with a 4.25 and a 5. And it does not even remotely look like what we watched uh, all week. So good for longboarding right now with traditional longboarding. Red, Liv Stokes in second with a 4.4 and a 3. Frankie, your last wave was a 3.6. It wasn't enough. You're chasing a 3.81. And Kayla, you're looking for a 6.15. 6 11 minutes remaining. 
White in the lead, red in second, green in third, blue in fourth. Well, talk about exciting. Also, we have the first of the men's quarterfinals coming up here shortly, 11 minutes away. Richie Cravey, Cormac O'Brien, who we got to watch yesterday. That was really fun. Um, Jake DiMatteo and Chase Leader, quarterfinal number one, coming up shortly. So I'm sure they're getting checked in, tuning in their equipment, using some of that well, we don't know. They're all sponsored, so who knows what wax they're using. But there is some at the uh, Beach Marshalls area. I like how the singlets for the longboards is always the vest yeah. style. You know, a very a classic throwback that, that's been implemented yep. through the all the events I've seen. A very, you know, yeah, an era right. thing, a throwback era thing. And White, you are in the lead, a 5.5 and a 4.25. You have priority, 10 minutes remaining, and you're right, the singlets at, at from the very first longboard, well, the very first surfing world titles, 1964 in Manly Beach, we had Midget Farrelly with that famous number four singlet, the white singlet with that drop knee turn, the hands raised, and that set the precedent. And that, shout out to WSL, that is awesome. And Surfing for Hope Longboard Classic, the singlets, Good call. That yeah. was a great pickup. Yes, Baldy. yes, yes. I have you a, do so many heats. And I have a few from uh, different events. A couple of them I've gotten signed. I'm not a big signature person, but it's just cool. They're like just little things. I'm like, will, will these ever go somewhere? Right now they just hang in the rafters in the garage. Yeah. And um, But yeah, on the on the shortboarder side of things, they're always the t-shirt style singlet in the longboards. It's the, the, the tank top singlet. Yeah. And, 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 and always, you know, a groovy logo, sort of very aesthetically longboard-ish, yeah. I guess you would say. The associations with it all, where the, the on the shortboard side, they're all, they're very tech looking. <laughs> yep. And, and Baldy, I want to ask you a question while we have a break. You've been present for thousands of competitions over, well, hundreds of competitions yes. over your, your, your career. Um, what's it like now doing longboarding? And you said you were so dialed in last year during the Pismo event, well, the evolution. Well, I've loved it. And I mean, you know, so obviously the U.S. Open incorporated the Vans when yep. Vans was a participant and the duct tape. So we would get that. And it was, I, I was always the one chosen because me growing up through single fins, you know, surrounded my dad longboard. He worked in the industry. He worked under Del Cannon and all kinds around in my area with Takayama and Channon and Bird and, you know, so many um, being around it my whole life. I love it. And for me, I've longboarded my whole life, not all the time, but I do. And so really appreciating how difficult one it is yeah. to ride one properly. Um, and it's just beautiful and graceful to watch. Yeah. During the U.S. Open, you could have the biggest airs going on. But as soon as it was the longboard time, I would love to just sit in the sand and watch. Yeah. And so – I've always been a student, always appreciating it anywhere I go. And um, so I love diving in and being a part of it every time and to sit there, especially at the U.S. Open during that time mm. with David Nueva, with Joel Tudor over and over and over and just be saturating their historic information. Always amazing. And you had referred to during the longboard Rob's peak. I'm like, no, man, during the longboard, it's Nueva's peak. They 100% Come on. You're exactly right. You got to, you know, during the shortboard side, it's Rob's and then it's Nueva's during the longboard. Nice. Um, yeah, so just a, a super fan and, and to watch it come back to what for me is such appealing yeah. style of surfing. Well, and, and some of the waves that we've seen throughout the event so far. Chloe Coleman in particular, and Natalie in that previous seat, if you were to take a, a photo at any moment throughout the wave, it's going to look good. And I think that's a, it's an idea that we're on the right track, thanks yeah. to it, Will Hayden-Smith, WSL, Kira Seal, Devin Howard for the initiation, yeah. and adopting this criteria. And I campaigned for a, a dozen years to get this type of surfing appreciated and aligned with the judging criteria in Australia. It took a while. It's, it's happened now, it's though. It's happened now, and, and it's... it's these all these serves all have shortboards too. Oh Frankly. yeah, and fishes and everything. I mean, I see Joel because, like I said, he's a pretty much a neighbor and see him all the time. And and I mean, for me over the years to be able to pull up into Cardiff and just sit there and watch Ryan Birch solo <laughs> sessioning, and you're like, is there anyone? Is there a better surfer in the world right now? What he would do on the boards oh. that he was making, 
was beyond graceful, beyond beautiful, and it was just hypnotizing. And kids out and there And then you get a, sorry, a session with him and Joel and a bunch of others, you know, and now that whole area through Cardiff. Ian Gotron represented yeah. in the event. We have Richie Craig yep. from down there. And he's and coming up. With, yeah, you know, from Pipes and Caitlin Mickelson, yep. you know. So we're saturated in it down where I live, fortunately. So there's a great variety of people riding different craft yep. all the time. Well, stoked to have you here, and I'm really honored to be here for the Surfing for Hope Longboard Classic and the vision of Andy McKay and, and Bob Vogel here to incorporate the WSL, and we thank Slow Cal, the the community, the 80-mile stretch of coastline for hosting us. We had a great benefit gig the other night with Tom Curran, who's tuning in watching this. He's been having it on like the radio we said in the background how cool is that that that, that was a little fuzzy moment and, and then i missed when he said i guess over the when he was playing live he gave a little shout out shout out to us also beyond the personal greeting um ah so cool and great to see tom and his son who rips at surfing also and a student of all craft as we hit the five minute mark yes pat curran the and that black wetsuits white surfboards uh, philosophy rings true longboarding with the neutral colors the heavy glass and that minimalist approach that the traditional longboard scene which was highlighted originally in a film called uh, the embryo of fine flow by matt and Brittany howard and then catapulted into the limelight with the seedling and sprout by thomas campbell to cult films that cap that really captured the unique vibe of the californian longboard culture and the resurgence of that and here we have it molded into the competitive aspect. Liv Stokes up in red, carving that down, just recently competing in the Pan American Games down in Chile. And she's back on her trademark square tail. She had a pintail the other day. And going down, someone who's familiar with lefts, training in lefts a lot recently, that will be uncharacteristic for that fall, but still in second place. So would you be scrutinized if you showed up with the most traditional shape, heavy glassed longboard, but it was painted like a Shane Haran laser zap? Oh, I, not anymore. I think, <laughs> okay. I th you know what, it's like... Checkers not, and yeah. turquoise and oranges. I took a photo last night of, of a board at um, the pizza place, Pizza Port. I saw yeah, all those know, boards up yeah, on the there rack. Was a, there was a, a twin fin there with the checkered and the, the, yeah. the spray. So it's funny you say that because I've just <laughs> designed a board that I will have that spray All on. Right. So I'll send yeah. it to you. Three minutes remaining. Hey, you know what? Just do what you want to do and don't worry about what anyone else is doing. That's what I always say. Frankie needing a 5.2 with priority in green. Blue needing a 7.55. Like for me, I've always been a fan of wetsuits with color. Whoa. So... Um, but you know, I get it. The 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 minimalist, the the black suit, the the muted colored boards. Yeah. Here we go. White, the star, star, the star. Right now, out in first. Beautiful tin, a quick tin, and green. Not taking that wave with priority, letting that one go. So yeah, Frankie Seeley, you wondered, just maybe didn't, maybe she was a little bit too deep on it, and we have seen yeah. surfers getting caught deep and behind so a smart use but of that goes. priority opting for a another left up on the nose and that one getting back to the tail again and she's on the nose again mm. another series of nose rides stepping back to the tail hitting that off the top and unable to ride out so two minutes remaining that you could just see that wave had so little power yeah. or speed no matter where she positioned herself it was a, a soft wave. But after such a long break, I, you know, that first left that came through would have been a, a beauty. But Liv Stokes looking to consolidate her second place and stable nose riding there. You can see by the hands, perhaps some nerves creeping in, winding up the windows a little bit and just trying to get through this heat. And definitely not the most comfortable heat she's had. And that is the definition of poise. If the hands are doing that little bit of circling right as opposed to just down shoulders or yeah. hands by the hips letting the feet do all the work well, before electric windows you actually have to manually do up your windows yeah, right that's and that's right. why we say yeah. one up the windows yep yep a minute and 10 seconds left star your last wave of 4.3 waiting on this wave for red frankie you need 
Well, we're going to have to wait for the score for red to come in with one minute left. So you need a 5.2 at the moment. It might increase. So I would just say surf to a six or plus. And Liv actually battling through an injury at the moment. She has an eye injury on in the cornea. So Ooh. as we see that score ready to drop, uh, 45 seconds remaining. So battling through pain to to get out there in the trying conditions. So you consider that. It's it's a it's a great uh, fact that I was just passed on. 30 seconds remaining in a 4.85. She does extend her spot into second. And White, beautiful star fade. down, looking to consolidate her first place. Blue and green behind her. So lots of waves being ridden. The countdown will come soon. Kyla with this long left. Can she get the eight point ride she needs? 10 seconds left. That, that won't do it for her. Five, four, three, two, one. Well, that's interesting you were saying and something with her cornea because in the heat before, I kept seeing her go and to rub her ah. eye, and I didn't know if there was whitewash whipping up into it or something, or her hair, but it happened on a few waves, so that that uh, makes sense now. Well, that heat ends as it is moving on through Star and Liv into the semifinals. But we're still waiting on... Oh, that, oh excuse me. Excuse me, waiting on the score from Frankie to see if she gets what she needs and overtakes Liv in second place. Liv's score is in a 4.85. Frankie needs a 5.65. Yeah. yeah, to be the highest wave of the heat. And a 4.35, it's not enough. Star and Liv moving on. We're going to come back for the commencement of the men's quarterfinal next. Since 2012, Surfing for Hope has been helping families navigate through cancer using the healing benefits of surfing and the ocean. Each year, we host a number of surfing-related community events to shine a spotlight on the fight against cancer. Visit surfingforhope.org to sign up for one of our free beginner surf camps. And if you'd like to help out, you can donate on the site too. Slow Cal Roots starts with natural and sustainable farming right here in Slow County. We offer a carefully curated selection of cannabis, both medical and recreational, from small batch craft concentrates and sleep gummies to locally produced fresh flour and extracts. Come join us on our journey to support family farms, support community, and support culture from the roots up. Slow Cal Roots, locally owned and operated by patients for patients. Well, good morning and welcome back, everybody, to the Surfing for Hope Foundation Longboard Classic here, the WSL QS1000, men's quarterfinal number one in the water, in the red, Richie Cravey, in the blue, Cormac O'Brien, in the white, Jake DiMatteo, and in the green, Chase Leader. So we just watched the women's quarterfinals through in completion. We have our semifinalists set for later in the day. Right now, four heats of men's quarterfinals. So these guys were out in the first and second rounds yesterday, probably two, three times bigger than it is today. Eh, let's say two, two times the size consistently, but they must be frothing. So much um, very consistent one to two foot swell pristine sandbar the left being the dominant feature all day long we have this nice stiff northeast offshore breeze and i like it these guys all season competitors and up and riding on our first wave richie cravey Great interview yesterday. Ooh, I like that carve down cross step combination. It's a small wave, but utilizing it well. Cheater five. Oh, another incredible little cross step cut down. 
and just maximizing reverse run. Nice completion there for Richie Cravey. Yeah, we will go down to the beach interview in a minute. I think Matt had to run off for a quick break. But here he is. There's no rush. We'll get these interviews in. They're not going anywhere. They won. They're coming back for the semis. Okay, let's take it away. Star and Matt. Beautiful surfing out there, Star. Stable surfing, looking very confident in the wind. And I noticed how cool your earrings are. And your first impression was? Um, it was really fun out there. I'm stoked to make it through. And the waves were really fun. And you said off the camera that you're lucky that the hoops didn't fall out. But if you're going to be making every single wave like you did with a high success rate, there's no need. Did you even get wet out there? A little bit, a little head dip. Yep. I was out in Ventura with the hoops in, and it was like 8 to 10, and they stayed in the whole wow. time. There we go. So we don't have 8 to 10 foot waves here today. Uh, is that where you're from, Ventura? No, I'm from down south in Oceanside. But cool. Yeah. And a shout out to anyone at home tuning in, watching that performance. Yeah, shout out to my mom and all my siblings, Sunshine, Moon, Tatiana, and Armando. Love you guys. And what are your thoughts moving forward in the next round? Ambitions to jump on that World Longboard Tour? Or are you just rolling the dice to see how you go? Um, that would be amazing if I could do that. Um, just going to stay consistent and try and do my best and have fun. Well, intentions are set there from Star. We look forward to seeing you in the semifinals. We're going to go back to live action. We are going back to live action. Congrats, Star. See you soon. Wow, hanging out on the nose. Chase leader. Again, we talk about that relaxed upper body, fluid with the relaxed lower body. Nice down carve. Another one of the team riders. Wow. Just a series of cheater fives, tight tens, tight fives. We had a beautiful score that dropped in for Cormac O'Brien. A seven-point ride for our surfer in blue. And here is the replay of that. Cormac with that individual style, flowing, arching. <laughs> well, somehow we missed that on the replay, but the beginning looked delicious. A seven-point ride for Blue. Corky Carroll. We're going to replay that wave for the fans at home. So it stays nice and high, gets the sole arch with a cl that other foot straight over the nose there. Nice arcing turn, and he sets it back up in the wind, coming from behind the section, which is key, actually, on the nose in the white water. See how he's back in that pocket? Quick feet, making use of oh. that tight area and another layback jam. So well put together wave for Blue. Richie Cravey, a 4.75. Chase Leader, a nine-point ride in green. Yeah, so that... Rocketing I, to the lead. You were just walking back in, and it was a long series. Um, a lot like... Uh, was it Chloe Coleman's waves that yeah. uh, defining that sort of farther sandbank left? Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love how Cormac just surfing with that freedom and abandon and, yeah. and throwing in, you know, some of those down carves, finishing with a little layback. So this is a strong hate of goofy footers out there. Yeah, right it really is. We love it. We've seen a lot of regular foots. Now we get a bunch of goofies in a heat together. Oh my, perched. Yeah. Like the birds on the rocks, he is just Whoa. hanging out on the nose and enjoying his time. And out the back on a set wave is Jake. Goes down a little bit behind the eight balls, that flat rocker. I love that, you know. The, the wherewithal and the acumen to know you're falling and go straight into body surfing the wave with the board as it's he doesn't have a leash. So he wants to collect his equipment quickly. That's something else synonymous with, uh, I guess, the pioneering waterman was the body surfing element. When they fell off, they had to swim after their board. That's why they were so fit and they could body surf. So Chase Leader, a 9 and a 6.5, rocketing out to the lead as he's looking for another wave. Cormac with that 7. Richie, you have a 4.75. You're just needing a 2.26 two to go in a second. And Jake... You're looking for a 4.76 with a 2.25 on your opener and a 1.5. Well, here is a beautiful replay. This is the nine-point ride for Chase. 
This is Matt when you were just coming back from the interview. I mean, he just found so much perch time up there, high and tight on the wave. And that is exactly what we alluded to earlier, that if you can hang 10 in the pocket, chances are you can get barreled, and Chase is no stranger to being tubed. So that is showing his wave IQ as well as his understanding of that Michael Takayama. Those boards are on a roll. And that mid-face halfway through. So he got all this work done. Beautiful. They were wow. loving that. This is the – was this the 6 or is this 6 the – 6.5. This is the 6.5. But in the 9, he got a sequence like that, then did the really strong carve down, set him up for the, the inside section to duplicate what he did on the outside, and that's where it just yep. almost doubled – so, Chase, you have a two-wave total of a 15.5. And I know Richie knows how to get tubed, and I'm sure Jake does too because he's very involved with his surfing on that art in motion. They've got their boards down here on display, as they usually do at all the surf spots, Cardiff and Malibu. Former photographer in um, Todd Messick, the shaper there. And Richie, he's on one of his brother's shapes. Uh, from up there in uh, Santa Cruz, I believe. And Cormac is on a Davenport. And Chase on a Michael Takayama. Oh, little fin first action. And functional because he comes out of it with speed. So stepping functional. into a hang 10 in the pocket. Carving back using the rail. That flow that we saw with Chloe Coleman up on the nose in the whitewash. I mean, that is critical nose riding. A smaller wave, but beautiful use of the whole length of the board. And it gets and the it heels... Well, Ladies and gentlemen. I don't know where we might go, but that was, and that was about as good as it gets. Behind, and the kick out, I must say. And Richie Cravey, my gosh, we're going to catch up with that wave because that was the best nose ride, I think, of the heat so far. Of course, he's trimming through the midsection. The man who can do it all gets barreled, hangs 10, kicks out. We're going to have a huge heat total at the, by the end of this, and we'll update you very shortly well, with scores. What a fun heat of goofy foots, right? What just happened? I mean, where Chase went, he just threw the whole kitchen sink at yeah. us, but it wasn't messy. It was so clean. so clean. Here we go now. This is live. Jake, he gets behind it a little bit with that cheater five, comes onto the green face again. Cross steps back down, looking to find speed and pace. There it is. That inside is really giving these guys the opportunity to put both to both feet over, the all 10 toes over the nose. Let's dissect. Can't wait to dissect Richie Cravey's not... Um, I hope we haven't had yeah. a score yet. But, Richie Cravey's sorry, last Richie nose Cravey's ride like, from so, finish to so end. So this is Chase. Functional uh, reverse takeoff. Their fin, fin first takeoff gets that 10. Now here, stepping back. And that was that angled 10. So feet in towards yep. the face of the wave. And another one here. Like Chloe Coleman coming from behind the section. Beautiful arching 10. Levitating nose ride and stepping forward again. As the wave battles, gets the click of the heels. And then <laughs> the most important part is here. He trims through the middle and he actually kicks out with authority and control. Well done, Chase Leader. That'll be a great score. Wow. Well... <laughs> Hanging heels. Well, I'm reflecting on Coniella Stewart at the U.S. Open. He had it was like an overhead wave. Yeah, I'd been asking for it, not just sort of subtly, and of course he went and did it. Beautiful yeah. hang heels. So Richie's about to lock in a very strong score. Both an Both. eight point nine for Richie Cravey and another a big excellent score for Chase. An eight point four for Chase. So thirteen thirty remaining. Chase out in the lead with a 9 and an 8.4. Richie, you have an 8.9 and a 4.75. Cormac, in blue, you need a 6.66. Yeah, and... and Ominous And, and score after there. the scores that we just saw dropped, he still only needs the 6.66 yeah. in third because he opened with a 7 of his own. So I want to get the replay of Richie because he was on the nose from takeoff to finish. Yeah. And kicked out as well. And kicked so out... <laughs> Super exciting. So the gentlemen utilizing their priority in the pace, less waves yeah. being ridden. White. White needs a 9.4. Your last wave is a 4.25. And this is Richie Cravey. So medium-sized wave. It's a two-step, but Nueva style goes straight up onto the nose. The camera cuts back, so we missed that nose ride. But I can attest to you that it was the best nose ride of heat, getting an 8.9 pretty much just for that. And Chase Leader, nice hang 10 there. 
again, just similar to Chloe Coleman on that white, Michael Takayama just having a ball, and Cormac on his end to back. It's a smaller wave, and gets on the nose in the pocket as well. So a smaller wave there for Blue. I'm not sure if, well, it'll definitely go into your top two, but you're looking for a 666. At this point of the heat, oh it's going to come down to set waves and critical surfing. Well, so what this indicates to me by looking at the scores and the replays and watching it live, the judges going with the 9 for Chase and the 8-9 for Richie. Both was mm. them staying in their traditional yeah. stance just on the nose the whole as long as they could. That backup wave, the 8.4 of Chase, so much better. Fancy, or I don't know, fancy, incredible footwork, hanging heels. Nothing was done for a long distance, mm, so to speak. Mm, mm. Um, no but, single defining maneuver. But there was just so Combo. much <laughs> happening that it was great to watch as a fan. I guess I was expecting it to maybe go higher, but it was a medium-sized wave. And that's what I was thinking too, but then that's where I was kind of orating my reflection yeah. of what obviously is being scored yeah. at the highest. So again, if one of those, if the hang heels was longer and it's bigger, yeah. well, I mean, I, it's still an excellent point, score. At this point, with what we've seen this morning, I've seen a severe lack of people kicking out of the wave. Yes. They've just been groveling for their scores. So No more groveling. I'm like half a point just for kicking out after an amazing maneuver because it's showing that you finishing in your own terms, not looking for tricks just like, yep, that's it. That's what I'm doing, and I'm kicking out. See you later. Well, you know, not looking for that last little nose ride. Cormac, your last wave's the 275. You're looking for a 666. So now, um, but sitting back, excited to see what Jake's going to bring and what Cormac's going to bring. Richie's got a 475 as his low. So it can, I think all of you will need excellent scores by the end of the heat, and I'm talking to the webcast. Yeah. Well, Again, thank you to Surfing for Hope Foundation. Thank you to Visit SlowCal. Thank you to Peak Wi-Fi for providing all the what we need to present this event out into the world. Yeah, They've been a partner for every event since I've been doing them, since 2018, I think it was, the first one. Um, thank you to 805 Beers. They're an overriding sponsor with the WSL. Thank you to SlowCal Roots, one of the local participants that's always involved and um well who else do we have to thank thank you to well the judges for doing a great job keeping pace with 50 waves ridden in a heat and um now things seem to be relaxing thank you to all the volunteers for surfing for hope foundation coming down and helping out there is the merchandise booth set up just by the competitors area and uh, thanks to all the restaurants, the local establishments that participated in feeding us our breakfasts mm. and our lunches. And so, yeah, shout outs to everybody involved. Right now, Richie Cravey looking to get rid of the 475. You know, this makes me reflect on his interview with you yesterday where he had that moment of the interference at the U.S. Open. Mm. He just really scrambled his mind. He had to regroup after that and because he was wondering, why am I not getting scores? Well, yeah. he's definitely getting his now excellent scores now. And he goes Cormac on a bit of a foamy one. <laughs> Even when he falls, he makes Animated. me laugh. Yeah, <laughs> he's like a cartoon character. Do so you, oh, you, well, here we go, paddle battle. Red and blue, yeah. the big, long stretched arms from red does Cormac know that he's coming after it so it's on the red and the blue the paddle battle as we see these two stretching out second and third in this heat eight minutes 20 remaining Cormac kicking scratching Richie long strides priority not given yet they're gonna have to paddle around the rock all the way to Pismo no they're not priority not given yet fourth for Richie third for blue Cormac gets third priority that was fun now you were just egging them on here we go, Jake with priority. Deep on this left. Nice carve down. Back into the power source. Stands tall. Ooh, Long go. 10. Cheater 5. 10 between. Two of each. Again, redirecting back into the power source. Now if he can just not fight the wind, using the belly of the board, fighting it the last half there, but that'll be his best wave, it seems. 
And or he'll definitely throw away the 225. He needed a 9.4, so he needs to really kick in the jam. And no change for Richie on your last one, a 4.1, and Cormac a 1.6. So Red looking to drop a 4.75 or go to 8.51 to go to the lead. Cormac needing a 6, 6, 6. Jake DiMatteo needing a 9.4. We'll see what that last one locks in with. So, Matt, you being a student of history of all things in surfing, yeah. did you ever get to go back and look at old surfing or surfer magazines from the 80s and that? There was a cartoon character that featured regularly called Beaker. No. And, and, uh, I don't know Beaker. Beaker is a classic, and that is what Cormac reminds me of. Uh, I'm sure his shaper will know and his coach yeah, will know would. who I'm talking about. I but know Murph the Surf. There was Murph the Surf. Yeah. Beaker's another one. And an Australia attracted gonad man, um, and and the skateboard brand Surfer Sam, um, yeah. There's a, there's a few different features. That's cool. I have to look at that. Dylan, we need your technical expertise. Back up top, please. We need Dylan to the booth. And six S minutes remaining. Well, what a fun heat. What a fun heat so far. Incredible. Give yourselves a pat on the back out there, gentlemen. We are loving it. Yeah. And um, Richie, our cameraman, didn't get your perfect 9, well, 8.9. So if you want to feature on the famous Instagram reels, get – oh, actually, we do have it apparently. So it's all right. You don't need to get another 8.9. It's fine. You'll still be insta-famous. <laughs> no pressure. Just come on. Pull another one out. So here we have the replay of Red. So two steps up and he gets that 10. This is the 8.9 earlier in the heat, holding that nose ride. And here, standing tall in the pocket, coming up uh, and look down. Look at the lift, the elevation from the yeah. tail lifting in the oh. pocket, the drift right there. See this composure at the end, trimming. Oh, yeah. It's the turn. And here, just kicking out. Love it. Mm. How can you not be a fan and entertained completely? And this All four goofy footers, entertainers. Uh, Chase going fin first, mucking around. Jake, he's an entertainer. And Cormac, he's the, I would guess you could call it, he's got a lot of supporters and really vocal supporters here on the beach and online right now that are willing him to get that 666. And we're on five minutes remaining. All right. Coming up in the next heat, Tucker Coleman, Ian Gutron, Bucky Berry, and Aiden Sontner. Is Bucky the most frothing of all of all the longboarders? Yeah. He is. <laughs> he is, yeah. He is frothing. I was trying to just think for a moment, but uh, yeah, he's, definitely. Yeah, he's amped, perpetually amped. Uh, Taka Inui, the Japanese competitor, he's pretty stoked always. Like, yeah. But yeah, no, definitely. I mean, he's free surf. I, if he was here, he would have competed in the, um, he competed in the uh, shortboard event as well. He loves it. He competes in short and long, and he's just... Even at US Open, once he was knocked out of the longboard event, yeah. doing air reverses down the beach. He's so, he, I mean, both, that was so fun this year to have him and RJ invited in um, both both of them. Or was it, yeah, was it this year or two years? Ago? No, it was this year, this last US Open. Both of them, I think, first time at the event. And instant fans, both of them, for me, I was an instant fan. Yeah, I gravitated to what they were putting down. Here's Cormac on a set, holding that nose ride. Little soul arch there, and this is a bigger wave. Stretching, does he get into the 10? Holding in the pocket, of course he does. Holding in the middle of the board, waiting, and he gets a completion too. So a set wave there, biggest one. He's caught of the heat and animated. Three minutes 30 remaining. We'll update those scores shortly. Well, and now I have a new, I get to be a fan of a new kid. Cormac. So, yeah, both the, the Japanese. And they surf together all the time in longboard and shortboard. Yeah. This is the replay. So critical five there just for a moment. And up on the nose again, this stretch. So as he, get, he goes a little close in there, it makes it functional. And here, just banking off the foam a little bit and finishing in that layback. So that, st that stretch five freeze frame was a, Donald, was a David Nueva moment for me. No, absolutely. And... Channeling a uh, Butch Van Artsdale, and this is the waterman himself, Richie Cravey. Long, 5, 10, back to the middle. So it's a matter of you can do, I can do better. It wasn't enough. Cormac's last wave of 5.4. So Richie may even improve on his 4.75.
Cormac still needing a 666 with a score to drop from Richie. A so, 5.4 for your last wave, Blue. So if we were going to back up and be a little bit hypercritical of how could he have maximized more out of that wave, I would say, although sitting here and loving the stretch, drop knee yeah. extended stretch, that was the section to run up and hang yeah. 10 and stand stretches tall. Don't, stretches don't score. They, it's a linking maneuver. It, yeah, it's a linking maneuver. So that midsection where he ran. Here. That's the, the – yeah, So that's right stretch, there yeah, he should have been the on the nose, yep. fully committed. Yeah. But it was – so pleasurable to watch. Yeah, and then yeah. doesn't get the, the completion as dy dynamic as he would have liked. Um, but still, a 5.4 would usually be a keeper with a 12.4 heat total. Heat. So this is Jake looking for an 8.16, the minute 45 remaining. This is the most competitive heat we've seen all day. And Jake kicking out of that one, that one running ahead of him, but it actually did stay open. So with a minute 30 remaining... He's looking for something major. He knows what he needs. He needs to go excellent to keep up with the guys. An 8.16 required. Cormac still needing a 666, but a score to drop for Richie. It will improve your total. So, Cormac, you'll be looking for a mid-7. Hmm. So, I don't know. Two interesting, you know, different philosophical point of views. Do you want someone to turn on their competitive brain and always be in that? Or do you want them to surf in their feeling? And in that mm. moment, that was his feeling. That's yeah. what he wanted to oh. do. If he went competitive brain, he'd be like, oh, I can't do that. I'm going to do this. Here we go. Cormac up again. A sequence. Five to ten. The wave is going to run out on him. No green face there with 45 seconds left. What a heat. Incredible. High level, that is for sure. So, Cormac getting a taste of the big so leagues. A 5.6 for your last wave, Richie. You've consolidated your second place. And White, having a look here, 30 seconds remaining. This is Jake needing a big score of a nine. But beautiful surfing from Jake throughout this event already. It's a smaller wave. Nice flow. Beautiful body language, like low body language. Ooh. And complete little heels on the inside. 10 seconds. Well, that's the way to come in with grace. Five, four, three, two, one. Well, I'm going to just give a little hand clap, a personal hand clap. That was a very entertaining heat. Thank you, guys. Chase and Richie moving into the semifinals. We'll go to a quick commercial break. We'll come back with semifinal number two. We start each day with one goal. With our state-of-the-art network, we provide reliable high-speed internet to the Central Coast with no contracts and no limits. Visit peakwifi.com for plans and coverage of our rapidly expanding network. You just do what your elders do. Get rad, get in air, adrenaline. Back into live action, that is Ian Gotron. He is not a goofy foot, he's the natural footer. He's playing with his switch in blue. And behind him we see our surfer in green, Aiden Sortner. We're into quarterfinal. Yeah, heat two. This is the wax head. And we have Jeff Baldwin in the booth mm. as well. Experienced with all things short and longboard. Tucker Coleman, a standout from yesterday. Up and riding in red. Well, you know that uh, he and his sister hanging out together. He was in the back. Double shakas during her interview. Another young man from Montauk. I liked his story about his... Had those few sessions with Joel. Joel making his annual pilgrimage out there to Montauk. His sister, I think, currently taking school somewhere in San Diego, either San Diego mm -hmm. State or UCSD. or. And it's the Montauk surfers on top. Chase Leader with that convincing heat win, a 17.4. I'm going to go catch up with Chase. 
and see what was motivating him on that heat win. <laughs> Good waves were motivating him. And probably sitting there all morning eyeing up those lengthy lefts going, I see what I would be doing on him. All right, few scores in. Aiden, your first wave, a five. Ian, your first wave, a 4.6. Tucker, a 3.5. First priority with Bucky Berry in the white. So he will choose his opening wave. He has freedom to pick any wave in the lineup. Aiden in the lead currently with that opening five. And then Ian in second. But normally we get into all that after everyone has two waves. Well, Bucky Berry, thinking about it, he elects to go on his forehand here. Goofy foot, Bucky Berry, five on the nose, ten on the nose, high ten, stretch ten, long ten. Lots of speed in the rail there. Oh, and I love that cross step finish out of the out of the foam climb. Beautiful finish there. So different varieties of finishing the wave and cutout. Richie Cravey giving a little shaka to Dread, shooting all these events for the WSL. Cardiff zone, pipe zone. Here's a nice replay of Bucky Berry. So started off, he had to get himself, and then that is a full feature 10. Bucky Berry, you saw the lift in the nose and from the tail. And I love this finish there. Just a little variety from goofy foot to regular foot. Where is the score going to go for Bucky Berry? Almost excellent. High good. Wow. Wow. All kinds of waves being ridden. Bucky on the inside. Ian on the outside. Score's not even locked in yet for White's last wave. And he's already up and flowing on his second. So Bucky making quick work of utilizing priority and then under priority paddling back out. Tucker Coleman. He wants to get in the action. Look at how dreamy these lefts are. It might be small, but it is very, very, um, there's a lot of potential on them. Yeah, okay, there we go. We are ready with Chase and Matt. Take it away, boys. Chase, incredible surfing there. As Jeff just alluded to, there's a lot of potential out there. You capitalized. How was it? Uh, the waves were definitely tricky, but it was a great time surfing with Richie and Jake and Cormac. I love surfing with those guys, and uh, I'm stoked to be here. Amazing surfing. You look like you're riding a, a lot of confidence right now. What have, we, what have you been up to since we saw you at that last event in El Salvador? Uh, I've just been surfing a lot. I was uh, just in the shaping bay with Michael like for like a couple days and just getting my boards tuned in and just getting right in the headspace. And I just want to shout out to Michael. He's probably in the shop watching right now. And uh, my parents and my sister back home watching. And uh, all my family. We're stoked. Right. Yeah, well, I mean, what a way to kick off your campaign to get back on the World Longboard Tour. And obviously that's the aim. Yeah, it was great. Um, great tour last year. It was great going all to those different spots and just seeing what what's up with the tour and um, stoked and maybe get back on next year. We're stoked. Yeah, well, surfing like that, it's not going to be hard. We look forward to seeing you in the next round. Back to live action. Good job, Chase. Well, during that interview, there was a replay of the of the nine point ride that he had. So that setting the bar and then Richie behind him and boy, what a what a heat that was in this heat. We've got a bunch of scores to catch up on, guys. Tucker, you open with a 3-5. Ian, you opened with a 4-6. Bucky, your first wave was a 7. Aiden, your first wave was a 5. Now those second rides and third rides or second rides are going to come in. Tucker, your last wave was a 3.9. So now waiting to input Ian and Bucky's waves. And, and Bucky's staying busy. He's not going to let the judges 
get a moment to rest. He is too excited to surf. So Bucky not sitting around. He, he, he had priority in the beginning of the heat and then on his way out, found a secondary wave. Now he's on to another. So there could be quite a few waves oh. to score for him. Is this Whoa. Ian out the back? It's on his backhand. You love that board and you love how he surfs. This is the replay of his wave before last. So five and 10 through the pocket and falling, gets it done and he, does ride through that one. <laughs> Doing the shimmy dance. So that one's still to drop, but... That's <laughs> this one wait, that we're no, waiting. No, no, no. There's another one to drop. So Bucky wow. is just finding the best places on these waves so far in this heat. He's at a series. Oh, little quick hang heels, walk back, spin to win, and continue on. Talk about having fun. <laughs> So the judges, believe it or not, do have to put their heads down for a moment. So when lots of waves are ridden, yeah. the chances of them missing a wave are quite high, even with camera angles. Well, so consider and I, that. You know, and as there are different tiers, this is, you know, the qualifying series. There are this amount of cameras, these monitors, and you're right. They, they don't have the time to sit back. They don't have lengthy replays as much as they do at the championship tour. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, <clears throat> here we go. All scores are in. Right now, Bucky Berry in the lead. Bucky, you opened with a 7. Your second wave was a 6-6, six, six, but your last wave, an 8-point ride. So a 7 and an 8 in first. Ian, you have a 5-5. Five, five. Your last wave was a 6-5. Incredible stuff happening here. Tucker, you open with a 3-5, your last wave a 3-9. So you're in third place with second priority. You need an 8.10. And Aiden with priority, you have a 5 and a small throwaway. You need a 7-point ride. So Bucky, just three waves in a row, two on the paddle out, underneath everybody else, got a throwaway 6-6 six, six, and then an 8. And as we have a bit of a lull out there on the web on the webcast, we will cast our eyes to Ian Gotron's last wave. Now he did exactly what he did on the 5.5, driving through the node and goes to 10, soul arching on his backside there through the section, and that Hobie looking really stable, very parallel, not so uh, piggy in the outline like some of the. The other designs that we see, or a conventional nose riders, are quite parallel. And in live action out the front, this is Aiden who pulled the trigger and goes down and loses his board to boot. So wide in the lead, blue in second. Blue, a 6.5 for your last one, even with a slight incompletion, but a lot of points coming from that critical nose ride. And... Tucker, an 8.10 required for you, and you know the you know the deal, you know the requirement. And Aiden, a seven point ride required. I don't think that one will be it with a 1.35 locked in. And this is the Surfing for Hope Longboard Classic. We're at Morrow Bay, Central California, at the first qualifying event of the World Longboard Tour, which we'll see commencing next year. We'll have another qualifying event. This is Ian Gotron. Gardo Sun in blue, crouching, steering on the nose, activated. Quick footwork there, very traditional display of surfing there, going to switch through the turn, functional aspect, and that guy is dripping with style. And of course, the criteria is slightly different to speed, power, and flow in the longboard. It's style, flow, and grace, critical nose rides, rail turns, and a degree of difficulty across the length of the full range of the board. This is, longboarding is not nose riding. It's a part of surfing where we can use the whole length of the board. We can turn, we can nose ride as well, we can get tubes, we can go off the top, cut back, but you most importantly, utilize the length of the surfboard. Just a little bit of an education. Of course, everyone here at this event knows that, but anyone tuning in, the aim is to surf the full length of the board. And if you do get to the nose, you want to make sure it's in the pocket, in the 
are exactly like that. A heel hang, you fell off, that's not the idea. You want to try and stay on the board, but with a 7 and 8, Bucky is just trying to do something to blow it open even more. So the replay of Ian, so very tech way. And here, gets the nose. He does crouch, a safety crouch, but so technical, getting low. And anyone who can do that can attest to how hard it is to do that on your backside. And in live action, we have blue as well. And that one, definitely just an up and off. So a six-point ride for the wave before last for Ian. A six and a 6.5. Red, you now need an 8.6. And green, you need a 7.5. 12 minutes, 50 remaining. Anyone out there on the live webcast want to shoot some questions? I might have a little time to check out any questions you have. Please keep it PG as well. We have a whole range of different people tuning in. But get interactive. Share your thoughts who you're going for, who your favorites are. And of course, the judges haven't, I think they've been on song all day. And this criteria is just so suited to what is happening in the longboard movement around the world right now. And Bucky Barry gets the heel hang, runs back, shaved head for speed, channeling the likes of Taylor Jensen and Kelly Slater. Double heels there and he kicks out. And Blue having a look at this. This is Ian again keeping really busy under priority. And here is behind the section. Nice snapping carbon. Digs a rail. And green behind him. This is Aiden. Holding that nose ride through the whitewash and incomplete again. Eleven minutes and twenty eight remaining. That's the Morrow Rock and the a little of the face on that finger rock out there. If you imagine the face tilted at forty five degree angles with the nose pointing up and a little beret on top. It looks like a little sailor's hat. And Ian is riding the Gato Sun Hobie Pro model. Just been told and Uncle Buck. There he is. Bucky Barry, it's a Hobie affair right now. The little heel kick and hitting that one off the top. And the perils of riding a nose rider is that the big old platform nose can dig in and pearl. Two steps up to the nose for red. This is Tucker Coleman stretching it out. Gets the 10 in the pocket there. So getting critical. Trimming through the midsection here. Up on the nose again. Three nose rides, gets the tan again. So not sh you know, showing a little bit of caution to the wind here. And there's a bit more relaxing. The hands behind the back there, showing some moment, a moment of control in amongst all those tricks. The nose rides, it's not about how many you do. It's the, the quality of them, but some quality in amongst the quantity there. Much like his sister earlier on with a very high heat total. So 10 minutes left. We'll drop those scores shortly. White just out there for a free surf. Getting, once again, the, the big wide nose digging in again, but technical surfing there from Bucky Barry. Blue in priority. One of his day jobs is Gatos Tacos, a catering business. So he knows what's up. I'm a big fan of tacos too. And we have our friend Lars from Cayucas Hot Sauce tuning in right now too, just down the road. And he's a fan of traditional longboard surfing and Taka executing that. There's that soul arch that he saw his, his buddy Chase doing beforehand as well. So a smaller wave, but just trying to build his heat total, trying to reset. So Taka, your wave before last was a 5.35. We'll see where that one goes. And here he is, Gatos Tacos himself. And trimming through the midsection there. Love that traditional style. This one's running away from him and it may close out. And yep, smart option, pulling the trigger to get out of there. 
So f 8 minutes 40 remaining. Bucky, you've had a bunch of throwaways. A 1.85, a 5.1, a 3.1, a 2.2. You've got priority. And Ian's looking for an 8.5 to move into first. And this is Aiden searching for a 7.5. And that one also shutting down as the tide drops. We have a low tide later on in the day. A very low tide, actually, at 2.54. And eight minutes remaining. Bucky comfortably out in the lead. Eight minutes remaining. Your last wave, Red, was a 3.35. You need a 7.15. Seven minutes, 50 remaining. Red, you're in third. You need a 7.15. Seven minutes, 45 remaining. Blue, white in the lead. Blue in second. Red, your last wave of 3.35. You're looking for a 7.15. Green, you've got a 7.5. You, you need a 7.5 to move into second. And blue, you're looking to drop a six as your low score. Well, like we saw yesterday around this time, that that left sandbar so defined farther up in the corner where you see all four surfers nestled sort of close to the rocks. They're actually not that close, but the perspective of the drone does make it look like they are. Great drone work from, and all camera work from the run amuck photography camera crew. We see the shadow starting to creep all afternoon. It will elongate from the sun behind the one of the nine sisters of the Moro rocks, the classic iconic feature of this area. You see it from miles and miles away. Love that classic that the kneeboard paddle out, you know, no rush, no waves coming. So Easy conditions for all the competitors today. Easy in the sense of no no whitewashes to battle. Paddling back out. Here we go. Blue, Ian Gutron wanting to extend his second place position. Oh, I love that little down carve check turn. The wave not really allowing much time for him to run up to the nose. Not sure if that will better one of his six-point rides. Bucky in the lead with priority, and he's just going to surf. Why not? Things have been working out well for him on every wave he's taken. Oh, hangs heels for a long extended period. The longest hang heels we'd seen on an inside wave. Having fun, loving his equipment right now, feeling, or it's translating I'm sure the Hobie shop right now tuning in, watching two of their team riders and, and employees, Bucky Barry. Well, it would be great to see Bucky get a good result. It would be fun to see Bucky make the World Championship Tour too. Oh, wow. Switch nose ride there for Ian. And he goes up switch again. So incredible degree of difficulty, a smaller wave, but and he's... Falls off there, he's mucking around. Four minutes, 45 remaining. Well, and that's such a compliment to what you see in longboard surfing. Switch surfing is part of the uh, routine all yeah. the time. In shortboard surfing, you don't see it very often. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe if a surfer either wins an event or loses, they'll do that classic switch dance wave in, you know, or every once in a while you'll see highlight reels. Uh, Italo and Gabriel Medina both can surf switch dance very well. Back in the day, Rob Bain was a really good switch dance surfer. Wow. Gerlach spent quite a lot of time trying to perfect his switch dance. Bucky just can't stop having fun. Yeah. So the heel's not resonating. Bucky, you've got a 6.8 on your last wave before last. So your first and third wave are still your highest, a 7 and an 8. You're still out in the lead. Blue, you're looking for an 8.5 to move into first and the low of a 6 you've got to improve on. Red, you need a 7.15. Green, you need a 7.5. Three minutes, 40 remaining. 
Well, you got to think it was a 6.8 throwaway <clears throat> for that extended hang heels, the longest we've seen of the event. But it was such a small wave yes. that maybe that was the reason it didn't, you know, go any higher. But you well, perch yeah. like that hanging heels on a set wave. Yeah. Well, <coughs> the heels is tricky, absolutely. But on a smaller wave, the degree of difficulty goes down, much like an air yeah. on a small wave. It's hard. But if you do that on a bigger wave, it then becomes more functional and it's less likely to be landed because of that. Um, the, you know, it's a very low percentage play doing a heel hang on a big wave and it will be rewarded accordingly. And the judges, they know. They've seen it. They're, they're well-versed and there's some experienced surfers in there who, who've seen and judged and can do hang heels too, might I add. Yeah, I guess that's what I, earlier I was indicating or talking about the U.S. Open oh. and Connie Ellis Stewart doing a big hang heels yeah. on a set wave. That wave, it translated to a victory. It did over JR. And unfortunately, putting doubt in the judge's mind, that will not be the score. He started off well, Tucker, on that, a 7-1-5 required. It's two minutes, 20 remaining. And green on the outside. This is Aiden. Nice little drop knee there. And he's out of there, that one. Kind of not breaking that wave, so... So a, bis, a bit of a misuse with yeah. uh, the priority for the surfer in green, needing a 7.5. And blue and white now holding priority. So first and second, respectively, blue and well, white and then blue. And then big scores required. Red needing a 7.15, green a 7.5, just under two minutes remaining. So these guys taking quite a few waves also. That last heat, they were a bit more selective. Yeah. Um, coming up next, Bucky, this is Aiden. So a minute and a half under priority, just looking to find that 7.5 somewhere. And why not see if it works on this gorgeous little left? That won't be what he needs. Coming up in the next heat, Dakota Faircloth, Kevin DeWald, Jack Von Wagner, and Chad Biggs. Semi or quarterfinal number three, right around the corner. But yeah, Bucky wants to catch a lot of waves. He's just surfing his brains out. One track mind, catch waves. One minute left, surfers, down to the end of this heat. Well, and I love how the heat about to start is out there in the lineup, but they're staying way away from everyone. Waiting for their turn to paddle over into the lineup and for that horn to finish and then blow and start their heat. Surfer scrambling in the lineup with 30 seconds left. Red with priority, still searching for the 715. Ooh, little hang five head dip combination to losing the board. And 10 seconds remaining. Green up and riding. This is Aiden. Five, four, three, two, one. Well, a quick break for us, a quick commercial break and we will come back with quarterfinal number three it sounds like we'll be counting the next heat in live during the break SoCal Roots starts with natural and sustainable farming right here in Slow County. We offer a carefully curated selection of cannabis, both medical and recreational, from small batch craft concentrates and sleep gummies to locally produced fresh flour and extracts. Come join us on our journey to support family farms, support community, and support culture from the roots up. Slow Cal Roots, locally owned and operated by patients for patients. <coughs> 
and welcome back everybody joining us online we are into quarterfinal heat number three Dakota Faircloth in the red De Kevin Duwald in the blue Jack Von Wagner in the white Chad Biggs in the green Baldy and Waxhead bringing you all the good times four new surfers gracing the water 25 minute heats right now we have seen a lot of excellent scores happening. We see the camaraderie of all four surfers coming in after their heat. You see the um, good work, Bucky Berry and Ian Gutron moving on through into the semifinals. The Hobie boards there from Ian, the the Gato model there, and um, dragging the tail. <laughs> Bucky with the Uncle Buck, the Michael Takayama there, and the hands of Tucker, the blue and red there, and green. That's Aiden with a. Yeah, dragging that board along the tail. So unique to longboarding. There's so many different variations of fins and tails and rockers, concaves. Um, well, and, and you colors know, too. <clears throat> kudos to the sponsors because I don't know what deals they have, but making them out, making a longboard, glassing them, they're expensive toys. Yeah. You know, there's a lot more of everything going into making it. And short boards cost around 800 bucks. I've seen some of Ryan Birch's boards and Hanson's for upwards of 1500 plus oh, yeah. with the beautiful resin tents and, you know, multiple stringers, heavy glass, beautiful tent work. That is an art in itself. The high gloss, the polish. And some action coming up now. I'm going to go down and catch up with Bucky Barry, but take it away we love it Bucky he's always got a lot to say he even wants to get up in the booth with us <laughs> he only he only suggested that yesterday up and riding behind the section Kevin DeWald so we've got about a half hour until the raffle is concluded so um, yeah get on over there there's a signed Kelly Sater jersey from the Sunset event. I saw it. It's a yellow championship tour signed jersey. Kelly Slater signed. 11-time world champion. So you can get your raffle tickets. That drawing will happen later today. The, ra the uh, drawing of the raffle has been going on all week. Another way for Surfing for Hope to raise money getting towards that million dollar mark over the last nine years of raising funds for cancer um, for their foundation and all they do to put on surf events and clinics and get togethers. So thank you to Surfing for Hope. Dakota Faircloth. Goofy foot. Having to kind of work it through that inside. You saw the rib coming up that wave. That one I think we'll end up in one of his lower range scores. So yeah, again, a half hour until the raffle will be called. So get your last minute tickets for that Kelly Slater signed championship tour for Jersey from the sunset invitational or the sunset open. A couple waves came in Dakota with a three, seven, five and a 2.2 Kevin with a 2.25 Waiting on a couple scores, and we're throwing it down to our last heat winner, Bucky Berry with Waxhead. Keeping really busy in that one, Bucky, but your first three waves being your keepers towards the end. Felt like it was free surfing out there. Yeah, it's like a dream out there right now. I, I surf a wave Boneyard. It's off a of reef more, but it's basically Boneyard with the wind blowing into the left. But there's a big jetty there that makes the wave end here. It just, it just kept going. You could hang 10 all day. Well, in your case, you actually chucked out some hang heels, but smaller waves... <laughs> I, there's no surprise about what you're going to be doing in your next semifinals. Uh, but any, everyone back home, the Hobie shop tuning in? Yeah, as far as I know. Uh, I don't know who's all working today, but yeah, the Hobie shop's there. My dad and I, apparently they stopped work at The Voice to check out the heat yesterday, and we're super pumped on the shout-out. So, dad, all the grips went up, and uh, my nieces were watching yesterday, and I forgot to shout them out. So, Stevie and Izzy, hopefully you guys are watching today. Maybe they got some softball. No, softball's over. It could be soccer Sunday, though. I don't know. Wild stuff. Well, it's definitely Logan... Sunday for you, yeah. taking that momentum through to the semis. Excited? Oh, yeah. It's a dream day of surfing. Thought it'd be a lot colder today. The wind seems to be mellowing out. Like Pretty much perfect longboard conditions you can dream for, you know. So 
It's on. It's all going on at the Surfing for Hope Longboard Classic. Tune in for the finals coming up soon. Well, <clears throat> congratulations, Bucky. Yep. Shout outs to the team back at Hobie and the shop. I like that they closed it down. The vernacular of the grips, the back end workers at the shop. Oh, beautiful replay there. Jack Von Wagner. That was his opening ride, so this should be a nice beginner for him. Riding it down to the bitter end when the wave became less than six inches tall. Waxhead tuning me up. He saw that I was cinched up on one side from looking left at the monitor. I, I woke up a couple nights ago in the middle of the night, and I'm, I thought, is it my pillow? And then I realized, no, I've been sitting on an angle. sort of facing you and then yeah. always turning to the left where I'm sitting in the booth. And Style, flow, and grace <laughs> not necessarily epitomized in the commentary booth. No. <laughs> Function. Ooh, a little, little uh, nose right there, but a shuffle up on the nose for our surfing blue Kevin. But 17 minutes remaining, plenty of time to rebuild in that heat total. Uh, red out to an early lead. Uh, white out into an early lead with a flat 7. White's first wave of 7. Red, a 3.75 and the 2.35. Kevin in blue looking for a 3.66 to move into second. And green needing a 4.35. 16 minutes, 40 remaining. This whole area, Central California, we're in San Luis Obispo, Slow County, so beautiful. Lots of historic towns and cute coastal hamlets, Cayucas, Morro Bay, Pismo Beach, just to name a few. So bring the family up, bring yourself, bring the hiking boots, the mountain bike, and some surfboards, of course. And Chad Biggs trimming through the midsection of the board here. Oh, and just as he did all the hard work, goes up. But mind you, lower tide, that wave did rifle ahead. Well, yes, run amok, if you've got some Arnica salve. But I'm good. Waxhead just walked into the booth and noticed I was a little tweaked. But I'd love to rub some on before I get on the road home for sure. So catching up in this heat, Jack Von Wagner with first priority in the white, out in the lead with his opening wave of a seven. Dakota in second with a 3.75 and a 2.35. Kevin in third with a 2.25 and a 2.45. And here we see him up and live farther down the beach on his backhand. Ooh, nice extended five. The long leg gets up, hangs 10, and rides out of there. So he just wanted to get himself backed up. He wanted to get more on the board than the 175. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, that was blue. Chad. Oh, no, both, both Chad and Kevin... Scores to come in. Here's our heat leader at the moment. Nice cheater five. There we go. There's the tight hang. There's the tight ten. Again, back on the five. 
There we go, full 10. And don't let this size of the wave deceive you. Finds a third. That sequence continued. And again, so this wave will not quit on him. The fin is probably rubbing in the sand. What a way for White to back up his seven. Now it's Dakota taking off needing a 2.96 because his last wave was a 425. Goes up for the floater. So we'll get that score locked in for you, Dakota. You have a 375 on your first wave, a 235, and now the that wave to get scored. Jack on his backhand got a really nice long left. We'll see where this goes. A series of cheater fives and then full 10 on the nose, section after section. Good trim line through the entire wave. Got to relax up on the nose. Hands behind the back in a few of them. So we are now waiting for Dakota and Jack scores. This could change things. Dakota needed a 2.96 to go into second. White, you get a, an eight-point ride. <clears throat> Jack, your last wave in eight, and red, your score is almost locked in, a 6.5. That puts you in second place now. Dakota in second after a 6.5. Chad, you're in third, or Kevin, you're in third, excuse me. You need a 6.01, and Chad with first priority needing a 7.5. So delightful surfing there from Jack Von Wagner. Opens with a seven and then that last wave, an eight. Right on the excellent mark. Finding a precision one foot left to execute a series of cheater fives and then straight into hanging ten. And on the second sequence, really got a perch on the nose. And uh, arch his back, hands behind his tailbone. Really nice style. 11 and a half minutes left, surfers. First place is white. Second place is, second place is red. Third place, blue. Fourth place, green. Priority is green, then blue, then white. All right, well, it's a, <clears throat> it's 11.45 on a beautiful Sunday here in Morro Bay. Conditions continue to be so nice. Sandwich delivery coming. We love it. Thank you to the local shops for supplying us our breakfasts and lunch, although we barely have time to chew on anything. I do take it's them and eat them later. I noticed that you had a little stockpile. Um, I, I just take it home and eat it at good. the end of the day. Now, I must say the community spirit around here at not just Morrow Bay, but slow in general is just really captivating. And every competitor in the post seed interviews alluded to not only how good the waves are, but how much they love the town. And someone who's liking the waves is Dakota Faircloth, just enjoying waves that aren't closing out because where he's from, this would be a really terrific... If you found a peak like this down at Bolsa Chica or somewhere in Orange County, you'd be trying to keep it to yourself. And of course it wouldn't be because a surf cam would pick it up. Pesky surf cam. Yeah, that's true. So a very defined sandbar here in Morro Bay consistently. I mean, even though I talk to locals and they're like, oh, the waves are really good right now. It's not always like this. Every time I'm here, this left is a feature, the yeah. right into the rock. So we have been scoring over the last five years as this event is run, or four years here and maybe 
five years down in Pismo. Such unique uh, landscape and so many changes throughout the week that we've seen as commentators, but also the short boarders having to deal with everything from windswept three feet waves on the first day of competition all the way up until, you know, eight feet plus bombs. Uh, it's such a unique part of the coastline and surfers riding step up boards. And to the surfers in the water, the World Longboard Tour, this is the, the, the first step. We're uncovering new talent and harnessing the talent that's already, that we know exists in this North America region. So these surfers out here are, you know, D Dakota Faircloth, very experienced competitor. Kevin DeWald, experienced competitor. Jack Van Wagner, experienced competitor and emerging, had his first taste at the Pro Tour in Huntington where he made a few heats there at the World Longboard Tour. And Chad Biggs, he put in a great performance yesterday, our surfing green, currently in priority. Fourth place though, needing a 755. And Kevin needing a 7.06, our surfer from New Jersey in the blue. Dakota Faircloth in second, needing an 8.5 to go to first, but a 6.5 and a 3.8 for Dakota. And Jack, an 8 and a 7, throwing hammers down. And here goes our surfer pulling the trigger with priority, and it's a set wave for what it is in this heat. Fading on this smart bottom turn, coming from behind the section there. Oh, and I just commentator cursed him. That a little, was a sick wave too. A little bit of a bobble. Coming up in the next heat in about seven and a half minutes. I'm sure they're checked in. Christian Stutzman, Noah Shimabakura, Dorian Torres, and Augustine Sedero. Sedeno, excuse me. That will round out our fourth quarter final. Right now, Jack and Dakota looking good to get into the semi. I'm sure Kevin with first priority, just needing the 6.06, .06, has different things in his mind. As we see him right now, utilizing that priority. Long glide in to set up this wave. There we go. Cheater five across the inside. Will the wave give him any more opportunity? And can he make it around the section? No, that one runs off on the sandbar. That will not be enough, but there's still six and a half minutes. And you know, short paddle out. That wave didn't actually close out. It's still going down the line. It's just that it's sped up. And when you miss time, the rocker and the fastest part of your board, which is in the midsection, if you get behind that, trim point it's almost impossible to fall behind you can pump but a nine foot board is not effective to pump in small waves at <laughs> it's least it's so hard to, yeah you need a lot more yeah. speed and face to yeah. engage inside outside rail so kevin you do improve slightly a 3.5 in your last wave but you still need a 6.06 .06 to move into second you're in third place chad you need a 7.55 to move into second and dakota you're looking to drop a 3.8 to Consolidate your second place. Jack, you're way out in the lead. <clears throat> Reflecting on big waves, not so much long boards, but big wave boards. Yep. That's why I appreciate Sunset. Sunset is a unique wave in yeah. that you can use your rail. You're actually doing big arcing carves. A lot of the other big wave locations are more a dramatic drop, mm. and you're just kind of using the bottom. And YMA, they're not so much turning anywhere, right? Nah. Which um, any even crowd. even Mavericks, it's dropping. Yeah. Todos Santos and dropping. you know other places around the world. What the big wave place in in Chile and in the one in Peru. It's it's not so much surfing on the rail yeah. and the you know using the outline of the board. Sunset. Yeah. High performance big wave spot. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, in El Salvador, Surf City, in Sunzal, oh, where yeah. we have the World Longboard Tour, that's where they filmed. Part of Big Wednesday. Yeah, what and a spot. They called it. They actually called it the um, Central American Sunset because it actually comes in like a West Peak. It holds a lot of swell. And it doesn't have that raw power, but it definitely has similarities. When you rock up to the beach, people who were competing, they were going, "Oh, it's like kind of like Bell's Makaha. It's kind of like mini sun, like small sunset, because it's got volume. It's not super petite and and pockety. So that's a tricky wave. Bell. I mean, I'm incredibly perfect. Bell's too, but Anyway, up in red riding now, 
and it just shows you got to have a variety of uh, understanding of your equipment and your skill level to and well-rounded to surf bigger waves like sunset and if you mm. don't it's going to be very tricky 410 remaining mm. dakota trying to increase his well consolidate his second place looking to drop a 3.8 we'll see where that one goes mm. i was always a big fan love sunset not only some incredible Eight threes and eight sixes mm. by Xanadu. Maurice Cole made me some. In I had a magical seven ten that rode like any short board that I owned in my quiver. But with that power and just the the magic he put into that board, turn on a dime. Beautiful stuff. Thank you, Maurice. Loved those boards. Here we go. Right now in the blue, Kevin Duvald. So he is staying very busy, but he has increased his score line. Just can't get out of third, needing a 6.06. .06. You know, it's a <laughs> my last little sunset anecdote. I was uh, always envious, coming. right? I had to sit on the inside, up and under, and just take lickens and, and watch guys like Bobby Owens and all the rest mm -hmm. sit way out the back and just get the easiest roll-ins. I'm like, I want to do that. I want to go hang out with them. I don't want to be in here just getting lickens to find my waves. So I, that, that, I, that, I, I, I am that grandpa out the back. Well, I, now, yeah, okay, but at that time we weren't allowed. So <laughs> no, you're right. <laughs> you got early season this year. I did. No one there. 3.2 for your last wave, Dakota. You're still in second. Two minutes 30 remaining. But it is fun to be way out there on the days that aren't crowded and that those those established surfers or whatever, yeah. and you're you're out there and it's just you, the open sea, and mm. the wind surfers further out surfing. Oh, love you getting know, out love getting sucked boat. up the point. And yep. you know there's a big old West Peak coming, and I'm always on a bigger board, so I'm like, oh yeah, we'll get sucked up there. But I know I'll be paddling a hundred feet, like my life depends on it <laughs> to catch that, not get out of the way. Yeah, because you know when you get the West Peak left coming at you, it's like oh I'm too deep. Anyway, here's <laughs> Kevin. So he does this like interesting little sh well, a shuffle there. It's that's a non-event. Now here he does like a, a tries to do like a switch cross step. I haven't really seen much of that before. So a three point five for your last wave, Kevin. And White up and riding, up on the nose. So using his priority on that. That's Jack. Just his third wave of the heat. And for the younger competitors out there, Jack Van Wagner has been leading this heat from the get go. That was his third wave with a minute 30 remaining. The judges really want to see two tens and not ten twos. So let you chew on that. A little bit of words of wisdom from our judging panel. One minute 20 remaining. Well, I will admit that I have taken the left off the West Peak to survive and live another day. I've had some amazing waves gone left at sunset and said, I'd rather go left yep. than just take, just cop another one mm -hmm. and then just do the, you know, Awkward. the full long paddle around. Yeah, either way, you either go left or you're going in anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You in. But I've, flushing you out. I've done it. I'm like, okay. Well, not flushing me out, flushing you in and around and then across vowels. Ugh. 45 yeah. seconds remaining. Still everything the same. Jack in first, Dakota in second with priority. Third place, Kevin with second priority. So there's 40 seconds left for him to try and find that 6.06. .06. And Chad, third priority, needing a 7.55. 20 seconds left. I have been barreled on the left at sunset. I got a little head dip there back in October too. And then Dakota, just a bit of fun. Five, four, three, two, one. So a couple scores to come in. I don't know if those flip the heat at all. We're going to go to a little commercial break and we'll be back with quarterfinal number four here at the Surfing for Hope Longboard Classic in Morro Bay. Since 2012, Surfing for Hope has been helping families navigate through cancer using the healing benefits of surfing and the ocean. Each year, we host a number of surfing-related community events to shine a spotlight on the fight against cancer. 
Visit surfingforhope.org to sign up for one of our free beginner surf camps. And if you'd like to help out, you can donate on the site too. The world has changed and the workplace has evolved. The option to live free of the commute and busy work life is here. Midstate Containers specializes in custom remote offices ready for your new journey. Customizable in every way. Our team is ready to reimagine remote working with your specific needs. We are excited to help create the new workplace so you can embrace more of life. Welcome back to the Surfing for Hope Longboard Classic. This is the LQS 1000. We're into the men's quarterfinal, heat number four. We have an international affair out there. This is Augustin Sedino in green, up and riding. And Dorian Torres in white as well. Noah Shimabakuru and Christian Stutzman. So a little heel hang and, and run back for Augustin, trying to open up his account and get into the semis. Yeah, international affair. We've had quite a lot of U.S. surfers, but here we have a Costa Rican and a Panamanian. What a place, man. I have never been able to surf in Panama. Mm. I've been close, but someday. Lots of incredible surf down there. And Christian's falling off there. Christian's no stranger to left-handers. Loves going down to Saladita mm. in Mexico, the big long left there. Home of former home of the Mexi Log Fest and Noah, one of the smoothest in the game. One of the uh, stalwarts of the Takayama legacy. Coordinating things down there at Donald Takayama Surfboards and a long time team rider before Donald's passing. Lucky to mm. get through by the skin of his teeth yesterday in a in a packed heat. And up the beach, there is Jack Van Wagner, the youngster. On his way with Dakota Faircloth in live action. This is Dorian, the Costa Rican. Nice, hang five. And sort of in the pocket too, you know, not way out in the face. Nice opening wave there for him, just ticking the box and falling off uncharacteristic. So You saw the tail lift yeah. on him and that just pushed the angle and he, he ended up unaware, ran off the nose of the board. Well, thanks, guys, for keeping your jerseys on, and um, we'll get that post-heat interview with Jack Von Wagner. We've got a few scores in. Christian opened with a 1.5. Noah, your first wave, a 3.75. Dorian, your first wave, a, th a throwaway, but it's really about that last wave is a 5 for Dorian. So that's how things are, and Augustine opened with uh, a 2.1. Priority is with green and then blue. 22 minutes remaining. We've got our first semifinal of the women's following this. Chloe Coleman, Jennifer Smith, Leah Diaz, and India Hoffman. Oh, and if this isn't Where? just a testament, that next heat for what we have, that's right. Uh, the, the women, they, this is just such a, a versatile lineup, and this is where longboarding has has ended up by adopting this criteria where longboarding is emerging. You know, you're attracting surfers from those cultural, you know, pockets that are so important to longboard surfing. Places like Sano and uh, Doheny, and you've got people from, you know, um, Cardiff, and you've got surfers from Santa Cruz, you've got surfers from all around the world. Leah is down there in Costa Rica. I know down there in the Philippines right now, they've got a contest going on for the national tour and Australia, Noosa, Byron Bay. You're attracting athletes from these areas that are just so synonymous with, you know, longboard culture. And no one wants to see, at this level, 45-year-old men going around, you know, like like people at past their prime, which longboarding was dominated <coughs> by in the yes. 1980s. Yeah, in absolutely. Your, in, your, in your era. No, I remember, guy. I mean, you'll do the interview. We can wrap around that. But like Jim Hogan and Ted Robinson and, you know, those guys coming off the world tour shortboarding and then going into longboard and actually doing well. And, yeah, that was a fun funky time. Okay, let's take it away. We got Jack Von Wagner with Matt Chanowski. 
post heat interview. A free coaching session for all the other competitors out there, Jack, showing them how to do it. Your first two waves, keepers towards the end, opening up with an eight and a seven. How did it feel? Yeah, felt really nice. I mean, waves are a lot smaller today, so definitely like a whole different strategy out there. Just tried to wait, tried to find the good ones, and found two good ones, and that's what mattered. And you surfed so solid on that Michael Takayama. Who's tuning in, watching you right now at home? I'm sure Michael's either working or hopefully stopped to watch some of his surfers. Yeah, um, hopefully Michael's watching. Yeah, Michael. Um, I know my, my family's definitely watching right now. It's my mom's birthday, so happy birthday, mom. Uh, yeah. That's a nice birthday present. Of course, mom gets a shout out to the World Wide Web. Uh, carrying a lot of momentum through. We look forward to seeing you very soon in the semifinals. Back to live action. Yes, he has shot it over the bow. You know his intention is to win the event. Jack Von Wagner with just three waves ridden in that heat and all excellent scores. Or, well, two of them, excuse me. Here we go. Blue, Noah, Shimabakura, Shimabakuro. Nice cheater five, long O, puts that inside hand up. A nice throwback. So there's those subtle nuances, body posture, not just doing the footwork, but where do the hands go? Behind the back, one hand trailing. <clears throat> That's gonna be a nice score for Noah, a six point ride for Noah. Noah in the lead with a three, seven, five and a six. Dorian, your first good wave was a five, your last wave a 4.25. Green, your best two waves, a 2.6, and your last wave was a 2.3. Christian with priority with a 1.5 and a 0.8. So, Christian, right now you need a 7.75 to go into second, and Augustine, you need a 6.65. Look at that lazy paddle out. from. You can see it on the drone angle. They can just cruise and maximize their priority situation in the water. Blue, knowing he's paddling back out with fourth priority on his knees, just cruising. He can stay wide of everyone and inside. Okay. <clears throat> well, we have got the raffle ticket for the winner of the signed Kelly Slater Yellow Sunset jersey. Tommy Hughes, Tommy Hughes, if you are here on the beach. Well, it, I guess Andy McKay just told me he's not here. <laughs> okay. Well, they, they've they given their phone number, so they'll get a shout. And uh, Tommy Hughes, if you're watching online, you have won the Kelly Slater raffle jersey. And that's what I love about the Surfing for Hope organization is that they're so transparent. They did have that that raffle and he's not here to claim it so they are being true to their word, word and they'll contact him yeah they always love a a very uh, transparent organization especially surfing for hope go on to their website surfingforhope.org and learn more about the camps they run the free surf camps for cancer survivors and their family and and really uniting and bringing together uh, surfers around the ocean with the you know uniting them with that similar struggle in the ocean, the true leveler. Well, we've had some great giveaways over the years, some great raffles. I know local surfer just from up the coast, Shane Stoneman, who uh, incredible Central Coast surfer, along with Walter Cerny and a few others, um, father and shaper and artist, had made over the years a couple diff different high-gloss fishes that he donated to the cause that became the raffle item. We'll see what's going on in Pismo this year. And if you're in Pismo this year, make sure you hang out with Pirate Steve. Always a figure down on the pier. Mm -hmm. I've seen that, yep. <laughs> yep, look, back on my phone. Pirate Steve oh, there you go. says, be kind to all. He's, well, a le he's a legend. And Randy Rarick donating a Moray Pope Bisect, one of the first surfboards that uh, could separate. Oh, really? That was there for the raffle, I believe, the other night. A s oh, a board that separates? Yeah, it was there. The, 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 How yeah. did I miss it? It was up on stage, but it joined together. But at time, I oh, mean, okay. you can't disconnect it for travel or storage for whatever reasons. 
Uh, they went horrible, but it's a it's a hard board. Uh, no, it was it was fiberglass, but they had a system where they could join it together, and well, like before the inflatables. Well, they, now they got the inflatables, but they did it with, with PU boards back in the nineties as well. How did I miss? I've never heard of that. That's amazing. Yeah, the bisect. The bisect. Anyone okay. out there want to know what it is? Type it in the the Pope bisect, and I believe Randy did donate it because it had some signatures on it. it. Was donated for Surfing for Hope. I think it was up for raffle. I'm pretty sure it was. Mm. Either way, it was on stage, so it was pretty cool. Donated there from surfboard historian and industry stalwart, professional surfer and shaper, board restorer Randy Rerick, a good friend of Bob Vogel as well. 14 minutes, 20 remaining. Noah, 6 and a 3.75, out in the lead. Dorian, you're in you, second with a 5 and a 4.25. I love that. You know that a board has enough foam in it. If not only do you knee paddle and you're above the planing surface of the water, but if you can just stand, stand on up. it as if, like Noah just did, and not sink the board. Well, I know it's... He's, he's not a 150 he, pounds either. No, so. he's a man's man. And Green, this is oh, well, he was currently in fourth. And Christian, you're in third, needing a 5.65. Blue, white, red, originally from Oceanside, now live residing in the South Bay. Christian Suitsman and Green, Augustin Sedino, looking for a 6.65. But it's blue, white, red, and green at this point. I had this beautiful nose rider that Rusty Priesendorfer gave me a long time ago. And... It was, it was like that thick and just – it had a bit too much rocker, but it was still really fun. It mm -hmm. had chimed rails in the nose and a single big concave, that scoop yep. in the nose. And it was such a trip when you ran up on the nose. The concave would lift, but then the chimed rail would slip oh, and wow. grab. So it was like, you know, the IPA chimed rail yeah, yeah, yeah. just up in the nose. It, wow. it was its own unique sensation. And how long was it? It was 9-6. Okay, cool. Yeah. Sounds interesting. I like it, it. was really interesting. It took a few surfs yeah. to figure out what would happen when you were on the nose, mm -hmm. that lift, and then the chimed rail slip. Wow. But then it would re-engage. Cool. So a lot going on. A few waves uh, dotting around. I can tell you, red's got priority. White looks like he's back on his knees out the back for lining himself up for second priority. Yep. And third priority to Noah in blue. We'll get some scores locked in. At this point, no change. Blue in the lead. White in second. White looking to drop a 4.25. Or go to get a 4.76 to move into the lead. And Christian looking for a 5.65 in red to move into second. Green looking for a 6.65. This is the replay of White's. Right that he got, one of the first rights of this heat. Just a wiggle, 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 gets to the 10. He had a good score like that yesterday, but not this time. The right's not really looking favorable. No, nope. and if he'd gone a bit further, I was going to call out the beak boogie. Yeah. Well, I wonder if this group of people down on the beach in the sand in their red parkas are here to support one of our surfers coming up next, or if they're just a... Sunday beach touring group cruising. No, they've been tuning in on the webcast. Oh, they have? Yeah. That, that whole crew? Yeah, of course. And they've made their way down from somewhere between San Francisco and L.A. to, <laughs> to join it. Uh, I don't go. really know. Oh, no. okay. We just weave stories like... I'm just encouraging the webcast viewing and just saying hello to mm -hmm. everyone out there. Christian, on his answer back, 5-10 combo, holding that 10, a little wipe of the nose... Complete, Again. but a loss of composure for a while, but super long wave. And it's kind of hard to tell. where He's so far down, I think, a lot of water spraying off the nose. You could tell he was on the nose. He's still, he's still riding that thing to the bitter end. A couple nose blows on the way. So I think as far as the length of ride, which isn't in the criteria, it's a 10. But because it's not in the criteria, <laughs> it doesn't count. Yeah. So it'll be a 10 minus... Everything else. <laughs> there we go. Here we go. Dorian now. Dorian Torres, our Costa Rican surfer. A short wave. Got up to the nose. Will this better his 4.25, which is really what matters? 
Yeah, Christian, way down the beach, all the way down to the edge of the area against the flag there. Now, cameraman Cayucas may have got him. He's filming from Cayucas Inn. Mm -hmm. um, that's how far down he was. We just had to contact him on the PA, but uh, no, he missed it. Yeah, he actually went past Cayucas down in Cambria, actually. He went around the headland all the way to Cambria. Well, I believe he was out of Slow County, so it didn't count. But no, no, no. Of course, that one counted. Scores being locked in. So, Christian, that last wave of 3.85. It wasn't enough. You're after a 5.4 to move into second. Blue in first, white in second, red third, green looking for a 6.65. Nine minutes, 25 remaining. Mm, so the tide, as the mini faces of the waves change, as the tide draws out, you can see when they show the beach, <clears throat> the dry sand, the dark sand from the saturation of the high tide this morning. Now it's gone out some 40 yards or whatever it is, um, moving from the five plus foot tide, still going out until after two o'clock this afternoon which will be somewhere in our semifinals, I think, possibly encroaching on the finals. Yeah, very low tide, a point of minus 0 0.03, so a deficit there, and that contributes to how small the waves are right now, a draining tide, and that's why Christian was able to go so far down. So a 3.85 on your last wave, Red, it wasn't enough. You're after a 5.4. Green, you need a 6.65. There's Noah standing up. I reckon I'm going to take a guess and say that board's in 10 feet. It might be 10 feet, and what would it be? Oh, here we go. 50 liters? Oh, uh, no, or no, no. It'd be 70 or something. 70, all right. Boy, uh, that's well, I don't know. I, don't. I have stand up paddle boards that are 90 liters. <laughs> Little ones. Yeah, my, um, my guns are 90 to 100 plus. Mm. Here's white. Quick feet for white. Up on the nose, low body language, up again, and trimming through, and a little bit of pizzazz in the end turn, showing similar to the right yesterday, finishing with control, not groveling for more scores, and the paddle battle is on, green and white on the inside, here they go, Dorian and the, our surfer from Panama, Augustine, and paddling hard, it looks like green's going to get the run on him, I love a good paddle battle, traditionally, Surf longboard and shortboard competition started off as beach starts. You had to paddle out off the sand, and it was a matter of not only how many waves you got, but how far you could catch them to the shore too. There was that, and then it went into the era of water starts, but buoys out the back yep, for paddle priority, race. so what a waste of time. But the, the paddle races, and there were some iconic ones um, all around the world, some funny stories. Let's get into that. No, <laughs> that but Dorian, you've gone into the lead with a 5.25. On your last wave, white in the lead, blue in second, red now needing a 5.91, green. You need a seven, you're in fourth position, six minutes 50 remaining. Well, yeah, good things that are gone from the dark ages of surfing, so to speak, like three to the beach and um, <laughs> the priority buoy paddle, which was iconic at Huntington Beach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but talk about... The surfers not surfing, spending energy paddling. Oh, yeah. Great. It, still, we have those moments like you were just talking about. Two surfers oh, I'm, close I'm encouraging in. it, though. Uh, oh, it's super fun. It happens at certain venues where surfers finish the wave. At Huntington, it happens a lot. Well, someone might go right. Someone goes left. And it's they're both on the beach at the same time. Who's going to get out first? I'll and tell you, you see them sprint for it. I tell you, it's not having a bar of a paddle battle. It's Noah. He's had three waves out there. He is just... Going to sit there with priority and wait for a set. And why not? He's in second. He knows what he needs. He needs to better the 375, make things. Let's simplify it, right? And this is a surfer in red. This is Christian on the hunt. Another one of those long lefts. Real waves really shrinking here on the. Oh, nice, Joan. <laughs> I thought he was going to ride into the drone on his hang heels to the yep. shore. That probably won't get him the 591. So the tide drawing out and our surfers much further down the beach. Thank you, Siegel, for gracing the the uh, vision that we had right there of Dorian. 
So I would have to say the birds are well fed in this area. Bait fish everywhere. The bird sanctuary, they live either back in the estuaries in the reeds or up on these beautiful rocks. Just under five minutes now, surfers, in this final heat number four, quarterfinal number four. Coming up next, semifinal number one on the women's side of the draw. It's funny, up here you do see everyone has those big tr those coats like we were talking about, the military yeah. coats, or I call them the water polo, the swim team ah, coats, the yeah. coats, they, you know, they wear them at the pools. Yeah. Ki people training early in the morning in the freezing cold air, mm -hmm. swimming, and they just put that thing on. The water, pro water polo players wear them. No one down south has those coats. It, that's, it's it's yeah. never cold enough. Right, yeah. It's synonymous oh. with Northern California. It might be cold, but not not quite the same and no wind not like up here well that does seem to be a soccer team down there in those coats a school soccer team or you know just the soccer team checking out and one of the students that i coached back in australia hannah bromley she was a professional soccer player she came to play over here with new zealand uh on the new zealand team and she's used that obviously the footwork in soccer it's actually there oh, is the a, a, a combination there with longboarding it can transition obviously you've got the sport the skill element the the mindset element and it you can transition from those types of ball sports especially ones with that's all i feet. do that's my only sport that i watch is is soccer other than action sports it's the best sport in the world well, it's fun just to kick a ball around i'm sure out there i mean everybody christian noah dorian augustine it's like a great it's a world sport right it is well it's surfing the world it, sport it, it to is. us it is mundial day it's the global sport there's people out there, the Europeans, that I'm sure they're not tuning in right now because but, they're thinking, what is what is this oh. soccer that they talk about? It's called football. It's football. You know, I watched all the EPL highlights the last last night up in the oh, yeah. room. Yeah, Liverpool goes to the top in the Premier League. Yes, it's amazing. Footy, footy, footy. Fair bit of sports going on this weekend. I as guess. Well. Yeah. Besides surfing, what's going on? Well, uh, there is. Uh, there's that sport. I think the Lakers are going. Are there's playing. basketball. There's no baseball. The NFL is happening, which yeah. I never watch. No. I, well, I'm partial to it, but uh, family requirements. Is it? Oh, I see. Yes. School, school football out there in LA. I love it. Yeah, no, it's fun. I love going. My one of my daughters is uh, dances on the the oh, yeah. competitive teams, and they perform at the half times at sure. the at the high school game. So I do enjoy going and being a part of that, but just sitting and watching mm -hmm. the game, the whatever. And here goes here. Dorian. Yes. Oh, there we go. Critical nose right in the pocket. Dorian, our Costa Rican competitor. A little readjustment, and. Getting that rail engaged there. He's going to slow down and look up. This wave could go all the way down the beach. Nice timing there. And he cuts it short. He's happy with that. His little clap. And that's a way to close out the heat. Smart surfing there from Dorian, our Costa Rican competitor from Nasara. And a minute 30 on the clock. Well, he had... He rode a lot of waves. This is going to be his best wave. He's going to get rid of the five. He gets a 7.00 on that wave. Way to come in. Will he paddle back out? <laughs> He's out in the lead. Now, mm. things are the same. Noah in the blue with priority. Not checking his surfer behind him in the red. Christian, third place surfer, needing a 5-9-1. Can he find a left that he needs to get the high score? Cheater 5, long. There's the beak boogie. Where will the judges go with this, Matt? We'll have to wait and see. 55 seconds remaining, and Noah left a left a left a open wave for there. Christian oh, there. No. And again, the one behind he didn't paddle for, so he just didn't look back. 45 that seconds way. remaining. I was a little surprised. Yeah. Announcing the priority, and all of a sudden red was up. We're, Dorian's just coming in. 35 seconds left. Unless something wild yeah. happens in the last 30 seconds. Dorian. Noah might need a wave. Taking the first. Yeah, Christian waiting on the scores. Oh, no, it came in. 3.5.
So red gets a 3.5, <clears throat> didn't turn the heat, didn't advance with that last wave. Blue safe at wow. the moment with priority. He did the same thing in his first heat. Anyway, counting this one down. Five, four, three, two, one. Mm, some tidy surfing, finishing the heat there, Christian. Going for broke on that last little wave. Where will this come in? It's just the critical nature. Once again, we saw Bucky Barry in those previous heats doing the heel hangs, getting threes, fours consistently because of the small size. We're going to go back to break and we'll update you with the scores very shortly. of what was happening right there. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for joining us here at the Surfing for Hope Longboard Classic. Jeff Baldwin and Matt Janowski sitting here bringing this information. Look at this beautiful view of Moro Rock, one of the nine Moros. We are into semifinal heat number one in the blue, Jennifer Smith in the white right now. Leah Diaz in the red, Chloe Coleman, and in the green, India Hoffman. Indy Hoffman. The other day when I saw that rock and it looked like a face, now I cannot unsee it. It has scarred my, my it, retina for life. It's straight. It's I've, the same thing. It I, looks like a sailor's hat. Someone mentioned sailor's hat? Is yeah. You? Yeah, I don't know if I mentioned that, but... It, it's just a totem, this t carved totem head. 45 degree up. Yeah. He's looking to the, or she is most, I, I would hope it's a male. It's a pretty ugly looking face. I'm going to claim it as a male. <laughs> male, okay. I hope so. One of the chiefs. There we go. The native chiefs. Uh, yeah, and from our angle, I mean, boy, the mouth, the nose, the eye, the hat. Yeah. Proudly looking to the north. Yep, up to Hearst Castle. That's it. So that was Dorian taking the win, 12.25. You've got a post-heat interview, so don't go too far, Dorian. Come up with your rash vest on. I can see him running away. And Noah Shimabukuru, by the skin of his teeth, getting through that one again. And Christian coming in third. And Augustine in fourth. And Maddie, beautiful body language there. Just very low arms. Relax surfing. Indy, did I say? You said Maddie, Maddie. but Sorry. that's okay. Indy I, I wondered. I looked at the board real quick. Indy Hoffman with the dry hair. You can see the golden locks blowing in the wind. And this one is Leah, who got off to a quick start. Incomplete, though, on that first wave. So 365. Mm, one of the few rights we've seen in a little while, Leah Diaz. Perched on the nose, diving off. Her hair is wet now, set into this heat. She opened with a 3.65. Jennifer Smith with a 3.5. And Chloe, a 1.5. Indy, your first wave, a 2.5. So the surfers having to keep it together, getting through this heat, puts them into the final. That's where they get the bigger points and a little more cash in their back pocket. In the end, it's not about the money. It definitely for the uh, collective amount of points through the events over mm -hmm. the year. All of them would, would love to get the chance to go compete internationally on the championship tour. Last year was Huntington, Bells, and El Salvador. You were saying earlier you're not sure if the Huntington is on the, on the uh, docket yet, but we know that Bells and uh, El Sal are. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Possibly Huntington could be, and maybe there'd be a fourth. So who knows? I mean, 
for me personally, I'd love to see somewhere that's a left. If they're going to go to Bells and Elsensal, nice. Cheater 5 to a quick 10 behind the section there. And, and that rail line carries her past the whitewash. Again, giving her more opportunity to walk the board, finding the, the sweet spot. And, well, that inside rail slips on her and she goes over the back. Yeah, but, but with so many lefts around the world, boy. They could surely find somewhere. I don't oh, know. Oh, there's lots of lefts. Well, yeah. Huntington is classified as a left, I think. And I, I do think El Salvador is conducive to goofy footers and bells as right-hand points. So, and 20 minutes remaining. So 2.65 and a 2.4 for red. Jen, you're out in the lead with a 5.25 and a 3.5. So blue in the lead, red in second, white in third. Green looking for a 2.56. You're holding down priority. I'm going to go catch up with Dorian and ask some of the competitors what boards they're riding. Mm, all right. You do that. and you, They'll wave to me when he's up at the podium or up at the backdrop. All scores are in. Yeah, that last wave for blue, a 5-2-5. And the last wave for Chloe, a 2-6-5. So difficult at the moment, possibly, to get the higher score just because all the waves are small. But the judges always readjusting the scale, you know. They can't expect someone to find a 5-foot head-high wave when it's always 2-foot. So this long wave of blue was what got... The score, oh, green, tucks it up on the nose. Oh, I like that. Delicate footwork there. You could tell she didn't want to plant her back foot. She was just touching the toes between stepping back and forward. Moving on through these heats quickly. It looks like white. We will watch white, and she is off quickly, so that gives me the freedom to throw it down. Matt, yeah, let's go. we can take it away with this next interview with our heat leader, Dorian. No stranger to beach breaks and surfing around the world. Dorian, we know you spend a lot of time in Santa Cruz, but you are from Costa Rica. How is it coming up to this LQS event? Uh, it feels good. You know, water is super cool for me, but I'm um, trying to get used to the water right now, but yeah. And you're looking good. Took a little bit for you to get warmed up, but at the end, you had a really beautiful wave. What was the philosophy behind that? Yeah, I was I got lucky with that wave. You know, I was trying to come from behind of the wave to use the length of the board, and it just came out perfectly. You know, <laughs> yeah. no, it looked good. You using the nose, the tail, everywhere in between, and that surfboard you're riding, very stable, more of a nose rider shape. Yeah, it's actually a very wide tail, a little bit slower, um, which is that's the only one that I feel comfortable right now. I brought that. Pintel, but it's not working that well for me. Well, good chance that you'll be on that nose rider again <laughs> later on. Uh, any mo well, you're taking momentum, but any tips you're going to give yourself or any, any learnings that you'll take into your next round? Uh, I'm trying to be a little bit more patient on the water, uh, be more selective, you know, and just build confidence through the semifinals. Yeah. Well, two more heats, four more waves. To your, you know, you could be on that, holding that title trophy. We look forward to seeing you in the semis. Back to live action. Well, smiles for miles coming from Dorian. And I like that, you know, trying to be more patient in the lineup. He knows his equipment, so he's set in a good place for the semifinal coming up. <clears throat> Let's see. Indy, you are in second place now. Your last wave was a 4.25. Jennifer in first. Chloe with a 2.65 and a 3.95. Here is Indy.
nice perched up on the nose and again just that will be a throw away for Leah Diaz priority is with blue then red then green Chloe there's 15 minutes left. You're in third place. You have second priority, and you need a 2.81 to go into advancing position. Priority is blue, red, green. Green paddled for that wave, so she goes from third priority to fourth priority. First priority with blue, our heat leader. Indy, you have a 2.5 and a 4.25. Chloe with second priority in third place. You need a 2.81. And Liz in third priority in fourth place needs a 3.11. So small, small scores required for both third and fourth place surfers here. Well, another 3.5 for Jen Smith, our heat leader. Doesn't change anything in her situation up in the front. Here we go, red. This is what Chloe needed. Oh, beautiful work there. This is a wave that she'd been searching for. And it shuts down, but she's still not done doing some classic footwork and cross steps. Ah, Matthew, thank you. A nice cup of coffee. The leftovers from Iron Wolf, after they packed up and bailed, they did leave us a nice thermos full of coffee. So Dorian alluding to, off camera, our last heat winner, that it is tricky when you're paddling for a wave of what it is going to stand up and look like. So that's why we saw so many waves ridden by, uh, for example, Bucky Barry, Christian Stutzman as well, and Dorian, uh, really keeping busy, trying to find those opportunities. Um, no excuses for Bucky. He had an eight and a seven, and he just wanted yeah. to keep surfing. Well, then on the other end of the spectrum, yeah. you had Jack Van Wagner with <laughs> yeah. an eight and a seven, had it sealed in the first and, you know, and five minutes. So, Chloe, your last wave was a 3.85. You're in second. <clears throat> but to that point, that's what I was kind of wondering from our view, what is their view? Because so many waves are being taken yeah. off on not manifesting scores. And so they must have been reading something that we couldn't see from here. Yeah. Well, we're looking down the line. We have that luxury of that wide view. And, and Green, you're in third, needing a 3.55. So he's living up in Santa Cruz via... Uh, no, he, he oh. spent a lot of time up there. Oh, he spent a lot And he time. did go up there recently and um, surfed during the big day on the Wednesday. He also uh, met did up we with have our own? Nut. Did we have our own big Wednesday? Is that what that was? Dude, we did. <laughs> what? How do we not... I don't there know. I am, round tails and rat's tails, <laughs> like that. naming every day. And, and we had a big Wednesday. Yeah, we had the seaside sweep. and yeah, That's it. Yesterday and wow, the story of... Of Wednesday was was Big Wednesday and the day nobody. I, I am so stoked I got out there. Just in hindsight, just the, the feeling very <laughs> the, uh, tuned in. The day nobody surfed anywhere. No, Big Wednesday. No, no one surfed anywhere. Green, Indy Hoffman. As a matter of fact, Ooh. we didn't even look at waves anywhere. Not at all. Uh, beautiful style there from Indy, and she f steps forward. Didn't raise her hands above the hips. Don't be. Misguided, though, guys. That was some technical. Small nose rides, but still technical at the same time. Mm. And so both Chloe and Indy have that 
down the drop arm. That stat, the drop arm, yeah. So everything's happening from the hips and below. Love it. Making it look easy. And on a beach break, that isn't the most simple task. And I look forward... Yeah, look forward to seeing the replay on that one, just speaking to our guys. And this is India, so smaller wave, but just watch the back knee, the right knee here. See that little bit, see here, little bends that back knee in, tucks it in there. Beautiful. Just a moment of critical nose riding for green. And on the outside, this is our surfer in white. This is uh, catching up with Leah Diaz in live action. So we'll... So you know who else has that? Not in longboard, but Caitlin Simmers and John Ooh, John damn. in the shortboard there kind of go. have those skate, we call yeah. them skate hands. So the judges appreciating the style and poise, the style, flow, and grace of Green's last wave. We have a score still to lock in for Green with that drop art, like drop legs, similar to, I would say, Craig Anderson. 5.75 for Green. You are in the lead. Blue, you're in second. Red looking for a 4.81. Red down in the third. And Leah in white. You need a 5.11. We still have a score to drop for you, but I don't think it'll be enough. So white, you need a 5.11. Red, you need a 4.81. Blue, you're now into second, chasing a 4.76 to move into first. And Indy, you have gone into the lead. You're looking to improve on a 4.25 as your low score. Eight minutes and 50 seconds remaining. Nice surfing from everybody. And the action is not finished. Chloe now in third. This is looking beautiful. Full cheater five. A long section. She got a quick, tight, it wasn't quite ten, tight five, I guess. We'll see on the replay. Yeah, and now a little, a little bobble loses the board. It's coming in. But did straighten out and then lost in the whitewash. I would call it a completion. Was kick out? Mm -hmm. Not quite. So let's watch this. So slightly more windswept than earlier. And no bottom turn, but knifing it down the line in here. Five. So yeah, a little touch 10 off the rail there and holds it. See how the board holds up in the little bit of levitation of the wind, which some of the surfers were really struggling with earlier. And this was Leah's live action with Leah. And so from white just going down, unfortunately. So a nice score locking in here for Chloe in red. Right on cue, Chloe, you're about to lock in your the best wave of the heat, a 6.1. You're back in the lead, 6.1 and a 3.95, the surfer in red. Indy, you're in second, looking to get a 4.31 to move into first. Jennifer in blue, Jen, you need a 4.76 to move into second. White, you need a 6.35, 7 minutes, 25 seconds remaining. And we are splitting the beach commentary with the live webcast. So here is Jen on her answer back. Important wave for her uh, in third position, needing yep. that 4.76. And then on the outside as well, behind her is current second place holder in green, Indy. Whoa, nice style again. There's that style. Beautiful. A little bit of flair with the hands. It's and so hard to see in real life. I'm watching the re... Oh. She's just going to town. And the arches in between, the subtle body posture, just that casualness, like an Andy Davis yeah. painting. Fully. 100%. And if she can complete here. So the, the key to that, I know it's a small wave, but it it wasn't all on the face. There was moments where she, there was composure, with the hands by the side, the whole wave, but also the back knee, the hips. All of that stuff is showing... You know, like in a tube, you're seeing someone's soul arch, for example, and it's composure and control. Indy, you're in the lead with a 725. White up and riding now. Oh, and just falling off. So green, a 7.25. Red, you're back in a second. Blue, you're looking for a 4.81 to move into second. White, you need a 6.4. Green, your last wave, a 725. So interestingly sometimes soul arches are just soul arches for style alone in that last wave of indies when she arched back and pushed her hips forward it was a functional technical move yeah. because she was transferring weight and pushing the front of the board forward it wasn't just an arch to arch for sure for and arching what, sake and we spoke about this early so super on the really good pickup there jeff where 
Style isn't just standing there and throwing your hands up and a little hip thrust. If it's functional with speed and you're in the critical part of the wave, well then that's where your personal flair can come in. And nice little wave here for Jen setting up and that won't be it. So we'll get a replay in due time of Green's last wave. And this was this is live action. We're gonna catch up with nobody because no one took off. So we're at five minutes remaining. Can take a breath for a minute, you mean? Yeah, and I can sit back. The judges can take a minute. They have to still put in Jin's last score. But yeah, that uh, a replay of Indy's wave would be nice. So yeah, just to recap as well, Jen, you need a 4.81 in blue to move in a second. Chloe, you're in second. You need a 6.91, and here she goes now. Red looking to capitalize on this wave. She has a low of a oh. I was going to say a low of a 395, so she'll be wanting to get rid of that in her scoreline. Four minutes 30 remaining. Indy, your last wave, a 725. 725 on your last wave, Indy. And Leah in white, you're in fourth looking for a 6.4. And Jen in blue, you're looking for a 4.81. So tuning in, this was green, 725, the highest wave of the heat. So relaxed body language, note the hands and the positioning of that nose ride. Little 10 there, but it's here. Gets a little steeper, small wave. The hands go up, the hip thrust out, and another four nose rides, all of them in the pocket. So multiple 10s. And well done to Indy, just remaining fully composed throughout the length of this wave, that beautiful style. And surfing that one all the way to shore, the hands just showing how controlled she was. Indy Hoffman, a 7.25. And you know what else is something to note or that I was picking up and it's so functional. Instead of her hips being towards the beach, she's shifting her the twist. Yes. You know, forward Great pick motion. Up, Jeff. And, yes. and that's what keeps that balance of the nose moving forward. It's all in the hips. Ba -ba -ba -bum. And here she goes again. Heat leader. Effortless style, beautiful, and there it is again. This one's shutting down, but showing us how it's done. And you're right, it's that hip adjustment where it goes from facing the beach and then uh, that small, small little change and going into the 10, adjusting the hips so it's facing the wave. And almost, it's the way the weight transfers from obviously each, so the rail side, the heel side, mm -hmm. and the toe side, you basically fully engaging the rail when you do that. It's very technical. <coughs> Similarities to tube riding. I keep drawing those comparisons, but it is all in the vision, the upper body, and the hips. Super technical surfing there. Small waves, but beautiful surfing there from Indy Hoffman and Green. And, and for more of a <coughs> rude construction of that picture you see in beginner surfers, they're always butt towards the beach, chest facing the wave, yep. as opposed to shifting that chest down the line and that makes the hip shift, and yep. then they're going the right direction. Here goes, using a priority, this is two-time world champion, Jen Smith, in third, needing a score, gets the 10, and this one's shutting down, so minute 44, chasing a 4.81, hedging her bets on this, surfing this one all the way through, a minute 30 remaining. So priority with red, Green with second priority. Scores still to drop for blue. Saw a nice little seal in the lineup out further from the surfers. Run amok photography, picking up all of nature. You know who's not struggling with the wind all day or all week? The birds. The birds yeah. have not been struggling with it at all. So, Jen, your last wave is not enough. It was a 3.15. One minute remaining. Blue needing a 481, white needing a 6.11, Chloe looking to drop a 3.95. That's your low score and Indy way out in the lead. Priority with red. And moving down the beach, we have red out the front and down the beach, we have our surfer in white and blue. So smart using 
all their competitive prowess and experience. 30 seconds. So they went way down the beach to try and get away and hunt for something. Our heat leader right now going to do this last wave into the beach. 15 seconds. There is a wave out there. 10 seconds. I'll count this one. It's over and dusted. Five, four, three, two, one. Hold your positions, surfers in the next heat. I'll count you in when they tell me, but it should be shortly. All scores are in. Moving on through, India Hoffman and Chloe Coleman into the semifinal. I mean, the final. Sorry. Yeah. My brain. Counting the next semifinal in. The world has changed, and the workplace has evolved. The option to live free of the commute and busy work life is here. Midstate Containers specializes in custom remote offices ready for your new journey. Customizable in every way. Our team is ready to reimagine remote working with your specific needs. We are excited to help create the new workplace so you can embrace more of life. We start each day with one goal. With our state-of-the-art network, we provide reliable high-speed internet to the Central Coast with no contracts and no limits. Visit peakwifi.com for plans and coverage of our rapidly expanding network. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us on a Sunday. We are into semi semifinal number two on the women's side of the draw. Jeff Baldwin and Matt Chanowski. Look at these beautiful scenics here of Morro Bay, where this whole event has taken place. We are on day seven of this event, the final day. Right now, we are here at the Surfing for Hope Longboard Classic, up and riding in the green, live Stokes. If you're just tuning in, we've had first rounds of women's, quarters finals of women's and men's, and we are into the second semifinal of the women's. So down there, that's you can see our surfers, a green heat winner, and that's Miles, Chloe Miles, Co and more Miles. Chloe Coleman there with two-time world champ Jen Smith eliminated by the two youngsters, but beautiful surfing from Jen. That's some of the smoothest surfing I've seen her her do on that Osprey surfboard. And Leah Diaz, the Costa Rican there, the future of longboarding right there, and an upset, but a great semi-final there, and with. The young gun, Indy Hoffman, leading the charge with the stylish surfing from Chloe Coleman, who's had the highest, second highest heat total today. And on the women's side, just showing us how it's done. And same in this heat, casting our attention to Star, the 17-year-old in white, out to a quick 1.75. And this is Natalia, who was the highlight <laughs> of the quarterfinals, going the one leg yeah. Big boogie there. Yeah, the one leg boogie. I've got to say that Takayama diamond down the board, it, it's such a, it sticks out. It's the, great the branding. Spear, the diamond the, spear. The diamond spear. That's their logo. That's their logo, I know, but it works. Yeah. Well, no, fully. It's like and, every board has it. It looks like it's part of the air spray or the laminate. It's the, the, tint. It's the tint and pin yeah. line custom made. And, and In, a lot of people don't realize they think it's a design and they get it done. But that's like putting the Almeric... The resin spear, yes. Thank you, Mike Stidham. So it's it is their logo, and a lot of people do it and impinge on copyright. Oh, naughty! But they don't. I don't think they intentionally do it. It's a custom order where someone will go, "I like this," and if the person's not clued into the industry, I mean, you'd have to be pretty pretty much not have social media to not see those boards. But the thing is, <clears throat> it shows. It shows. Yeah. No matter how they're riding the board. Anyway, good branding there. Liv Stokes is on one in this heat. Yeah, um, they have a massive team, that's for sure. Or or people have just gone and said, I need to ride this. They work well. Generous man, uh, Michael Takayama, and helping a lot of the next gen. 
And Lord, well, and the more you help at the highest level, the more feedback you're getting, yeah, input oh, from totally. all this different, you know, these surfers collectively around the planet. But I always joke, I have a friend, Tom Payne in Australia, who's a team rider and helps, and he's a glasser at Thomas Surfboards, uh, who shaped uh, Tom uh, Harrison Roach's 2022 winning board. And I, th I say Tom's the worst guy for R&D because he can ride anything and he doesn't fall off. <laughs> go. I'm going to go catch up with Indy Hoffman for her heat recap and an interview. Liv Stokes. Ooh, well, it was beautiful for a second. Not just toes on the nose, but five toes hanging way over. So you've got toes to the nose and then you get it where they're in the ball of the foot, wrapping their foot over the front of the board. Ooh, lots of wave carrying in this speed for Natalia. That is a straight-up statuesque 10 for a minute there in the critical part of the section. Natalia Wanderlich blazed in her quarterfinal heat. Liv Stokes opened with a 2.5, has a second wave coming in. Well, waiting on these scores, here's a nice replay. This is what I was talking about. Statuesque, pose on the nose, beautiful tin with the offshores feathering right behind her. Turquoise face running off in front. That's going to be a nice score for Natalia Wunderlich. Score nearly in. Star is out in the lead at the... Or, sorry, Liv is in the lead with a 2.5 and a 2.15. Star in second with a 1.75 and a 2.5. But that's all just changed. Natalia gets a 6.5. I'm going to go to interview, then I will break it down afterwards. Indy Hoffman, for somebody who wasn't moving their arms on the nose at all, showing complete composure, apparently you were asking for sco your scores. You couldn't hear anything out there. <laughs> No, it's so windy out there, and I was out there shivering, just waiting to see what I got. Well, you're surfing some of the smoothest surfing we've seen all day. Amazing performance. Is that something you try to do, or is it just part of your natural style, that low arm composure? I'd say I try to do that. My mom and I worked on it when I was younger. She doesn't want me putting my arms in the air. Shout out, Mom. But, yeah, I guess that's just how I surf. <laughs> cool. So Mom's coaching clinic, signing people up right now. But, hey, you're in a role are you looking forward? You're aspiring to be on that World Longboard Tour? Yeah, for sure. It's been really fun. Last year I did the QS, and I'm hoping to do better this year. And you just took a pretty big scalp. You had Chloe, who was on a roll, and two-time world champ Jen Smith. Uh, that was a big heat. You must be feeling pretty confident moving into the final. Yeah, I'm stoked. Chloe's one of my best friends, so we had a lot of fun out there. And I've competed against Jen in the past. She ripped, so she's someone that I look up to. So that was pretty cool to surf with her again. And you have a big contingent at home tuning in. It's a Sunday. Give them a shout-out. A uh, shout out to my mom, my brother Rex, and also my shaper Josh. Love you guys. All right, back to live action. We'll see you in the final. Oh, what a happy interview. Nice work. Good job, Indy. Beautiful smile. Getting herself into the final. Laughing at her mom, coaching her. Hands down, no hands above the head. Okay. Well, it worked. She is... About to be in a final here in Morro Bay. So those scores were in, but Natalia has another wave to be scored to back up her 6.5. Liv also has another wave waiting to be scored. Both surfers out in the lead at the moment. Oh my gosh, the replay is gorgeous. Tight five from Natalia across that inside section. So she's finding the magic spots. Sixteen and a half minutes left. <clears throat> so Indy was saying she couldn't hear because it was so windy. Right now, sixteen and a half minutes left, surfers. Natalia, you're in the lead. With a 6.5, and I'm waiting on your secondary score. Liv, you're in second with a 2.5 and a 2.9. Star, you have first priority, and you're in third looking for 
a 3.25, and Stella in fourth needing a 2.91. Priority is white, red, blue. The future of longboarding is well and truly blooming here at the North American Qualifier. And a 7.25 for Natalia on your last wave. 13.75 heat total out in the lead. Liv Stokes in green. You're in second. Star, you're looking for a 3.25. White, you're in third. You're looking for a 3.25. And Stella in blue, you're looking for a 2.91. 15 minutes remaining. So tuning in right now, people from Australia, it's morning over there right now. I know some people are dedicated to the Longboard World Tour, whether it's the QS or the WLT, some faithful Longboard fans out there and no doubt some of the, the journalists and some of the Instagrammers out there, guys like Longboard Arian tuning in right now, critiquing what's going on and... Carla Rowland, perhaps, from the Queen of the Point, who's eyeing off the future of surfers that have had a start on the professional tour and, and surfing in her events as well. And here's Natalia. Again, heat leader, just looking to, to drop that 6.5. We'll see where that one goes. And in the background, that beautiful, expansive landscape of Cambria in the background. I love this area. And see what happens if they have contests and they can and I can find uh, some some business doing car restoration up here I might be able to continue my career of classic cars and classic surfing and here we have Natalia again is that replay a nice little cut down there I think everyone who's had a holiday here or was, or was spending time here is trying to figure out a way to move here it's just such a gorgeous place it's got so much charm and the variety of waves He's just mesmerizing. And Liv Stokes, just carrying an injury to her eye, is, about, is, well, I'd say battling on through this event. Currently in second place, looking to drop a 2.55. And Liv traveled around the world last year on the World Longboard Tour. She was surfing in Huntington, Bells, El Salvador, and put in some great performances, namely in Huntington, where she was not really seen on that pedigree before in that uh, in that lineup and she surfed so solid and here goes Stella how could I forget our Hawaiian friends that are probably tuning in too watching their potential competition for next year of course someone will qualify and and get a wild card on that world tour and Kira still tuning in and Will Hayden Smith as well they'll be watching eagerly with those who are putting their best foot forward, excuse the obvious pun, because cross-stepping and footwork is a major element of this criteria. And there's Star, 17-year-old, kicking out of that wave there. Lots of waves here, and of course, it's Natalia. Quick footwork, beautiful, hang 10, levitated, steering and unable to step back. She was on her way to a, a nice score. You just see the critical nature, and this camera angle, I mean, it's a testament to the judges keeping an eagle eye on things, but that camera zoom, you can see how far out that low tide is right now. It's incredibly difficult to see in live vision, all these technical elements, and just a huge 
thank you as a surf fan to the judges because it's been so on all events, shortboard and longboard, the judging here, a great panel. And they know exactly what they're looking at. The transition from eight feet bombs from men and women and shortboarding to, to logging now knee-high peelers. This week has seen it all. So tremendous crew here at the Surfing for Hope and Slow Cal Open. And the judges just closing the soundproof door, not wanting to grow their heads any bigger with those compliments. And unfortunately, with judging, tips are not available. This is just a, a private contractor scenario here. And Green, Liv Stokes, beautiful nose right there. And stepping back and gets a completion. So a journeyman type wave for that one. Just a pair of 2.9s. I am using my initiative after traveling around the world, commentating and surfing the world tour, thinking that will be better than 2.9. But we never anticipate the scores because unless we look at the replays, we're not the judges. There's five of them and two of us. Lots of waves again in this heat. Stella on her third. And this is a unique event where we are doing the live commentary for our webcast with the beach announcing. So I'm going to perform a pretty loud update for these surfers considering Indy said she couldn't hear that wind now going crossed offshore. So nine minutes remaining. Liv Stokes, your last wave is a 3.65. Star, yours down into fourth. So blue, you need a 3.56 to move into second. White, you need a 4.25. Paddling for this. Is our surfer in white? And she's up and riding. Quick footwork to the nose. A little bit off tilt there. And this one sets it up again. Critical nose ride there for white. And this one lining up all the way down the beach. And she gets a completion. So... Star Delia completing that wave there. Currently in fourth. Eight minutes 30 remaining. We'll update the score shortly. Stella, you're after a 3.56. Currently in third, but that position may change. This is a replay. So bigger wave here. Degree of difficulty. Not so much on this one, but this next nose right here. Section looming. Gets to the nose. Steps back. And another nose right here, no, and straightening out. So drawn long, imminent closeout, but some relatively strong footwork and fast footwork there, trying to get in that critical section. And there we have Bucky, and we have Bucky getting ready, and Richie Cravey, that beautiful... I'd call it a, what sort of color would you call that tint for Bucky's? Like a sun, sunburn. Sunburn. <laughs> a a 4.6 <laughs> for Star. Your last wave. You're moving a second. White second. Green, you now need a 3.26. Blue, you need a 3.91. Red first. White second. Green third. Blue fourth. Seven minutes, 15 remaining. My dad still has these beautiful old Dell cannons from the 70s um, that have lived on the side of the house. They've been ridden many times. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they're a bit antiquated, but their sunburned motif would fit right in yep. with the minimalist style. But they are, they are 40 years of sunburned. You know, we talked about this a little bit, and... I am going to share a photo on my Instagram of that patina surfboard I mentioned. Oh, that is so cool. The car. The car look. And yes. When I get home, I have a Gato Haroi shaped by Evan Daly from – now he shapes out here in glasses here, the Keo boards. But it's got the coffee stains. Mm -hmm. I just – I never – Why not? Anything will work, right? Yeah. Natural dyes. It's and, just unique, right? Well, and, you know – Going back hundreds of years, people used berries and herbs and dirts, yep. different clays to, you know, dye the traditional fabrics around the planet. Yep. And um, so why not? Coffee. 
it stains your shirts and your pants. It could uh, works well for you know people have painted with it. Yep. Great artists have used coffee as a medium. Yeah, those Dell Cannons. One time, one of them got stolen, which was a heartbreak. And a bunch of years later, my dad was in a bar down in Pacific Beach and saw it hanging on the wall, <clears throat> and told the owner. The owner made him buy it back, but he still did <laughs> and got it back at the oh. house. And a PSA to anyone out there who collects boards or has got any old Team Rider boards, when you're selling it, always give that shaper or the Team Rider first option to buy it back. It's just a, an unspoken rule. I don't sell many of my boards. The ones that I do, I do ask to please offer it back to me so I can either give it to a family friend, buy it back, give it to a family friend. And same with the shapers. They don't often get a chance to buy back their old boards. <laughs> you know, there's some, well, Tom Curran, who was involved in this event in the sense that he played at the foundation, uh, the Surfing for Hope Foundation uh, gala the other night on Friday. He was a legend in losing boards or misplacing them or them disappearing. But Like that Halle Eba, yeah, lucky exactly. seven. Where did it go? How did it disappear? Well, Maurice has somehow He's along the, the way, yeah, undercover. Uh, yeah. They've come back to him, and that's happened along the way with other people. There was something recently of one of Kelly's boards, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Four minutes 30, and as long as it's not uh, Wiggly Dantas's um, mayhem boards that are sitting in a cafe in the Gold Coast, as we saw in Stab's How Surfers Get Paid. Yeah, that's different. <laughs> well, back back in the day when there was not it, when surfing wasn't quite as lucrative, yeah. I definitely remember myself and quite a few other guys sitting there on the Grand Plage in Biarritz with yep. Sevende yep. on our boards because the Euro, you know, back then, the yeah, yeah, we were trying to make a bit of coin. Boards dude, sold for yeah, much higher amounts of money. Crazy. Yeah, they sold for qu th four times the price of what we got yep. them for, or they were free. But you know, that's what became the. Yep exorbitant gas money to 100%. go on to the next event and then lose all your prize money on the party <laughs> it's how times have changed yeah unless you're in the duct tape invitational and then it's like encouraged to buy up yeah to spend all your winnings yeah. right that night at the fun at the pub three minutes 30 remaining that's the only competition I've ever been to where you are uh Told Encouraged to, to dance and enjoy the evening the night before the contest. Da before, and then in the old days, you were encouraged to wreak mayhem with your competitors. Yep. Now that's our job. Liv Stokes and the answer back, currently in third. Oh, and just falling off there closely, getting a rail. So three minutes remaining, Liv. And Stella, you need a 391. Liv after a 326. Star, you're looking to drop a 2.3 as your low score. And Red, you're way out in the lead with a 7.25 and a 6.5. Yeah, I have to say, I always did appreciate the, um, the criteria in the duct tape in that, the shenanigans in full force for quite a few years. Mm -hmm. And then there was always the bonus, the prize for the best shared wave. Shared wave. <laughs> that was yeah. always good. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Classic stuff. Well. Focusing on this heat, Natalia with a 6.5 and a 7.25, doing really well out in first. Star in second with a 2.3 and a 4.6. Stella down in the basement with priority and just over two minutes looking for a small score, a 3.9. And Liv Stokes up and riding right now. She had fourth priority, so she is behind Red, utilizing her higher priority in that situation, even though she was out in yeah. first. That is some cutthroat competitiveness right <laughs> That's there. That's good. I like that. It. It's raw. <laughs> it was. She and she didn't need the wave. Um. So yeah, <laughs> Liv having to turn back against yeah. the grain. One minute forty five remaining. Now can Leah Diaz and Jen Smith, the third and fourth of that last heat, come and collect your checks if you want to get paid? Mm, money, money, money. Now we're in the money rounds. So this is Star looking to drop a marginal score up on the nose in the pocket. And she taps that one off the top and completes. Liv behind her. One minute 30. Green up and finishing her wave as well. And blue behind her. The blue's off and it was all between green and white. 
Very similar waves. The judges will dissect that. This is coming right down to it. White yeah. looking to drop a marginal score and green looking for a, a mid three, but it, that may have it extended. One minute remaining. My, it is getting so shallow with this tide drawing out. You would think if someone did a kick stall on the outside, they might hit the fin yep. in the sand. I mean, it's probably just a little more than a foot or two deep. But fortunately, the precision of this sandbar keeping things intact for the surfers to get still great scores, yep. anticipating this. And here she first goes. I'm loving this professional performance from Natalie. She came, she got a wave two minutes ago. She's killing the heat. She went back out just to lay down the hammer. Of course, the waves are cooking. And there she is, uh, really just starting to show her intentions as a professional longboarder. Really tactical, clinical, and stylish. 10 seconds remaining. Well, and we'll count it out, and I'll. Yeah, the little funny story. There we go. Ten seconds. So this wave will count for Liv. Five, four, three, two, one. That score won't affect anything yep. for Liv. And you were mentioning Natalia going back out and getting another wave. Incredible. And that was right on the heels of yeah. using her priority and yep. effectively taking Liv out of it. We're going to go to a break. We're going to come straight back into the men's. See you soon. Slow Cow Roots starts with natural and sustainable farming right here in Slow County. We offer a carefully curated selection of cannabis, both medical and recreational, from small batch craft concentrates and sleep gummies to locally produced fresh flower and extracts. Come join us on our journey to support family farms, support community, and support culture from the roots up. Slow Cow Roots, locally owned and operated by patients for patients. And we are live back, bringing you all the action. Baldy and Waxhead, we are into semifinal heat number one here at the Surfing for Hope Longboard Classic. Is this the first Longboard QS stop, the regional yeah. qualifier? That's right. So getting my facts after seven days of checking facts. Oh, standing tall and proud right there. Richie Cravey on his first wave. Did he change up his equipment? That... Is this the... Uh, he's got two different boards. He, b both are blue. Oh, okay. So we'll see. I'll, I'll that one, when he kicked out, the, the bottom was white. For some yeah, reason... Yeah, no, I that could be the same one. Yeah. That, okay, blue rail, bottom yeah. white. So, yeah, this is the first of two events. It'll be the uh, Coastal Edge Steel Pier Classic. May 25th, 27th is tentative, but should be most likely... Man, and that's on. another thing. It, traveling the world with longboards yep. or three. The airlines Ooh. never very friendly with the big bags. Wow, look at that pulled back angle of Ian Gutton. Yeah, and that, Gutron. The, uh, that was the last of the sunny heats because the rock is now shrouding. 1.15 in the clock. The, you know what? There's actually another hour of low tide. Yeah, it's not even there yet. So they're surfing out of the shadows into the sunshine from the darkness to the light. Richie, your first wave, a 5.0. Blue opens with a 5.0. Both Chase and Ian have their first wave. Scores not in. And Bucky Berry with priority. Extended cheater five there for Ian, and unfortunately, the inside rail slides out from under him. So he was on his way to a nice mid range score. Incomplete rides, though, just chopped the points down. So a 
2 for Ian and a 2.75 for Chase. So less waves on offer for all four surfers. Priority probably going to come more into play as the tide will be sucking out for another hour. Really shallow conditions. We see the surfers in the shadows of the Moro. But for them, surfing into the sunshine. Well, this whole week, in partnership with the WSL, the event hosted by Surfing for Hope Foundation, it's been a great partnership for all these years. This year, incorporating the Longboard Classic. We had the Longboard Classic at Pismo last year, right before, or two years ago, excuse me, right before the WSL Finals in Malibu. That was a really fun event. And here we go. Bucky Berry with the fade back paddle and turn. Sets himself up so nice. Ten on the nose. Up high and tight. So Bucky Berry out of the shadow into the light. Nice, confident finish to the wave. I love how he paddled cross grain deeper into the power source of the wave and then does that classic whip to set himself up for what became a nice cheater 5 to extended 10 and you can just see the although the wave's small as he's up and the nose is lifted that the force pushing up on the board Bucky, your first wave, a 4.6. So with all surfers having one wave ridden, Richie in the lead with priority. Bucky in second with a 4.6. Chase in second priority needs a 1.86. Ian, who is up and riding right now. Gliding, stylish, long cheater five. Little cross step carved down. Another extended... Cheater 5, and again, so maximizing the potential on that micro left, touching the nose gracefully to finish with, the, with his backup. We'll go down to an interview with Natalia and Matt. I, well, I, we've got an emerging consummate professional here. Two minutes to go, you're already winning the heat, almost got other surfs in combination. You decide you actually use your priority on Liv Stokes, came in, got your board, went back out for one more wave. Where are you training? At home, just like my home breaks, yeah. Well, that area, we know we have Honolulu in that area and we have, of course, in Waikiki, the, the Queen's Brigade, but you're showing your intentions and they're very, very clear. You could win this final. Are you feeling confident? Yeah, just want to have fun and catch some good waves. Well. Unfortunately for everyone else, you're getting the good ones and you're looking really good on it. Uh, chances are right. What lefts do you surf near town? Um, undisclosed. Okay. All right. I think I know the ones. We're going to go back to live action. We look forward to seeing you in the final. Congratulations. Do not let the beautiful smile and relaxed demeanor fool you. They are cutthroat, these competitors. This is chase leader up and out actually he threw me off nice little floater in the meantime we have everyone who caught a wave we got a bunch of scores to come in richie cravey about to lock in his best wave and the best wave of the heat the long glide in look at the speed just paddling in to Ian hangs heels, walks back. I like that little cross step cut, cut out. And Bucky Berry wants to get in the action too. As he stands on the nose, very comfortable. He's finding it on every wave. 
even though the wave not offering a lot of green face, tight footwork in a small space. So surfers, we have a bunch of waves to be scored. I'll give you the information as soon as they come in. Bucky Berry staying busy again. Ooh. Well, so much beautiful variety being fit into these tiny waves. And that's okay because the judges have adjusted their scale for the size of the waves. Still waiting on a bunch of scores to come in. Richie has a, a nice... Secondary wave, but Richie, your second wave, a 7.5. Blue gets a 7.5, and we can see the surfer stroking. So right now, <clears throat> there's a bigger wave approaching. Blue, Richie Cravey, who has priority and is in the lead. Wow. We haven't seen a wave of this size in a little while. So what a blessing for him to be out the back with priority, standing tall, tight 10, all the oh. way across the section. Oh, and pokes no. the nose but holds his board, saving face. Well, I appreciate it, even though it was it went incomplete. Wow, to, to pick the set wave and then... Yeah. Stand tall across the entire length yep. of it. Okay, there was it's going to go was a, incomplete. There was a film many years ago. I think it was Chris Klopp's film, Classical Gas. Joel Tudor at Boca Barranca. And he was hanging 10 like that, soul arching. Very similar uh, posture. And that was way back then in the mid-90s. Well, who wouldn't want to bite Joel Tudor style? Bucky, you're in second at the moment. Your first wave was a 4.6. Your next scoring wave, a 3.85, and now I'm waiting on your last wave. There we go. It's a 3.7, so not in your score line. Everything is about your first two waves. Richie's last wave, unfortunately, a 2.2 because it went incomplete. Blue in the lead, white in second. Green, utilizing his priority in third place, needs a 4.46. I like that subtle drop knee and not flat-footed, standing on the balls of his feet, on his toes. And this is the regional qualifying event. This is the QS1000, the first of two events, vying the winner going on to the World Longboard Tour. And this is Richie's 10, the replay. And that was a 7.5. We're watching in live action, in a replay right now. So multiple nose rides for Richie. And he is definitely enjoying these waves. And live action, we have our surfer Bucky hanging 10 in the pocket. Whoa, levitation. Can he ride out? He, oh, my gosh. Yeah, and he does. Of course he does. Full flare. He has been on point the whole day, every heat. Whoa. Even when the wave is only presenting a short bit of green face he is finding yep. his step way step off on the sand step off on the sand i'm clapping oh he's going for the 10 he's calling it oh, and i'm not denying it did he? <laughs> we've seen every single wave of this whole competition we've well, seen some high eights nines in the shortboard realm seen some 925 today i don't want to jump the gun we're going to watch the replay beautiful nose riding there from the surfer in white what i didn't know is if he had priority so so he regardless. Go. So we tuned into this little adjustment. So quick feet up on the five. Now this is where it gets technical. It levitates here 
and his hips go back, and then he drops in a second. And just when I thought he's slipping, he goes up again, fully engaged with the tail. Now he stays with it in the middle of the board, trimming. Just when we think he's done, he gets off a little foam climb, steps forward again, stabbing the section, and another little messy foam climb. If anything, he could have pulled off after that nose ride and left a great impression, but great nose riding nonetheless. And unfortunately for Chase Leader, uh, he's going to have some work to do after that last score drops for Bucky. And it's a good one. Well, one judge goes perfect. Well, we One judge goes nine. The first, at least one judge. A 9.5. Red. I mean, white. A 9.5 to go with your 4.6. White, you have gone into the lead or retained your lead. Richie, you now need a 6.61 to take the lead. Chase, you're looking for a 7.01 in third. Ian, you need an 8.5 with the score to drop. 11 minutes remaining. Well, fun for the viewers, fun for us, fun for the judges. One judge does lock in the perfect score, but it's an average of the panel of judges, and it comes out at a 9.5 for Bucky Berry. We were vibing on that, definitely. He was vibing on it. Hands up in exaltation. So what? A 9.5. You're in the lead. 10 minutes, 30 remaining. He just wanted to hear that score again. <laughs> so he and... Or maybe Rick, he's calling for another half a point. Um, <laughs> well, blue has priority. Bucky, not done. So he's just deciding, why not keep surfing? He's identifying something and um, feeling comfortable. Why not keep surfing? Hangs heels and holds it for a bit. Nice walk back. Good spin around. And again, the, he's going from his walk-up cheater fives into his quick tens so quickly. And again, having a good time showcasing the abilities that he has. Walking the board up and back. We've got just under 10 minutes left. So this wave will better his situation. A straight six, Bucky. So under priority, he gets that fractional-sized wave and pulls out a six with excellent surfing. Way out in the lead now. Richie in second with priority. Chase leader needing a 7.01. And Ian needing an 8.5. Tough stuff because... Richie with the 7-5 and a 5 with priority. No doubt going to utilize that priority yeah. wisely at this point. A seasoned competitor. And no doubt, you know, find a wave that's going to get him much more than a 5. And this is crucial as well because finishing off in this heat, you will end up with 7th place as 4th and you'll end up as 5th place with 3rd. And this goes Chase... So, so, yeah, a big deal to get For into sure. the final. Considering there's only two qualifying events. And big this is time. Chase off to an early hang 10 and finishes cleanly. So a nice combo there. Beautiful 10, stepping back into a sweet off the top. So Chase, looking good. Yeah, there's no, there's no throwaway events. You know, it's just both are going to yeah. count. And if you make the final here and then win gets or whatever, you're still yeah. getting first, second, third, or fourth. And how you do on that second stop. So, we could really just say, like, Ian Gotron in fourth. Technically, you're wa walking around in fourth place with seventh. So you've got to think about the points, guys. If you're coming in fourth and third, it's crucial. Not just prize money, but for points to get on that world tour. That's a keeper still. A fifth place finish is a keeper result. Because we have four-man semis, that's very odd. That's equivalent to a quarterfinal finish. So although you've reached the semis... Look at you, Waxhead just upping the ante, adding a little twist of pressure, mm. lighting the fire. Here he goes, the man currently in seventh place on the LQS ratings, looking to get up into fifth or perhaps go into the final. He could walk away with a, a win. Seven minutes, 30 remaining. Well, I'm going to have to play compassionate devil's advocate. They are doing their best. Mm. They, are, they are no doubt trying to find the best wave and get attain yeah. the best score that they are yeah <laughs> i'm sure they are 
it's no yeah there's no lack of wanting or trying or training and focus just the longboarders in particular are subtly competitive and i know the supporters the shapers all these people are clued into those results and there is a lot of background there's not a lot of prize money in surfing these days and there's some support so whatever sponsors these people have they want to be seen on that world stage and it is important to make there's a lot of investment from these surfers like a lot of them have signature models or you know they're you know they work in the industry and they're working class professional surfers so it's really important to do well and green a nice little combo there on the right the first right in a while 510 combo soul arch stepping back and bucky the same almost identical on the left we'll catch up with that in the replay So Chase now needing a 5.76, currently in third. Well, thank you to Andy McKay, Bob Volgan, Volan, and all of the Surfing for Hope Foundation peeps. We got your note, and we look forward to it. Thank you very much for the whole week, and we are ripping along with you guys here at the Surfing for Hope Longboard Classic. The shadow getting longer. Chase finishing up in the sun. Oh, a nice soul arch on the replay there for Ian Gutron. On that right, as you said, he and Bucky splitting that peak. Just over five minutes left. Blue with priority. Richie being patient, holding his priority, knowing he's in a commanding position in second and priority. Knows he's aware of his five. And since he already found that last set wave, he's like, yeah. I'm going to sit and be a professional. Use my priority. And here we go. Split the peak. We're going to go with both. Blue. Blue. Beak, Boogie, and Green snapping that back on a quick nose ride. And Richie driving through the section. Whoa, incredible nose riding there from Richie. Wow, in technical, stylish nose riding from Richie, Cravey, and Blue. What is there a name for the hands up cutback? That kind of when they throw the hands up. Anyway, uh, it's a functional well, move. Well, okay, technically it's the D waiting cutback. But yes, it's okay. a, I mean, it it's is Phil stylish. Edwards. It's Phil, it's Edwards. Phil Edwards. There we go. So for those of you watching, please type in Phil Edwards and Surfing you into YouTube or Encyclopedia of Surfing. Check out Matt, Matt Walsh. Just subscribe to EOS. It's just a $3 a month. It's the best $3 you ever spend. Or so, pick up the book. You should have been here yesterday. Right? The yep. Phil Edwards book. Yeah, there you go. Oh, beautiful, stylish surfing from Gotron. And Which is a, is a classic journal of surfing oh, so, into Hobie Cat. Beautiful, soul arch 10, and he holds this through the section, comes from behind. It's equivalent to getting barreled, hanging on the nose through the whitewash, levitating. Richie, Cravey, just when you think, like Bucky, yeah. this wave may actually be Well, it was right. It, yeah. Oh, yes. It's going to be a 10-point ride. The first of the whole event. Richie <laughs> Cravey, you get a 10-point ride. The perfect score that hang 10 was half a point better than Bucky's. Well done. That is the criteria. Style, flow, and grace. Critical nose riding. Technical setup. And you finished with your own trademark style. Congratulations. Richie Cravey out in the lead. Now, 8.76 chase leader to go in a second. Ian Gotron, you need a 15.5 heat total. You're in combo. Sorry, a combination situation yeah. for Green. <laughs> wow, Bucky checking his watch. You don't see that often. <laughs> the longboarders looking at their watch. There's just under three minutes. And what a treat to watch Richie Cravey behind. Like Switch yeah. for, for Gotron. Full switch wave here. So degree of difficulty, smaller wave. Gets the nose, readjustment. This... My head is blown after a 10-point ride. Gardo Sun has got a mid-range score switch. If that was his normal backside, it's a five-ish. Yeah. He just went switch. I don't know. Like It's a five. It still comes in at a five. So full switch. No, no, no. They're giving it. Oh, sorry. So a 4-2. It was, it was Bucky's last wave was a five. Yeah. 
So we're going to dissect this 10. So fading into this, Richie Cravey, two steps up, Nueva Esque, and here gets critical in the 10, knows he's on a good score, Soul Arches, and here holds it through the section, comes from behind, just when it gets critical, he gets really comfortable right about here, goes straight up, leveraging the fin and the rail, Soul Arching back, and that is the perfect nose ride. The judges agree in giving Richie Cravey the perfect 10-point ride. Beautiful. Three judges, a 10. Yeah. Wow. 10 point. They don't come in every event. They sometimes don't ever come in a and surfer's could, career. Could Bucky get pipped with a 9.5 by Chase Leader needing an 8.76? He's got his own answer back. Surfing with style and flow all event. Here he goes. Surfing red. A bigger wave too. He's looking. Here he goes from behind the section. Red up and riding. He's on the nose. Gets the 10. Holding it in a soul arch as well. Knows he needs a score. Beautiful opening nose ride. Redirects. Comes high. Up on the nose again. So, wow. So Chase the leader. The, the boy's locked in. Wow. Oh. Little palm to the head. Wow. Extra steve. And rail. Using the length of the board. Can he finish cleanly? And he kicks out. Well done. Chase leader. 45 seconds remaining. Bucky with his answer back. What a heat we have. We're going to let the judges digest that. He needed to go excellent, and that was excellent surfing. We'll see just how far he went into the scoreboard. Well, and we were thinking low tide wreaking havoc. Well, I guess not because you got a 10, a 9, 5, and now we'll see where this wave goes for Chase. Needing an 8, 7, 6. We thought conditions might deteriorate, but they've allowed some perfect river mouth left-handers here at Morrow Bay. Richie out in the lead. Bucky in second with scores still to drop. 10 seconds left. Well, I'll count this one out as we watch the replay. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. What a finish. Wow, Chase Leader got the opportunity to that, continue going yeah. five. It wasn't and as it, steep a wave as... That last section, though, and then he gets this nice carve, which is just showing the full criteria as well, not just the nose riding element. I mean, there was sick surfing, and he kicks out. Like, he actually just didn't go into a grub. Oh, my he, gosh, uh, ladies uh, and gentlemen. 9.6! Nine nine Chase, you've made it. You're in second place. We still have a score to drop for Bucky. I don't think it's enough. So, Bucky... Going to third with a 9.5. Chase leader, a 9.6 to go with a 6.75. Red into second. Blue taking the win. Three excellent scores. That was one of the best heats ever at a longboard QS. Wow. And the surfing for hope. We're going to go to a break. We're going to come back and reconvene with heat number two. I feel sorry for that next heat to come in after that. Let's go. Since 2012, Surfing for Hope has been helping families navigate through cancer using the healing benefits of surfing and the ocean. Each year, we host a number of surfing-related community events to shine a spotlight on the fight against cancer. Visit surfingforhope.org to sign up for one of our free beginner surf camps. And if you'd like to help out, you can donate on the site too. Well, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we are back for the Surfing for Hope wow. Longboard Classic. We just had the most riveting finish to that last semifinal, and where are we? It looks like little Uluwatu. Um, in this heat, in the red, Jack von Wagner in the blue, Dakota Faircloth, the white, Dorian Quesada Torres, and in the green, Noah Shimabakuro. Um, we there just we witnessed, and here are our two finalists walking up. Richie Cravey, who gets the perfect 10. Chase Leader gets a 9.65 in the dying seconds on his last wave, just taking out Bucky Berry, who also had a 9.5 and a 7. I mean, yeah. 
incredible surfing from everyone. Even Ian Gotron in that heat, just surfing with style and flow. And and just <laughs> ba Bucky and Ian, well, thank you. come and get your checks. <laughs> that was insane. Thank so much entertainment for us, the beach, the viewers at home. Wow. Waxhead losing it in the booth. <laughs> and understandably high stakes and really exciting. I think I need to take a breather. I need a lozenger. Well, I'm hoping they've got energy left for their final. <laughs> well, it's actually nice to see the ocean kind of quiet for a minute. We have to regroup after that incredibly exciting 25-minute heat between the last four surfers. Richie Cravey into the final chase leader. Digging deep and priority worked in his favor. Off a little wide and that set pops up right in front of him. Bucky Berry who put on a show of shows. Pipped at the post just fractionally. Well, so semi-final number one in the books. Two surfers into the final. Part of their goal is achieved to get that far, and now we'll wait for these four surfers to determine who's in the next the next two surfers in the final. No priority in the beginning. White, deep, Dorian, Quesada, Torres. Nice cheater five across the middle. Cheater five still standing tall, carrying a ton of board speed and trimming. That wave runs off. I ran into run amuck who is flying all the drones, his photography company. He had to take a break. Lots of drone work this whole event. Off to the north, Jack Von Wagner. Red on red. Nice drop knee, takeoff, setup turn. Identifying that these waves further down the beach really opening up. Throws it up for a nice finishing floaty. Well, that one is definitely worth uh, going back and watching on the YouTube down the road after the event concludes. Semi-final number one, Surfing for Hope Longboard Classic. A treasure. Petting the dog, Cheater 5. A little behind the section there for Dakota. Jack, your last wave, a 575. Red, your last wave, a 575. Dakota, your first wave, a 2.75. Dorian, your first wave, a 4.0. Priority with Noah since he hasn't had a wave yet. Second priority with White. Third with Red. Well, Waxy having to contain himself in the booth. He needed to step out and breathe. He was about to have a cardiac arrest with that finish of the last heat. Interesting to see Dakota moving up and away. That is one of the areas where those sneaky wide ones come. Man, I know we always interview the Heat winner going into the final, but that would be fun just to have them all, 
all up in there because so much was going on in that heat. Dorian getting a small backup. Priority green, then second priority red. This is uh, not going to turn into anything. That that wave crashing on the shore. All right, we are ready to hear all about that heat with Richie Cravey and Matt Chinowski. Richie, you were unstoppable in that heat, but you had to come from behind. A rare occurrence in a QS where we had a 9.5 from Bucky. He was well out the front. You knew you needed something big. You got a 10-point ride. What was going through your mind in the setup for that? Yeah, uh, normally you can't hear much out there. But for some reason on that wave, like halfway through, you could hear the crowd from the beach and it was like, oh great, there goes Bucky. Um, so yeah, it was a little nerve wracking, but uh, trying to just employ the stuff that I learned this year, uh, just be patient. And there, you know, have been timing sets and yeah, I got lucky. There's a diamond that came through and was there to ride it. So timing sets out here on the beach break proving crucial. You knew there was one of those sets coming. We're on a deficit tide, a really low tide. It's turned out to look like a left-hand river mouth. How nice is this area for waves in Morro Bay in general? Oh, my gosh. Uh, honestly, this is my favorite type of wave. Uh, down back home, this is what I search for. There's a little sandbar that I... Uh, spend a lot of time at and it's honestly better than the reef next to it and when it's doing its thing and so those steep grinding waves are just perfect for getting on the nose that's what I live for that's super fun incredible performance and then towards the end Chase Leader going from third into second with a near 10 himself what did that look like from behind all that was going through my head was like dude he got another one like we surfed the heat prior together in the quarterfinal and he got the bomb that swung wide and I just watched him like linking section after section down the beach and I was like timing and like, yeah, man, he's like 30 seconds later, he's still on the nose. And anyway, uh, great wave, stoked for him. Um, he's definitely got some, uh, some energy about him. At the end of the heat, he's one to watch. You don't really want him getting waves like that. So yeah. anyway, good job to Chase and Bucky and Ian. That was quite a heat. Well, we'll see you in the final very soon. We're gonna go back to live action, go rest up. Right on. Well, thank you for the show, Richie. That was great to walk out for a second and give Bucky a big high five. Oh, we are. Yes. Oh, we're going to interview with Bucky. Why not? That was too good not to. So, uh, commiserations. Clutch last minute there with Chase one minute to go using his priority. That 9.5, you almost had it sealed, but then Richie and Chase coming from behind. You still got paid, but how's it feel to come in third oh it's a it's a little heartbreaking when you're through the whole heat you're like all right i got a nine five i just need a little backup got a six and i was like I, I feel like i needed a little more and it didn't quite happen it was pretty lowly not a bunch of sets and then yeah i've seen chase paddling into that one and i was like oh he's probably too deep but if he's not that thing is gonna go and it went <laughs> and it gave him an extra section on the end so you surf so well at nine five uh, just as you're on that nose, you step back, and I thought you were going to dig, and you actually went to the nose again, which was that wow factor the judge is appreciating. Give the viewers at home a little insight into what you were riding. So, yeah, I got my Hobie Uncle Buck 2 99. It's got a nice big wide nose, Re really gets that good lift, but also, too, with the way the tail lift is and everything, it kind of 
you can be hanging 10 when you need to go fast, when you need to go slow, and you don't really have to do much about it. The board will kind of do that for you, which allows you to stay focused on what you need to do to perform. So, yeah, Uncle Buck 2. There you go. If you want 9.5s, go get an Uncle Buck 2. We'll see you next event. Yeah, thank you, sir. Live <coughs> action. Well done, Bucky. I'm glad we got that interview. Oh, look at this. Again, we've ratcheted things up out of the shadow into the sun. Our surfer in red, Jack Von Wagner, a series of tight fives. And this wave continuing on for him. Wow, so Jack gonna back up his 575 healthily with that wave. <clears throat> priority with one, I mean, priority with white. Dorian with first priority. Dakota with second, Nova with third. Yeah, a lot of emotions from that previous heat. And then this one, a bit of a journeyman heat so far. Very interesting to hear. A 7-2-5 for Jack Van Wagner out in the lead. 7-2-5 to go with a 5-7-5. Wide in second with a 4 and a 2.5. Currently with priority. And here he goes. The Costa Rican up and riding. Well, you can see how far they're riding the wave where Jack's paddling oh. out. It's hundreds of yards or a few hundred yards, 200 at least, from the takeoff. That wave kind of goes short on Dorian. But at the same time, I'd love it when they don't persevere with what's an imminent closeout. They just finish on their own terms. Yeah, finish like, on your own terms. Especially Why if you're locked in on the nose, you just straighten out. And it's like like Richie almost on the 10-point ride. It was just a straighten out at the end. And it's like, well, that's it. That's what I wanted. Well, I was, again, reflecting on the interview from earlier yesterday him getting that interference at the U.S. Open and kind of scratching his head going, what is going on? I can't get past a five no matter what mm. I do. Well, he's definitely tuned in or locked in to something in his surfing and what he's showing and what's mm. translating to the judges because he's gone through all these heats with high eights and then a ten. So he, he's broken that mold. Yeah, it's the connection with the ocean too. You know, he's dedicated to his craft. He knows what he needs to do with the scores now. He's taken a lot of time to sit back and observe last year and, and watch a lot of those heat recaps, as he said. But it's that connection with the ocean. We have that deficit, and he, he timed the waves. He knew that wave was going to come for him. And, you know, there was no luck involved with that 10. He, he just knew he needed that set, and he put himself in the position to do that and give yourself half a chance. Eliminate the variables that are so common in a 25-minute 20, heat. Well, and it worked out for him so well. Yeah, sitting patiently with priority, not, you know, rolling the yeah. dice on and scrambling desperately for little waves on the inside. He just sat and waited. Well, and I think, you know, from my perspective, watching him from other events and then that Pismo event where he was surfing beautifully and mm. technically, but it was busy. Yeah. There was yeah, a was. lot of movement, although what he was doing was functional and perfect for the waves he was getting those low scores here now he's just setting up Solid, and going yeah. with the nose rise yeah he was hot dogging back then and it was kind of yeah, yeah. it was f great to watch but the scores weren't translating yeah. a four point uh two five for your last wave dorian still in second and this is our surfing blue dakota faircloth down the inside section holding that nose ride all the way through gets a little critical for a moment and stepping back into that turn, this one really shrinking, milking this one with the doggy paddle. The judge is always saying, if you need to do that, it's probably not worth committing to. But he finishes strong, way down the beach. It's the equivalent to a, a pump or a foam climb. We know when you use yeah, that. Yeah, the doggy paddle, like the Huntington hop. Yeah, 100%. I mean, you've got nine foot six of foam and fiberglass. If you have to do that, chances are you're probably not on a wave that's going to it's not worth <laughs> persevering with, but um, we'll soon see. So Dor uh, Jack out in the lead with a 7.25 and a 5.75. White in the lead with a, four two a second with a 4 and a 4.25. Dakota, your last wave was not enough. A four-point ride for Blue. You're looking for a 4.25. And our surfer Noah in green 
you're looking for a 5.55. So st <clears throat> still really tight margins, and we saw the in that last heat, Chase getting the wave right up at the end, right? Yeah. 9.65 with 10 seconds to go, and he gets it. Yeah, that was clutch. And this event, I'm seeing a very relaxed Chase leader, too. In some of the events during the year, the World Tour, he went into panic mode and, and a little bit frantic towards the end of some heats. He is a very experienced competitor, but I feel like he's... He's done some training in the off-season in the last few months, and he's come back refreshed because he's looking very solid, and he's really understanding what's required to get those excellent scores. Clearly, getting the second highest wave score of the short and longboard event. And that's the training we're talking about, not the paddling out and surfing yeah. every day because you're not surfing mm -hmm. heats. You're not getting judged, but it's watching video Mind training, There's that replay Calm, of, calming yourself down training. So the last 30 seconds, he got this. And have that reservation to line this next section up on the replay there. And beautiful arching 10. And then he gave it more in the end. And it just kept going. Solid, completed, and he got the score as a result. So Dakota staying very busy in this heat. Seven minutes, 15 remaining. And this is the replay of Dakota's last wave. A right, a rare right. On the nose, about knee high that wave, but he com gets a completion. Very nimble on his feet, Dakota. Delicate footwork and showing variety. A 3.5, your last wave, Blue. A 3.5, good surfing, just a small wave. And that was Noah before pulling the trigger and... Red using his priority. And that one just falling off the top, running fast down the point. Well, beach break, I should say, but down the river mouth wave, it's this what it's looking like. It's looking like a, a river mouth point break right now. Priority change. Blue priority. White second priority. Red still in the lead. Blue. White in second. Blue needing a 4-2-5. Green needing a 5-5. Five, five. Green cruising on the inside. He's got a runner. Gets on the nose. Wow, critical nose ride there. So Noah, beautiful flow there. Just that de-weighting of the hands. Coming from behind the section, relaxed body language, technical surfing there in a, on a pocket left on the inside. It's a green making a charge. Five minutes remaining. And that's blue up and riding as well. He's answered back way deep in the pocket. He's surfing these waves, so much poison delicacy. It's just so small on this low tide. Very difficult to wait for one of those sets. The surfer's dueling it out, as Bucky said in that last time. 9.5 in that last heat and unable to get a, a considerable backup. And White pulling the trigger on this one. Approaching dead low tide. It's on his backside. Nice 10 there. And this wave, unfortunately, closing out as well. So, Green probably getting the better of that exchange. A 4.85 for Green. Your last wave, a 4.85. You're in fourth. You still need a 3.9. White, you are down in third. You need a 4.51. Blue, your last wave is a 4.75. We're going to replay White's wave now. So, on the backside, he gets up. So, close five. And looking for more. And that one running away. So red in the lead. Blue in second. White looking for a 4.51. That last one was not enough. And green looking for a 3.9. Three minutes, 50 remaining. These guys sitting way up the point right now. Well, up the beach break. I keep calling it a point because it's predominant left. There are waves. 
that are running ahead of these guys, but they're odd right too, so they're expansive in the lineup. Refueling up here in the commentary booth, we have jeweled out 121 heats. Is that what we did? You did yes. the math? 122 this one. So far? Yeah. We still have... Two more. Two more to go. So 124 will be the tally. Yesterday we found ourselves... We didn't let ourselves yeah. slack off, but we were feeling a little run down, a little low mm. energy. And I think with the time in between the heats and the delays and all of that... Ended up being uh, 56 hours at the contest site. Mm, look at you. Breaking mm. down your hourly wage. <laughs> Mine, yeah. <laughs> Don't do that. It's a flat pay. It's a flat rate. It is a flat rate. And it could be more if there weren't four, four people in this. Two minutes to go. White needing a 4.51. Green needing a 3.9. Red in the lead. Blue in second. White third. And priority is in that order. <laughs> well, I'm just looking at the the first final, the women's final. They're not even paddling out. They can just walk out yep. at the moment. It's The tide is so low and scooped out. They can just walk and stand there next to the, the heat that's in the water right now in the green. Noah, Noah. needing a 3.9. He does shuffle from five. A quick Cheater 10, or that's not a cheater 10, but tight 10. Well, fortunately for him, this way, following the sandbar, giving him more and more opportunity to squeak out the 3.9 with a minute and a half. And some cheers there. Some people liking that score. One minute, 15 remaining. Well, they were liking that ride. If, they, if he gets the score, they're going to be loving it. We could have another shuffle. Ooh, Dakota protecting as he needs to in second position with just a minute left. Long extended cheater up into 10. That, that wave not as long, but he did some good work. One minute remaining. Well, it's looking like Noah's score is going to do it for him, ladies and gentlemen, with under one minute, a 5.15. Noah goes into second. Dakota in third with 40 seconds left. Dorian Dor needing a 5.75, 40 seconds remaining. And Dakota needing a 5-2-5. So Noah in the basement, the whole heat finally gets the wave he was looking for. Yeah. That's all it takes, right? You must hold true to yourself, have the belief, and he executed at the end mm. of the heat. And 20 seconds. He's walking up the beach. He must be smiling to himself. Our heat winner is going to get the last wave. And I'm going to count it out. Five, four, three, two, one. Jack Von Wagner, a victory lap to the shore. We don't even need to talk about it. What is the storyline is that, well, he made the final. And Noah Shimabakuro. He has snuck through every single heat comfortably in second. That time he had to work for it. Five, one, five. We're going to go to a break and catch up with the women's QS 1000 final. Since 2012, Surfing for Hope has been helping families navigate through cancer using the healing benefits of surfing and the ocean. Each year, we host a number of surfing-related community events to shine a spotlight on the fight against cancer. Visit surfingforhope.org to sign up for one of our free beginner surf camps. And if you'd like to help out, you can donate on the site too.
Life on Coast in Morrow Bay. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen out there. We are straight into the first final, the women's final here at the Surfing for Hope Longboard Classic, the LQS, the Longboard Qualifying Series, event number one of two in the U.S. Our four ladies right now featured in this final, India Hoffman, Chloe Coleman in the blue, India in the red, Chloe in the blue, Natalia Wunderlich in the white, and Star de Elia in the green, a 30-minute final, so they get five more minutes to sit back, relax, utilize their priority wisely. So again, like you said, it's all about top scores. It's not about finding more twos and ones, yeah. and, so to speak. It's okay when you begin with threes, but eyeing the potential of a wave to go to a higher score. Yep. And this is... Chloe Coleman here, nice fade to take off, great tempo, delicate footwork, and a nice, nice body language, good timing, looking very poised to start off this, this final. So a 4.5 for Star Green, your opening wave. 4.5 and Indy a 3.25 for you, your opening, your opening wave, and Chloe a 3.8. Green in the lead, blue in second, red in third. This is a great final, so evenly matched. We've seen the one goofy footer with Natalia just, I mean, really just showing so much dominance over her competitors, but no luck involved. A real professional approach so far to get her here and a lot of strategy, and here she goes again. Just looking like she's having a free surf. Beautiful composure. A nice 5 and 10. She'll be fired up after watching Richie get that 10-point ride. I think all four of them will be fired up. And, and we know that uh, Indy will not be putting her hands over her head. We know that. Because the mom. mom coached her out of that. <laughs> that was funny. And I, I was Just a little note to Dakota and Dorian to get their checks. You will get paid for making the semifinals. Mm -hmm. Well, all scores in for the first four Widden Waves. Indy with a 3.25. Chloe, a 3.8. Natalia, a 4.25. And Star, a 4.5. Priority is red, green, and then blue. So, yeah, with this tide really bottoming out, although we thought it might affect it, <laughs> we saw that first semifinal where we had a 10 and a 9.5 and a 9.6. So the waves following this razor-sharp sandbar, regardless of the size. So the potential is out there. We saw that last heat with a 7.75 and some mid-range sixes. Here we go. Indy using her priority in the red on her backhand. Nice cross-stepping check down, hands to the side, graceful knock need. A sequence of cheater fives and finishes with a little floater in the foam. Well, when there's only two events to qualify for the World Championship Tour for your region, you, you've already done the a lot of the hard work in making the first final. Then it's just about achieving the best position in that. We are going to throw it down right now to Jock von Wagner. Congratulations. Making it into that final with Matt. We'll keep it pretty short. You're going to get ready for that final. Another very professional approach to that star-studded semi two. What was it like after hearing those scores in the first semi and going out after that? Yeah, I mean... The boys killed it in the first tee. I was like, whoa, we have to follow that up. But, um, yeah, I mean, I don't think we got quite as good waves in our heat, but made the most of it. It's definitely pretty tricky with how small it is. Yeah. So we're approaching that low tide. Uh, obviously, you know what it takes to get the heat win. You've got some strong competition. Any secret advice you want to give everyone or your what your game plan is moving into the final? Yeah, I think everybody in the final should try and go right. The rights are really good. Yeah, well, there you go. That's great coaching advice to try and get you in number one. <laughs> uh, we'll see you in the final very soon. Thank you. <laughs>
Okay, great job there for Jack. Moving into the final, along with Noah from that last heat. Scores locked in for Indy's second wave, a 3.7. So she goes up into first based on those two rides, a 3.25 and a 3.7. Natalia has a 4.25, Star with a 4.5, Chloe with her opener of a 3.8. If someone misplaced an iPhone, I am holding it up here in the commentary booth, the big blue mid-state container. So if... If a friend or someone knows of someone, I was handed a misplaced iPhone. And if so, you can go find contest director or uh, Andy McKay and describe that phone. And he will walk up and get it for you. What color the case might be if you're missing your phone. Please find Andy McKay. Tell him what color the case is, and then we can, you can retrieve it. So Indy Hoffman up and riding. Nice poise, gets the 5 and 10, and that one's straightening out with a light onshore breeze starting in this heat. And the beautiful contrast there from the shadow of the Morrow Rock and the birds feeding on the low tide shoreline. We are just about to approach that, well, no, actually another 40, unbelievably, another 40 minutes of low tide still to come. The low tide will be peaking, if that's even the right way to describe it. It will be at its lowest point during the men's final. Yeah. And, as I was saying, it's n somehow hasn't affected things, and who knows, but each heat is different right now. Scores being locked in. Natalia, a 4-2-5 in her last wave, a 5. So as they climb the scale, growing their score line, wave better, next wave better. Indy got another wave and scored the same, a 3.7. So the goal is to then ratchet it up from a 3.7 for Indy into the next range. Chloe starts with a 3.8. Here we go. Oh, sunny and glorious. So a short wave, not a lot of opportunity to get, go for much of a sequence mm. of cheater 5 to 10. Yeah, again, so <clears throat> we got handed in a misplaced iPhone from along the pathway, um, just down from the competitor's area. So that was nice that someone handed it in. If this might be you or a friend, you can go and find Andy McKay at the Surfing for Hope Foundation Merchandise Zone and describe what the color of the case is. We would love to get it back to the rightful owner. That was Star's second wave there out with a... Well, Natalie out in the lead with their 5 and a 4.25. Scratching. No glide there for Natalia. And we have some expansive surfing there from... Well, they're sitting wide in the lineup. So out in the lead is White. Red looking for a 5.55. Green looking for a 4.76. Blue looking for a 5.45. Red, your last wave was a 3.7. To go with your other 3.7, you're in second. Well, it's nice that the wind backed off as much as it did. Can you imagine if we had that strong, tight wind, that offshore wind we had yeah. earlier in the day with, well, not the chill, but for the surfers, 
with even smaller faces to the waves, less room to, you know, pick the right line. So nature working out for us well since the beginning of this event. And even when the contest was off, nature was still worth working in perfect harmony mm -hmm. with us. You know, one of the highlights of this event has actually just been that criteria being reiterated by this next generation. Star, Chloe, Indy, Natalia, all four of them showing that criteria, that style, flow, and grace, critical nose rides, using the full length of the board, showcasing those elements that have just seen the world to elevate to a stage that's it's actually gained respect across the different genres of surfing, mutual respect, where it always mm -hmm. was looked at and it, it's been referred to as, you know, the, the ugly step cousin. And it's now, by its own accord, equally respected. And up and riding is Green Star. And I feel like I am equipped to say that having been involved with professional longboarding for the better part of 15 years. And it's awesome to see it here. And was that the case here in the U.S.? Because as you described that, I never saw or felt that here. You're, you're literally in the most accommodating place for oh, okay, I guess. alternative surfboards. Like that, you, southern, the, that, that whole area where we are, Oceanside had, South. I mean, you had Colin McPhillips. You had the Stewart team down there with the performance orientated. Then you had the Takayama guys. Yep. The, these are the surfers that set the precedent for where we're at. You had Devin Howard down there. You had Joel Tudor. Yeah, had, we had Rob going out of the tour the into, jet. I'm going to ride fishes. Donovan and Frankenrider uh, yeah, not long we, after. We it. had everyone cruising. And, it, and we've got a great cast of characters. Then it became Ryan Birch. Now we got Derek yep. Disney and a yeah. bunch of other kids shaping their own boards and tripping out thanks but yeah i get that for sure so yeah i never felt it but i get it in australia it it was that yeah you know and just like the tall poppy syndrome it's full tall right? poppy syndrome i'm you just know? gonna give an update to these surfers chloe you're in fourth you need a 5.45 blue in fourth green needing a 4.76 red need a 5.55 white you're out in the lead with a five and a four two five a score still to drop for green, but it won't go into your top two. You know, here's a funny thing, and this is the uh, the the ugly stepchild. I was down in Victoria doing something. wasn't on a surf trip, but I had my boards, and Bells was pumping. And I went down from Melbourne for a day, and I get there, and guess what was happening? Not a mount, not a longboard event. A kayak, a goat oh. boat event at Whoa. Bells. What? What? Was that this just, early nineties? It just ruined me. Wild. No, it was um, or it was somewhere in the two thousands. Wow. Yeah, it was a trip. Anyway, I surfed the yeah, rock. It was hot. It was pumping, hot. But I was oh, like yeah. a goat boat event. It's hard enough to get it. Well, we got the longboard event there yeah. last year, and Rip Curl were accommodating to perhaps have the longboarding back next year, and. We'll see how that goes. And Surf City El Salvador is always very welcoming for surf events. And now, can they get a, a some some sandy point in Peru or what about Ragland? Yeah, it's been well. They had the world titles in two thousand and three. The longboard titles. Yeah, yeah. Bo Young clipped Joel Tudor back then. But yeah, I mean, obviously, all through Mexico's left hand points. Um, yeah, some of those some of those left points in in mainland Mex. It's been talked about. Uh, 15 minutes, 45 seconds remaining. It's all logistics and accommodation and yeah. where, how does it work. So we understand that. It obviously very Tomorrow set day. up. <laughs> yeah. Bells, Bells works well. Huntington works well. What about this, this left point? El Sunsal in El Salvador works well. Surf City down there. Um, yeah. yeah. So it's finding the right place. 15 and a half minutes left. And here goes... Currently in fourth place, Chloe Coleman. So, from Ooh. live perspective, so close to the shore, but the drone doing a nice job showing. Mm. Interesting. That wave ran ahead. She stepped back on the tail, which is the and slowest lost. part of the board. Lost the momentum. Yeah, and that's yeah. the tide really draining out, waves speeding up. So, Chloe thinking that one closed out, but it didn't. It just raced away. And here we have our surfer in red. Ooh. So she'll lose priority and go from second to fourth. Um, yeah, before this heat started, I was laughing, saying that the women don't even need to paddle. They can just walk yeah. out and stand next to their board. They could do jump up takeoffs and if, if they wanted. Real bottom of the tide coming soon. Uh, so third priority for red. 
Priority change. White first priority. Green second. Well, again, just a shout out. If anybody misplaced their iPhone, which is always tragic and it's a horrible feeling, please find Andy McKay or one of the staff at the Surfing for Hope merchandise area next to the competitors and by up here and uh, describe the color of the case, and we would love to give it back to you. So any one of the staff will direct you to Andy, and that is who handed it to me. And we would love to hand it back to the rightful owner. Here we go. Chloe Coleman. Oh, an uncharacteristic spill, but that wave had run out on her. There wasn't anything showing in the right that she'd taken off on. Priority is with our heat leader, Natalia in the white. Second priority was Star. Star only needs a 4.76 with 13 and a half minutes left. Coming up next, the final final, the men's final. To finish off the day, the event, the week that started Monday. Well, good, it's been described. No. And white up and riding. So this is Natalia on a nice open wave. Waited a long time for this one. And that one is finished cleanly on the shore. So white consolidating. Maybe her lead. We'll see if that one beats that 425. 12 minutes 45 remaining. Blue first, second priority. Red third. Green holding down that priority. First prio. Looking for a 476. Perhaps maybe more. We'll soon see. This is a replay of white. So quick feet. Nice timing there. See, she's in the pocket there. Quick feet, just utilizing the moments of the board that suited her. And I love that. Just finishing, stepping back, showing the judges she finished on her own terms. Be a mid-range score. Mm -hmm. So looking like a good score there for white, given the scale of the heat. Wow. Incredible. Yeah, definitely. 6.5 for white. Consolidating your lead. Indy in red. You now need a 7.8. Green, you need a 7. And blue, you need a 7.7. .7. 11 minutes 50 remaining. Yeah, I mean, that's as close. So it, it sounds like the owner has described their case. Thank you. We are happy to get it back to the right owner. I mean, with all the colors to choose from, yeah. they were close enough. White, here we go. Natalia down the beach, finding that far bar. This wave is going to run away from her. So, yeah, described as forest. I would call that Gumby yeah. Green. Remember the old yep. Gumby yeah, and Pokey? Cool. Yep. <laughs> so, 11 11 or remaining. To get more specific, Sage. Sa yeah, sage, sage Green. There you go. Yep. Look at that. That's all my painter's knowledge. Well, you're wearing a few shades of green, so you're I am. Well qualified. Actually, three shades. I've got it. Too. I know. <laughs> and the shoes. Every, four shades. I picked it out last night. You Ca know. Camo guy here. Yeah, camo. You can't even see him when he's out there doing the interviews. He blends in with the rock. And, and I've got this tie-dyed shirt motif, or tree motif on yep. the shirt. Just getting my hippie on right now. And at 10 minutes 30, so it's going to be interesting with excellent scores getting thrown down by the men. Will Indy, will Star or Chloe come out with their own excellent scores? It, they are out there. We know their waves are pumping. So here's Green knifing this one. That one's not going to be it. Well, and, and you're right. And I sort of spaced out on that. But in calling a final, because it's all about winning. Yeah. Normally, we're telling second or third and second place what they need. Indy in second needs a 7.8 to go into first because winner take all. Yeah. First is the top position. So it's great to finish runner up. But Red, you need a 7.8 to go into first because if you get first, you take away a thousand points and the top dollar. Going into the East Coast 
We had a little bit of a priority change there. So first priority is blue, second is white, third with green. I would say it's definitely tough to pick the right ones at the moment. The way the waves are coming in with this dead low tide, a little straighter than it was before. Blue with first priority, white with second. So blue definitely taking advantage of her priority situation. Down in the basement needs a 7.7. .7. That's right. So Chloe needs a 7.7 .7 to go to first. Star needs a 7 to go to first. So Star needing the least requirement to go up all the way into first. Indy needs the 7.8. So it's a two-wave tally, but those scores I read out are what get these surfers up into first place, and that's the ultimate goal, to get the, to get the 1,000 points. Eight minutes left, just over eight minutes. Coming up next, Richie Cravey, Chase Leader, Jack Von Wagner, and Noah Shimabakuro in the men's final. Well, it's nice, even though we're here in the shade of the rock, the Moro rock. The surfers out in the sunlight dancing on these small turquoise waves. Oh, Indy, Indy Hoffman. That wave shortens out on her. So Indy choosing a right. We've got the bottom of the tide. We knew this could have occurred and while we're watching Waiting for these ladies to build on their totals. Three of them stuck in the sevens. Go down and grab some merch from the Surfing for Hope merchandise tent there. Mm -hmm. And we're glad that the uh, phone found the back pocket of its owner. Nothing like losing your iPhone. Yeah. Terrible feeling. Or any phone. Or yeah. your wallet. Oh, that's the worst. The mad scramble of, of trying to geolocate everything you did in the last whatever time frame depending hour. on how old the person is their phone is their wallet now <laughs> you know with, with yeah. all the payment options so anyhow we've, we've done that and someone who well well N Natalia's going to be pretty stacked with her wallet if she can continue this lead 11.5 heat total so far now the winner of this will get 1000 points most importantly and that will go to their total and we have, in the end of May, the Steel Pier Classic, which will be held over on the East Coast, which will be the second event. And May 25th to 27th, the Coastal Edge Steel Pier Classic, that'll be the second event. Not 100% confirmed, but it is tentative at the moment, but it's earmarked for that point. So if these surfers want another chance to rectify themselves and try and get that win or build on their totals to give themselves the best chance to jump on that World Longboard Tour. One person will get, ex will use their points. There is usually a few wild cards and event wild cards throughout the year as well. So if you put your best foot forward, you're surfing stylish and putting together strong heat totals like we've seen all of these women today, you'll give yourself a really good chance of getting that opportunity to prove yourself at the World Tour. I mean, Liv Stokes is one of those surfers this year. She didn't progress through with an eye injury that she got during the week. But this is the final five minutes remaining. That was a fun story. You were just mentioning the wild cards. We saw young Sophie get the wild card, the 13-year-old local girl into this event. Yeah, that and was very And I think it was cool. Ariana, possibly, the 15-year-old yep. Morro Bay local, so we got to interview both of them afterwards. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes, the wild cards that get into the event are elevated, you know, really experienced competitive surfers and um, tough to draw in mm -hmm. heat. 
Just under five minutes, four and a half minutes, ladies. This final winding down. Natalia still in the lead. Chloe in second. Chloe, you need a 7.5 to go to first. Indy with priority in the red needs a 7.8 to go to first. Star in fourth needs a 7 to go to first. So we haven't seen a wave ridden of that scale yet in this heat. 6.5 being the highest. The waves challenging, shortening off that, that those running shoulders that we saw for a few heats, far and few between right now, yep. in this heat at least. Amazing how quickly things change. Well, thank you again to the Run Amuck photography crew. Just acing it the entire week yep. against all odds with the wind and the big swell. It's I'm surprised incredible. the drone never gets clapped by a wave. Dude, it's they so never good. You know, so good. They, they know the elevation to keep them at this, perfectly. This whole platform from Andy McKay yeah. and just the infrastructure here with mid-state containers, the judges has been have been on. Thank we have, we have no me. incentive to, to mention that other than how good it is. And here goes Indy. Nice poise, and that time completes it and riding out. So 2 minutes 55 remaining, just the hand still staying by the side, showing composure. And, yeah, what a great event. Surfing for Hope, Longboard Classic. It is an annual event, and they are stoked to be collaborating with the WSL. And I mean, it's such an accommodating community, accommodating setup with the parking lot, the yep. headland, the way that the the sandbars f so consistent. They can set the container up right here. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing works so well as it does down in Pismo on the south yeah. side of the pier, and we're set up on that new pier that's built. It used to be on the north side, um, and it's a great vantage and uh, beautiful hotels and you know, places to go and dine and hang out, lots to do there on the boardwalk up and down. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's why. Nestled in SoCal, this whole zone, 80 miles of majestic coastline and interior. And Here Star, we... up and riding. Wow, gets the nose. This one's opening up for her too. Quick feet, carving that one back. A few options for Star on this wave. Wow. And she gets a completion too. So one minute 30 remaining. Star putting her best foot forward. Excuse the very obvious pun. Chloe Coleman, you need a 7.5. Your last wave was a 2.5. You're in second. That's right. So all surfers trying to go into first. Blue needs a 7.5. Oh. Star's last wave was a 5. Star, you're looking for a 6.5 to take the lead. Indy, you need a 7.8 to go into first. All scores are just tallied yeah. to see who goes into first, what you need. We are down to one minute at the moment. Natalia with priority, the best situation possible with small waves in first with priority, close to the victory. Green in second, blue third, red fourth. Points are important. It will come down to perhaps a last flurry of waves. This is not just about prize money. It's about points. Vital points for the World Longboard Tour. A set coming. White holding that priority, paddling against Blue, is. who had second priority. Ooh. White and Blue. Here we go. go. Red on the corner. 30 seconds remaining. It's a set wave. Roll of the dice. Beautiful style. She grabs the rail. She wants to surf this one all the way through. She goes up for the ranch and doesn't make it. So, so unfortunately, opportunity gone begging there. 15 seconds. Ten seconds, nine seconds, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And White just wanted to paddle for the victory lap, raising possibly the hands over her head in victory. She must be stoked. Natalia Wonderlich comes into the beach, gliding into the sand. A victory here at the Slow Cal open in Morro Bay, the Surfing for Hope Longboard Classic. Well done to all four finalists.
What a win for Natalia Wunderlich going to the East Coast, ranked number one. If she wants to go. If she wants to, yeah, you're right. Yeah, what, and you what, never know. Well, who knows? It's wait, what was months. the guy that won the world title and didn't come from Australia? Harrison. Harrison Roach. So it happens, right? <clears throat> Counting in the men's final right now. Five, four, three, two, one. The men's final has begun. Great camera angle there of our winner, Natalia Wunderlich, coming in victorious in that final. I'm not... All right, welcome back, everybody. The viewers at home online, that is a picture of a very happy and being hugged and supported Natalia Wunderlich in the white singlet, the, the winner here at the SoCal Open in Morro Bay, Surfing for Hope, Longboard Classic, Smiles for Miles, and why not? A thousand points and yeah. some cash to warm your pocket. And some of the names she beat along the way, world champions and tour veterans. We had... Kayla Mickelson bowing out along with Jen Smith and Liv Stokes, another favorite who was knocked out in that semifinal. So a very hard-earned and well-deserved victory from Natalia. She has just put so much into her surfing and such a professional approach. It's very strategic, but just surfing, like winning it off her own surfing, but then strategy to boot. So, Richie, your first wave in red and casting our attention to this heat. 6.75 for red. Your opening wave of 6.75. Chase, blue, your first wave of 3.5. And Noah, your wave was also a 3.5. How much better do boards look without leashes? I just don't, yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I don't get it. It's, it's amazing, huh? Aesthetically much more pleasing. So some beautiful logs, beautiful longboards, great craftsmanship in all the, all their rides. And that's the future of our North America region. Longboard surfing there, that is. Well, everyone on the beach, a round of applause for that next gen coming up the beach. What a great performance all day from this, from these four surfers and, and everyone else who competed. You've got to be in it to win it and... I don't. I hope nobody feels like they lost today because there's a lot of learning. There's been a lot of information passed over and technical analysis from us. Hopefully, not too hard at times and constructive. <laughs> well, certainly constructive from you. Um, I was getting very passionate, as were the judges, as we should. Well, because, there's moments too, and you know, learning experience for different people yeah. along the way. We are set in this final. 30-minute final, 26 and a half minutes left. Richie opened with a 6.75. Chase gets a 3.5, and Noah gets a 3.5. Waiting for Jock Von Wagner to start his, or just to get into this heat. No rush, 30 minutes. It only takes two waves. They are all aware of that. All the scores I'm going to be shouting out as far as a requirement are a number to go into first. Since there's no advancing, it's winner take all. Well, it's funny to look at the potential chair up the beach. They started the chair up, but then it just didn't quite work out to go all the way. And that's fine. I was actually going to ask, ask Waxhead if it was a tradition for the chair up in the longboards, but... Soon we'll get an interview with Natalia Wunderlich and Matt Chinowski bringing it home 
in the first final. Priority is with white. Jack has white, or Jack has first priority. Richie, who's out in the lead with his opening wave of a 675, has second priority. And then blue and then green. Here we go. It looks like blue with the fade back, stand up, take off. Chase leader. Can't get around that one. There's just nowhere to go. But it looks like we are ready for our post-heat winner's interview. Take it away, Natalia. Incredible surfing, all event, showcasing your intentions. A very professional approach, but stylish as well. Well done, Natalia. What are you feeling, your first QS victory? Um, yeah, thank you so much. I'm feeling good, kind of just like blacking out, honestly. But like, I'm super stoked. I'm super happy. Everyone was ripping and good sports and yeah they're the best so it was a good heat and surfing in the hawaiian region this would be just a great victory for you it look fantastic on paper and certainly help your cause in case you don't qualify through that uh region but some prize money to boot i mean have you won a big event like this before um i think the closest i've been was the all Bulls qs i got third but yeah that's it so far <laughs> Well, it'll look fantastic. If you ever need that wild card, you've got an event victory, which is amazing that we can call upon. Who do you want to give a shout out and thanks to? Um, I want to thank my sponsors, Hurley, and thank you, Brett, for hooking me up with some thicker rubber. And I want to thank my parents and my brother and everyone on the beach supporting and Cormac and his family because they're the best. And yeah, thank wow. you. Well, you're in, yeah, you sound like you're nestling into Southern California culture just right and a victory here in Morrow Bay. Will you be back here, you think, for a holiday one day? Who knows? Um, I want to take a break from the cold, so probably be home for a while. All right, we're going to catch up with the men's and we'll jump into the presentation afterwards. Back to live action. Congratulations to Natalia Wonderlich on that victory. Cheers for her. Great interview with Matt. And I love the shout outs. And that's right, global team manager Brett Simpson for Hurley given her some thicker rubber, which she probably needed. <clears throat> it was looking good. That pink stripe on the left sleeve. Easy to uh, pick out. So after those first opening waves, Chase Leader backs his first wave up with a 2-6-5. So those are the two waves in Chase's scoreline right now. Jack being very patient, knowing 30 minutes, only need two waves. He has the pick of the lineup at the moment. Richie with a quick start and falling right into the space he was before in that last heat. With a 6-7-5. That little left, although on the screen, looks enticing. Not the wave that any of the surfers were sniffing at. Here we go. Noah wants to back up. He's out of there. Sometimes I look over on the screen and it looks because the monitor runs out of space. Yeah. In live, you can tell ahead of time if the wave's going to have a shoulder or not. Yeah. But since it's so, they are quite a, quite a far, quite a ways away from us, relying on our monitor in the booth yep. for the close up. So priority still with white, second priority with red. Eight minutes to low tide. <laughs> uh, that's, yeah, it'll be low tide the whole heat. And here we go live. Noah picks one up on the inside. This thing could run for him. Nice cheater five. Ooh. Oh, a little hand style there. Arching back and carrying the speed and the rail line in that micro of lip, microist of lips. Similar to that wave, he got to clinch that second spot going into the final. That clutch wave that he got in the very end. And live action. So this is Jack opening up his account. Nice quick feet adjustment this wave. Racing wave. But he's in the proper section here. Nice critical 5 and 10. Backside too. Mm. So showing some variety there and a degree of difficulty with that natural foot stance. Well, very patient approach to this heat mm. having priority for 10 minutes now or nine and a half minutes finally utilizing it identifying that wave and 
I can't wait, a 7.5. So the judges have appropriated the scale, knowing that a lot of waves being small, not opening up for the shoulder, a 7.5 for Jack Von Wagner on that, going a, you know, getting a little more than Richie Cravey got on his opening wave. So the patience paying off and the difficulty in where he chose to do those fractional carve downs because yeah. you can't commit rail going down sure. to the bottom and then back up. Yeah, very critical and such a good line after waiting for over 10 mi- or about 10 minutes for that wave. A well-deserved 7.5, especially as we're on that bottom of the tide. And here he is looking for another one down the line. This could be a great backup. And wide up again, under priority. On the nose, gets a 10. That time, hands by his side. To, well, and he pulls it. So it'll be a backup score. He doesn't have a second score, and he's already out in the lead. So, Noah, your last wave, a 3.3. You are in second. Richie, you're in third, looking for a 0.76 with just the one wave. And Chase, you're looking for a 4.01 in blue. Now that it's just changed, Jack, you back up a 2.95. Noah now looking for a 6.96. Richie, a 3.71. And Chase, a 6.96. Yes. And again, all those numbers we are touting out is what you need to go into first place. Blue with a scrappy paddle, carrying a lot of board speed down the line, wants to get across this. 5, 10, a little beak boogie there, a little barely head dip, but can't ride out mm. to the beach. All that rail stuck up in the in that wave. Yeah, that one not opening up, and <laughs> he's on that high from that last semi. And the best thing about a clutch result, what Chase had in that semi, is he'll remember that for many, many years. He'll draw upon that competitive experience, especially in a professional event. I mean, winning an amateur or getting a 10-point ride in an amateur event is special, but to do that in a professional event, he'll really take some inspiration. And I think... Moving forward, a lot of people, not that they don't take him seriously, but they'll be well aware of his capabilities under pressure. And here he goes. That's just heat IQ, and, and he traveled the world on that World Longboard Tour and surfing his brains out on shortboards too. So the surfing's there. Now it seems that the, the professional approach with the back, back end of the heat is working to his favor. And Jack... Talk about professional approach, well, finishing off on a strong second, what, third wave. Yeah, finding a bit of freedom over there wide from everyone as he's paddling out repeatedly after the last two waves. So all he wants to do, and he's just done it, bettering the 2.95, a 4.4. So he is just adding to the tally out in first. Now... Noah needing an 8.4 to go into first. Richie with priority needs a, f- a 5.16. And here we go. Richie Cravey, the fade back on his forehand, jumps to the nose. Will he get around the section of this wave? Of course he does, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, oh he pulls out. And he pulls out. It looked like that thing just ran off on him and closed out. So he took off needing a 5.16. Mm. I don't know if that will get there. But I love the redirect takeoff straight to the nose, 5 and 10. Yeah, technical. But yeah, just sort of maybe caught a, caught a bit of a rail there or perhaps desensitized and looking for something that, that may not be there. We'll have to wait and see. So, Jack, your last wave was a 4.4. You've extended your lead. Noah, you're looking for an 8.4 in second. Richie, you've just gone a second. Your last one, a 2.15. Noah now needing an 8.4 and Chase an 8.4 as well. Yeah, so even though we're calling out what scores they need to go to first, because that is the ultimate goal when you reach the final is to win it um, and get the 1,000 points. But still, second place gets 800, third place 650, and fourth place 600 points to take on into the next event and potentially carry into Mm -hmm. making it on, you know, what? how many surfers get on to the World Championship Tour from the North America region. One. Oh, just the f- one. So it's, wow. And there'll be regional qualifiers. There'll be uh, wild cards as well. One. You had mentioned that. Okay, that didn't resonate. Just one. So you have to be rated first on the men's and the women's from the North America region to make it into yeah. the global world tour. And there'll be season wild cards as well. So, but that's, yeah, it's the, the one. And Noah, Wow. That one's shutting down, but a bigger wave and 
getting up onto the nose nice and early on that wave. So a surfer in green on his fourth wave. So it is literally winner take all. Yep. <laughs> High stakes there. Well, yeah, my heart goes out. I mean, the they really have to activate their rail and run to the nose smartly, but really quickly. Yeah. They don't have a lot of time to cover ground across the wave to set up because the waves are short and closing sure. down. Where before the, the men's semi won, we saw those excellent range scores between Bucky, Chase, and, of course, the 10-point ride from um, Richie. Those guys were coming from behind the section and threw it. It was holding up. But, hey, the tide could turn in this heat. We'll see. White, Jack, current heat leader, surfing a lot like a surfer from down south, south uh, David Aganda, and a very activated style, sort of bending that back knee and the hands up in the air. It just reminds me a little bit of Vid there, and I'm sure a few people. That's a compliment by any means. And nice, and a compliment for David as well, because Jack is putting together it. A really nice heat, as he has done all event. A six-point ride. Jack, you've furthered your lead. Richie, you need a 6.76. You're in second. Noah, you need a 9.75. And Chase, a 10. Noah, your last one was a 3.75. Red, having a look for this one. Up on the nose. There's that 10, that trademark. Whoa. Wow. Technical okay. nose riding. How about that? Hands clap for me. Richie Cravey. He wasn't going fast, yeah. but he was just hanging out up there and then settled in and gave a really casual soul arch. Beautifully done. You can see right there, he finally just relaxes and goes, here I go. And then it got a little touch and go doing the beak boogie. He and rides out and then catches a bit of a rail. So we'd have to wait and see. Well, he only needed a 6.76 a to take the lead. We'll see where this goes with the judges. T just under 13 minutes left yeah. here in this men's final. Yeah. The Surfing for Hope Longboard Classic. I see um, young Sean O'Brien. Cormac's dad taking out a Michael Takayama. No, they're taking out some mid-lengths. These are, are boards from the South Bay. These are classic. They call them short longboards. There's an abbreviated name there that we can't say on air, but as we pander these mid-lengths taken out, they are like look like a mini longboard, and that is what surfboards evolved into from long to short. Those guys are synonymous. They're here to support a lot of the surfers. They're standing in front of the comp site there for everyone tuning in. Well, live, I should say. We might get it. We'll, we'll pan on a little moment of that. We'll catch up with those guys walking down the beach. That's okay. We tried. They tried. They staged it. And Richie, on his answer back, just not waiting for the judges to lock in that other score. Not leaving anything to chance. Well, they're frothing on their mid links. Going to paddle out. They're going to be ready for that next bunch of waves. Here we go. Up in the green. Noah. Tons of open face to look. This one shouldering off in the wave behind him. Chase in the blue. Both. It's like a mirror oh, image of each Chase. other. Chase on green face getting quite a bit of speed as Noah... Finishing in the green, length of ride. He might even get a little more fancy footwork on the nose, a little pedal there. Well, wow. don't waste an ounce of energy or milking every yeah. ounce of energy is what I meant to say. So these guys fighting for first. Noah was in a, needed a serious wave, a 9.75, and Chase needed a 10 to get into the lead. So where will this go for him? Well, first thing comes to mind, composed surfing from Noah. Great style, great flow, grace, timing, wave selection. They're the, the elements I took from Noah's. A little bit different. Jack, great nose running. So we're looking at Jack's. That was the third wave of the set. So here, five. And I could see him readjust here and again. Gets back up. This is a comparison. So this is Jack's wave earlier. 
So the 5 and 10, and that was, I believe, the 7.5 to kick off the heat. So we're just going to do a comparison. So surfers in the water, we're just going to digest those scores. I can tell you there's 10 minutes remaining, and we have <laughs> lots of scores to drop. So please remain patient. And Red, it does look like they deemed your last wave as a completion. And Blue, an 8-point ride for you. And a 7.05 for Richie. A 6 for Jack. And a 3.75 for Noah. Richie, you're in the lead. Your last wave was enough to put you in the lead. Scores still to drop. Jack Van Wagener back in the lead. A 6.75 for Jack. Oh, God. White in first. Red. You need a 7-2-1 to go into the lead. Chase, you now need a 6.25. You're in third. Noah, you need a 9. Your last wave is a 5.25. Wow. Okay. So just for that brief moment, Richie up into the lead based on his 6.75 and the 7.05. The score drops in behind that for Jack, a 6.75 paired with his 7.5. So he's just nudged himself back into first. Chase with the heat, the wave of the heat so far in that last an eight. So what that does is actually lead, he has the least requirement to go into yeah. the lead. Chase, you need a 6.25 to go up into first. Whoa. It was all based on this nose ride. Beautiful trim there, and he taps that one off the top. So technical nose ride and using the full length of the board, and he likes it with the kick out, animated, sensible too. No well, point rel relying on your leash. So priority, a big thing. Richie has first priority with eight and a half minutes to go. He needs a 7.21. Chase with second priority needs less score to go into first, a 6.25. Wow. On the merit of the eight that he just wrote, that last wave, an eight. Tit for tat, exciting, kind of going back and forth here. Noah needing a nine to get up into first. What a great event. And with that Wednesday lay day, the longboard schedule and running had to be adjusted. So great work from the WSL team and Brian Robbins to adjust the heats to four-man heats. It's unusual to have a four-person final, but we did it so we could keep the daylight uh, competition running in daylight because it gets dark here very quickly, shrouded by Morrow Rock. Seven minutes, 40 remaining. That tide is right about on. Finally, we have reached low tide, and that set is on the run out. So We've reached low tide, but the height, the apex yeah. of the day, the men's final, we've completed the women's oh. final. You know what? Four minutes and 30 seconds ago was low tide, and that set came on cue as it did yesterday. For an eight. Started pulsing for the final, so... Seven minutes for that first pulse to make its way through. So the format had to be adjusted, like you were just saying, but it also set up that then we could just go complete mm. um, Surfing for Hope Longboard Classic, not have to go back and forth, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. easier on us, the judges, the surfers, just <sighs> straight from and the yesterday cameraman. afternoon. Yeah, you know, it, yeah. Good call. And the spectators. Dot, dotting from long to short, trying to follow the game. Well, and the fans can tune in on the webcast and be like, "I'm a, I'm, I'm, I want to watch the longboard." And it's yeah. here we go. So it works out well for everybody. We are six and a half minutes away from crowning the winner on the men's side. There will be a little award ceremony following the final. Richie Cravey does not get over the lip. That will not get him any closer to the 7.21. He needs to take the win. Six minutes left. Priority is with Blue. Chase Leader set himself up for success after that last mm -hmm. wave. And eight needs a 6.25 Yeah, it's so to scratch the lead from Jack Von Wagner. I'm so impressed with... I know Noah. I've known Noah for many years. Uh, anyone who's in the longboard scene is aware of Noah's reputation in longboarding. He's up there along with Devin Howard and Joel Tudor as a, 
older statesman and a, and a mentor to many and a, a flag bearer for longboard surfing in the Southern California region. But Jack Van Wagener has really turned up a notch. We knew who he was. He surfed as a wild card at Huntington this year. He's done really well in some qualifying events and amateur events in the past, pushing Taylor Jensen all the way. Self-confessed, he's really difficult to beat, Taylor said. Richie, he's improved since earlier in the year, learning a lot from traveling on the world tour, getting knocked off tour, trying to get back on. And Chase, maybe one of the biggest improvers I've seen on the men's draw, bringing a lot of composure to this event so far. Really like a matured version. In just three months, I've seen a massive change in his his uh, approach to competition. So, st- a stacked final, but it's the natural footer <clears throat> winning so far. Mm. Yes, it is. You can't script this. Well, they're, they're all kind of given, given a look. Who's going to go? White using his second priority. Elects to go for this little left. Oh. Nice. The board drops out of the sky. Tight 10. Oh. <laughs> Cuts it back. Richie is doing a chase leader in that last heat, paddling over, finds an open left. Well, and he had third priority. He lo- nope. Elects not to because deeper up than him was Chase in the blue. S- screaming across this one. Will it open up for him? What happened in the beginning is the question. You know what? And Richie was in the spot for that one. It did run down the line and might have allowed for one of those nose rides, but he had to give way to Chase. Three minutes, 40 remaining. Scores still to drop. Well, we will see the replay of Chase, hopefully. That was, uh, we, we got the end the tail end of that wave. Here we go. He's looking for a 6.25 from the takeoff. Behind the section, gets that five. Yeah, lose a little composure and a, a nice clean hit, but it was the nose right at the beginning, just a little stumble. But he only needs a 6.25. The judges have been pretty strict with their clean footwork throughout the event. Yep. It'll be close. All right, we're getting down under three minutes. I had a... A, well, a cool story. I don't get to see Devin very often. As once he moved up here from down our way, where I'd see him all the time, surfing swamis and other places. And uh, it was at the U.S. Open, and he'd brought some brand new, you know, demo mm-hmm. CI longboards, square nose ones. Yep. And uh, there was a kid. I don't know where he was from. That so much talent, and he was like, "I'm giving him a board because I can't stand watching." He's on like yeah. horrible equipment. And if he just had good equipment, he would be surfing so yeah. much better, his talent level. So that fostering side of Devin, you know. Yeah, fostering me too. Um, I've been writing one up here. Green. Oh. Technical trimming there from Noah. I'm just a fan of Noah's style. And Red. Clutch, come, whoa, five and ten from behind the section. Red doing it again. Richie. Wow. What a finish to that wave. We're going to have to go back to the replay whoa. with just under two minutes. What is going on it here? It didn't start off as too much, but it was, he just held it at the bottom of the wave. Needing the seven, yeah. two, one. Man, I, I'm sad you don't live closer down to me. I'm sure you've got a garage of extras. I need a nose rider. <laughs> And here goes Richie. So here he gets the nose, comes from behind the section, goes to 10 here. Now, just when it gets even more critical, back to five. Stretches across this section here again, and he completes four steps back to the... Wow. So I have my feelings. I got my sentiment. Technical surfing from Richie. The just over a minute. Priority with White. Where will the score go? And, and now White up. He does not want to leave anything to risk. Flying Whoa. across, and now he statues wow. up. Ten for him. The offshores. 50 seconds remaining. Feathering, what a cool shot. The white jersey, the red board, poised on the nose. 45 seconds. The judges might have a bit of uh, catch-up yeah. to do 
if the time winds out. Priority is blue. So a 7 2 5 temporarily in the lead for red. And he's up again. He's tasting it. Oh. Cheater, five. And he goes to 10. The nose pokes. The run waves out of the, the wave ran out of energy. 20 seconds left. Jack back into first with a 9 2 5 on that last wave. <laughs> 15 seconds to go. You see Jack slap the water. I'll count it out. You can reach Chase has got one out the back. Five, four, three, two, one. Well, does this count? Surfer in blue, up and riding. I'm not sure. Oh, oh my, my gosh. What a soul arch there. He needed an eight point. It was after? It was after, yeah. Oh, okay. Incredible. Richie Cravey gets the 725, goes into the lead, and right behind him, Jack Von Wagner goes and gets a 925. And that wow. is how it finishes, ladies and gentlemen, here on the beach at home. Thank you for joining us all week long. What a victory. What a wave to cap off the wow. final of finals. Jack wow. Von Wagner in the white takes the victory. Richie Cravey in second. Chase Leader in third. And Noah Shimabakuro in fourth. I saw him slap the water, Jack Von Wagner, as he heard us deliver the score. He yeah. knew he nailed it. All three competitors in. He's out there having a moment by himself. We're going to throw to a final commercial break, come back with a quick recap, and um, we'll see you in a minute. Since 2012, Surfing for Hope has been helping families navigate through cancer using the healing benefits of surfing and the ocean. Each year, we host a number of surfing-related community events to shine a spotlight on the fight against cancer. Visit surfingforhope.org to sign up for one of our free beginner surf camps. And if you'd like to help out, you can donate on the site too. Slow Cal Roots starts with natural and sustainable farming right here in Slow County. We offer a carefully curated selection of cannabis, both medical and recreational, from small batch craft concentrates and sleep gummies to locally produced fresh flour and extracts. Come join us on our journey to support family farms, support community, and support culture from the roots up. Slow Cal Roots, locally owned and operated by patients for patients. Welcome back, everybody. There we go, a beautiful picture of our victor, Jack Juan Wagner, first place at the Surfing for Hope Longboard Classic here, the Slocal Open in Morro Bay. What a great, what a great, what a great event. What a way to cap it off. A 9-2-5 definite. Matt Chanowski, break it down for wow. me. Wow, clutch. A super professional performance there from all these surfers, but Jack coming in with the win. The youngster just showing these guys what is up. A 9.25 is an answer back to Richie. In the dying seconds, Richie got a 7.25 in the last wave of the heat. Jack, what can we say? A 7, I mean a 8, a 9.25. <laughs> I mean, so many excellent waves. But Richie, that perfect 10 in the semifinals. We had Chase with a clutch. He almost got a wave at the end as well. It didn't count. The last five seconds, he took off just after the Hooter. And, I mean, they're all feeling it. Look at them just embracing down there. And all of these surfers will take some valuable points away from this so there'll be some good cash to be two thousand dollars going to jack 900 600 500 accordingly but the points wow a thousand points yeah and noticing both chase and noah riding that sort of thummy round pin yeah uh not going with the square tail that richie and jack had in this heat i'd love to try one of them little buggers um wow what a week we have had We've, we've finished, we talked about the shortboarding, but it's all about the, the, the mouths, the longboarding. We started with yesterday, the men's round of 40, then into the 24, and on into the final that we just concluded. The women kicked off this morning, round of 24, and straight through to their final. So, what a day of longboard surfing we've had here. 
beautiful Moro Bay. Thank you no. to all the sponsors. I could be mistaken, but that might be Levi Slauson down there walking up with Jack as well. Looks very similar anyway. We'll have to wait and see. But well, maybe. We'll uh, not Levi. It's similar crew, young crew. Yeah, Levi, he bounced home. Yeah. Him and Ella are back Jack. home. Wow, incredible. So as he walking back up there, the champion of the LQS Surfing for Hope Longboard Classic, Jack Van Wagener. We're going to go to a presentation very shortly as they make their way up. And we look forward to looking at the highlight reel. And here it was Natalie Wanderlust there, just consummate professional throughout the whole event, showcasing strategy, style, flow, and grace to get those victories. Clinical nose rides, but I really liked all those little things she did in the last dying minutes of the heat, using priority, paddling back out with just 30 seconds to go to put pressure on her opponents. What was your takeaway for that, Jeff? Well, so great. I just loved watching what she did and how she rose to the top here. I mean, subtlety and grace, that lower body or the upper body so calm, her acumen, her wave choice, the way she utilized the ways that she was given and utilized priority to find herself in the final. Yeah. So like she said, you know, third is the best she's done mm. at the Ala Moana Bowls event. And here she finds herself in Morro Bay in the cold with a thicker wetsuit given, you know, Brett over at Hurley yeah. dialed her in. And the 18-year-old sponsored by Hurley. That's a, that's a great uh, alignment there. And Jack Van Wagener looking really good throughout this whole event. Just didn't lose a heat, nor did Natalie. Just looking so solid. The backside on these lefts showing how well-rounded he is. And given that the World Tour has a... And that was the semi-final. That was, that was a, a semi, yeah. That was a semi. And you saw how the, the waves were dropping, you know, in size as the tide was bottoming out. Beautiful surfing from Jack. And you know that we've got one or two more waves and we'll finish it off with the 925 that was in the final, in the dying seconds. And just seeing this afternoon light, very difficult, fast running waves. The only excellent scores were actually from goofy foot surfers. So a real testament to Jack holding that hang 10 there. And I mean, exactly what we're talking about the whole event, just his positioning, the way that he's able to get that Michael Takayama board and this is it. Pocket. This so, is the 9 so 2 this is clutch. Five. He needed a score. And he goes to 10 right there, gets that levitation. and Because seconds before that, Richie Cravey had gone into the lead yeah. with the number he needed, a 7 2 five. Turns it right there with a 9 2 five. <laughs> We see the boys trying to cheer, cheer him up. It's just, Slightly it, better than, yeah, they, uh, they, than Natalie's uh, attempt. They, they need to work on that. What's yeah. going on? Anyway, that is classic. What an event for him and for all these surfers. Uh, thank you to all the judges who have already bounced. Great thank job. you to all the staff. Thank you to the catering. Great job, Run Amok Photography, for what you did. And uh, thank you to the volunteers here from Surfing for Hope Foundation. Thank you to all the camera crew. What an event. And thank you to the surfers that participated from Monday through to mm. today, bringing us a great show. And the volunteers helping pack up for Surfing for Hope, a great you. foundation. Check them out, surfingforhope.org. And they'll also be hosting, well, assisting with that Pismo Beach event in January. Thank so, you to Andy McKay. Andy, yeah, great job. And thank you to event. our unsung tech heroes like Dylan that keep us on point, keep everything moving along sweet. Thank you to you, Waxhead, for a great week. And you, Jeff, thank you for not missing a wave. And you know what? Longboarding is in a really good place. We have support from the WSL. We have support from brands. And we have support from all the different regions where longboarding is booming. And today wasn't an indication that it's in safe hands. I don't know what is. Just that younger generation trumping world champs, trumping tour veterans, the style, flow, and grace, that criteria working and proving its worth throughout Asia, throughout Europe, throughout South America, throughout the Asia-Pacific region. I'm so excited for next year's World Tour. We'll get those dates and locked in. 
I'm sure in the new year, some contracts still to finalize. Yeah, the the investment on the WSL yeah. side and the global expansion of surfing working. And here is proof. Um, wow. So I think we're going go to we'll go to a presentation. To go. And um, thanks again, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Enjoying the week. And I am done. Matt is done for the day. We will tune in from the Pismo event. We'll tune in with us from the WSL World Juniors in January. And um, all the best. Thanks for joining us. Bye.
Richie Cravey, we're waiting for that presentation. Richie. If anyone can see Richie Cravey up there, just get Richie to come down to get his trophy. Presentation is waiting for Richie. And Natalie, she's here, I can see her. Richie Cravey, we have the presentation. The webcast is waiting for Richie Cravey. Richie. All right, Richie, let's go. <laughs> Got to just put your rash vest on. Just... Welcome to, welcome, we have no sound. Yeah, okay. All right, welcome to the presentation. The proceedings are finished. So this is the Surfing for Hope Longboard Classic. And Jack Van Wagener, you've come back with an excellent score in the dying moments to take the victory from Richie Cravey. We're going to invite Andy McKay up here for the men's winner's trophy. Here you go, Jack. Well done. Hard, well deserved. A round of applause for Jack. And getting the score in the dying moments, 
just coming in second as Jack had just gone to the lead. Was Richie Cravey come up and get your runner-up trophy? And just move over here, guys. And in the women's, Star Delilah with the last moment getting a left-hander, jumping from fourth to third and up into second. You're actually going to be on top of the North America rankings. You've come at runner-up runner because winning that, we had Natalia taking that win from the Hawaiian region, but she's still going to take home the cash and the first place trophy to Natalia and the runner-up to Star. So we're going to have Natalia, a few words from you, what it feels like. Um, super stoked and just glad to be here. Um, but the points don't count. I didn't know that till later on, but I'm stoked to take some cash home and yeah. And Star? Um, I'd like to say thank you to Weston Surfboards for making the best boards, and this was a really fun contest. Runner-up, Richie Cravey, on an absolute tear throughout the year, winning pretty much everything. It looked like you were coming back in the dying moments. How was that? Uh, I feel like I'm in a familiar place. It was like I was here just last year. Yeah, thanks, Jack. <laughs> and uh, Yeah, no, super fun. Uh, yeah, well-deserved, Jack. And the winner, Jack, coming in clutch, whole event, both you and Natalia showing a level of professionalism. And I think both of you are going to go a long way on the professional longboard circuit. A great way to start off your campaign this year. Yeah, super stoked. Um, definitely want to give a shout out to my mom. She said that for her birthday, she wanted to win. And so I delivered. So happy birthday, mom. Um, big shout out to the Cal Poly Surf Team boys. Let's go Surf House. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, super stoked. Um, it's just been such an honor. All the boys were ripping, especially Richie. I mean, his 10 in the semifinals was insane. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I can't believe it. I'm so stoked. <laughs> wow, some very deserving first and second place holders there. It's safe to say the Surfing for Hope Longball Classic is an absolute success, and these four surfers did a tremendous job showcasing where Longboard is heading, and Style, Flow, and Grace epitomized with what we saw today at Morrow Bay. So thank you very much to the supporters, to the sponsors, to the WSL and the crew behind the scenes. Surfing for Hope is a fantastic foundation. Find out more at surfingforhope.org. These are your first and second placeholders at the 2023 Surfing for Hope Longboard Classic. We start each day with one goal. With our state-of-the-art network, we provide reliable high-speed internet to the Central Coast with no contracts and no limits. Visit peakwifi.com for plans and coverage of our rapidly expanding network. You just do what your elders do. Get rad, get in air, adrenaline. 